Israel steps up airstrikes on Gaza. We're live with the latest. Then, hot and cold, it's a cross-country tale of two temps. Freezing warnings in the Northeast as parts of the Midwest reach 25 degrees above average. Al's got your forecast. Plus, nothing to sneeze at. A look at why some popular cold medicines are being pulled from the shelves and the products you can use in their place. What you need to know with cold and flu season fast approaching. And sealed with a kiss, fans going wild over the latest pick of Taylor and Travis as the star celebrates a major milestone for her hit, Cool Summer. It's not even the summer anymore. It really means the world. It's, it's like deep fall. I'm wearing a sweater. Today, Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. Best day since we were babies from Jacksonville, Florida. Shout out to our sister Margaret watching in Vassar, Michigan. From Farmville, Virginia. Today is my 55th birthday. Visiting from Columbus, Ohio. Highlands Ranch, Colorado. And Pembroke Pines, Florida. I'm in my own head thinking all these bad things. Happy American Pharmacist Month. From Newburgh, Indiana. Today, Ann turns 40. Welcome back this morning on your health important news as we head into cold and flu season. Yeah, drugstore giant CVS has announced it's pulling some popular cold medicines from its stores after an FDA advisory committee found one of the main ingredients to be ineffective. This is kind of a big deal. NBC News medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar is here with everything everyone needs to know. Okay, so it's <laughs> CVS that we're talking about, yes. right? And they decided to pull some of these medications from the shelves. Are they harmful? Why are they pulling them off? So, so from the outset, let me start by saying that this had nothing to do with safety. This all has to do with the effectiveness of this one particular ingredient that's called phenylephrine. As we said in the lead, the FDA's advisory committee a month ago determined unanimously that phenylephrine was not effective as a decongestant, had nothing again to do with safety. CVS did uh, something a little bit unprecedented because the FDA actually has not rendered a final decision, but they went ahead and said, you know what, we are going to remove from our shelves products that contain only phenylephrine. That includes oh. Sudafed PE. But there are a lot of other products on the shelves that are still there that contain phenylephrine, but contain other ingredients as well. For example, Dayquil has some Tylenol and a cough suppressant. Benadryl allergy has an antihistamine. So the bottom two as well will as still be on the shelves. It's it's just these ones that only have that one ingredient. Exactly. And CV, see, we reached out to CVS for comment, and they basically said, you know, we're following the direction of the FDA. We want to comply with, with regulation, and, and this is what we see is appropriate. There is this organization called the Consumer Healthcare Products Association mm -hmm. who maintains that until the FDA says anything, mm -hmm. that these products are safe and effective. I should mention that they do represent the manufacturers of many of these products. Was that the only product? Because there is Sudafed, because yes. I've seen it, and then there's Sudafed PE. Sudafed's fine, Sudafed PE is Exactly, so it's work. really only, we, we <clears throat> can only find one product that contains only phenylephrine. We also mm -hmm. reached out to CVS to see if they could give us a more comprehensive you know, product list, mm -hmm. but this yeah. was, they, they said they don't have a list to provide us right now. Well, let's say you have, I think you've made the <clears throat> point, but let's say you have this yeah. in your cabinet. Can you still use it if you want to? Is it going to harm you? It's not dangerous, right? So it, again, you know, it may not work. It may not work. Um, and you know, I always say to folks, if it's if it's not expired, you can go ahead and use it, but it's it may not be effective. Okay. So, so the I, issue is, I, I, no. Well, what do you so, use if you so took wait. it? Yeah, you wanted you, your your nose is dripping or whatever. Right. Exactly. So there are other medications. Hoda's going to still use her suit. Yeah. So there are other medications that we can absolutely still use for cough and cold medicines that experts always love to, to recommend to people are intranasal steroids like Flonase, intranasal antihistamines like Astelin. There are other pseudofeds that contain something called pseudoephedrine that's behind the counter yeah. that you can still get. And also using antihistamines like Zyrtec and Allegra or Claritin because a lot of that nasal congestion is caused also be, by histamine release. And what about for kids? Is there a pseudofed PE for no, kids? No, for kids no. it's tough. You know, yeah. for, for, for young children, especially under the age of two, Cough and cold medications yeah. are not recommended. No. You can definitely use Tylenol and Advil to treat symptoms. The keep their, keep their yeah. the steam shower, keep their nasal passages, mm -hmm. you know, moist and keep them well hydrated. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds and good. And we're standing with the baby in the steam shower oh, many, many yeah. times. Yes. Thank, <laughs> thank you, so Natalie. Much, Natalie. Just photobombing Craig and some awesome fans out here. Oh my goodness. Is this baby crying or laughing? Okay, we used to call it cryling, crying and smiling. Hello, boo-boo. 
Teddy. Hi, Teddy. How old is he? He just turned one. Oh, he's adorable. Yankees fan. This is yeah. maybe this next is, year, baby. This is Teddy <laughs> Shaw. <laughs> Thank you. Love much. That. All right. We need a new hitting coach. <laughs> uh, do you guys know who is inside our studio right now? Who? Who? Oh, the very handsome Jacob Alordi. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Y'all, he is playing the role of Elvis in a new film that is out. It's about Priscilla. It's a great film, but we're going to talk to Jacob in just a bit. Also in the studio there, Jill Martin is back. Jill Martin Brooks is back with another round of best-selling steals and deals. Some fan favorites making a return at Get This discounts of up to 74% off just in time for that holiday shopping. Wow. I should have won yesterday, 88%. Yeah, why couldn't they do 75? Yeah. sweater was incredible. That's right. It was. It was but so cozy, wasn't that it? That was a yeah. big yeah. break. Yeah. Also, you know, here, Reed Drummond, our friend, the pioneer woman, going to whip up a nice, easy recipe. We're talking weeknight pasta. In her right. words, this is just for the slightly impatient home cooks. <laughs> what about the really impatient oh, that's home That's right. Cooks. Well, this will probably Next do as well. Next time for us. Uh, yes, okay. And also ahead on the third hour, our good buddy Steph Rule is going to stop by with her gift-wrapped guide to planning your holiday shopping, even ways for you to give back to yourself. We are back. And ladies and gentlemen, Elvis is in the building. Jacob Elordi stars as the king of rock and roll in the movie Priscilla. It's one of the uh, the fall season's most anticipated films. It's based on Priscilla Presley's biography, Elvis and Me. Here's a quick look. I think these clothes are too sophisticated for me. I mean, what's sophisticated? You, better, you can go around with a feather and it'll be sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Jacob. For, I want to get into all that we just saw in that little clip. First of all, we're happy to have you here. We have not had any actors here since the strike has happened. Oh. You're able to come. Tell us how that came to be. Yeah, I mean, we were we were lucky enough to get an interim agreement early on to be able to promote the film. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm just happy to be here supporting independent cinema. You know, it's important at a time like this. Yeah, well, this is a big role, a fun role for you. You're Australian, so the yeah. first thing you had to tackle was not just getting an American accent, but getting an Elvis accent. Right. How did you right. go about doing that? Right, I, well, I think, I'm, I think I'm lucky enough that uh, the voice kind of sits in this register for me anyway. I have yeah. a deep voice, but I, I think I've heard every recorded word that Elvis Presley <laughs> has ever said, and I kind of just... To practicing and practicing yeah. and practicing. Exactly, in the mirror, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of one of the roles of a lifetime for you. Uh, yeah. How did you get tapped for it? How did this come initially? I had just got uh, an email uh, saying that Sophia Coppola wanted to have breakfast. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, That's so a it was nice like, email. <clears throat> yeah, so I went to um, Beverly Hills Hotel, <laughs> breakfast with her. She didn't mention it. And then a couple of weeks later, I had the audition sides in my email, and they just said Elvis on the top of them. That was Holy it. <laughs> moly. You studied his voice, which was important, but he has such a unique mannerism about him. Yeah. So did you spend a lot of time working on that too? Yeah, I mean, when you watch him move and, and, mm -hmm. and speak, there's an energy that kind of 
comes from sort of uh, deep, deep inside mm-hmm. him. So I was just trying to constantly, because I'm, I'm a little bit more gawky and awkward than he is. So, oh, are you? <laughs> right, yeah, so I was trying to find that like charisma in your in your hips. You uh, know? So um, <clears throat> this is a movie called Priscilla. It's about Priscilla. Mm. Um, tell me about Kayla, your co-star, and also the fact that Priscilla Presley will actually be watching this. She has yeah. signed off on yeah, this. Yes, she signed. I mean, yeah. Kaylee is a, uh, an incredibly talented actress, and she was my best friend while we were filming. Really? Yeah, I really needed that uh, that support, Aww. like someone that believed in me. Um, and then, I mean, watching the film with Priscilla in Venice was just entirely surreal. I'm watching her watch her life through her eyes, that you know, played back That must have been wild for you. I mean, you're playing Elvis in this movie. Yeah, it felt kind of invasive, so I just sort of sat there <laughs> like a little stiff, you know? Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Um, so when you were a little boy, you were growing up in Australia, did mm-hmm. you ever, I mean, I'm sure you had big dreams, but did you dream this big? What did you imagine your life to be at this point? Oh, man, I just thought I thought I was going to be in entertainment in some capacity, but I didn't think that I would, I'd play, you know, the king of rock and roll or anything in a movie. One of the most beautiful things about you is you, we've actually interviewed you before. It was mm-hmm. by Zoom. And I knew I liked you because not only are you just a really nice, nice human being, but when I was interviewing you, something happened with your parents. I think we have right. that clip. <laughs> Let's just roll a second of it. People yeah, sitting go on for it. Who are the people sitting on your bed that I can see in the mirror? You can see them? In the yes, mirror. In oh, the mirror. they're in the mirror. That's my mom and dad. Oh, hi, mom and dad. <laughs> We're so excited. <laughs> you, guys, like... you guys are so good. <laughs> All right, so your mom and dad, <laughs> tell me what they are, what are they people thinking people as you're going people through people this pretty uh, cool journey? I think this is the first time that I've been on Australian radio and television, so they are just like tuned in to everything. They can't believe it. I'm like finally a real actor. You're a real actor. <laughs> yeah. did, did they get to see you? You in, uh, you in this role? They haven't seen it yet. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, this is such an exciting and fun time for you. I also know that when you're on the red carpet, you have a habit of like picking up people's cell phones and doing your own sure. thing with them. <laughs> sure. what, what's the game here? What are you doing? I don't know. I feel like it's maybe changed a little bit now because yeah. it's a bit more obvious. But I don't know. I have no idea. It's just uh, it's in the past. You know, <laughs> <I've> changed. <laughs> yeah. You know what's interesting, mate? You seem almost embarrassed by your celebrity. Right. Do you? Do you? Is that what you're feeling? I think that's maybe like, uh, the sign of a, a sane person. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of insane if I rolled with it. <laughs> you know. Well, I got to tell you, you're such a nice person. We want to wish you the best of luck. Good luck with this movie, Thank you, and Anna. I'm sure you've got a long, long, long runway ahead. A lot more interviews for us. <laughs> I hope so. All right, Jacob. Thank you. Priscilla thank you, is in theaters nationwide on November the third. Savannah, over to you. Thank you, Hoda. I'm, I'm here with distracted. Jill. We're so distracted <laughs> by these admiring, beautiful batches of fluffy throws and wireless charging pads and maybe right else, and, yeah. and big discounts <laughs> just a lot going on in our <laughs> studio right now get ready to shop y'all but first this is today on nbc hi hi, hi. i'm Savannah. Hi. 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 Hi.
Jill's Steals and Deals is sponsored by Wells Fargo Credit Cards. Credit cards made for the way you live. That's real life ready. As I, I had thought kind of the same wow. thing. I hear Craig. Okay, hi. Craig, don't say anything crazy because your yes. mic's a hot. Everything's hot in this studio today, right, guys? <laughs> Especially the deals. The yeah. steals and the deals. Okay. <laughs> We've got another collection. These are best sellers that Jill has selected with discounts as what, up to 74% yes. off or whatever. Jill yes. is here, Jill Martin Brooks, scan the QR code. Let's get to the deals, my friend. Yes, okay, let's concentrate. So the first one, these are best sellers. I wanna warn everyone, a lot yesterday sold out very quickly. So if you like something, Type it in. Hop on it. Okay. The Olympia USA Phoenix three-piece luggage set. The retail price is $920. As you see, it has the wheels that you just slide. Yeah. It's a three-piece set, carry-on, medium, and large. What's great about this is it has organization on the inside. So you see there's a place for everybody. Mm. So depending on where you're going and what you want to pack, keeps you super organized. Um, utility hook for hanging small bags. It has everything you want in it and eight wheels. It's the deal price for the three, two thirty nine. That's seventy four yeah, percent off. Three pieces. Yep, and it oh, comes wow. in these very exciting colors, so you will notice it as it comes down. I was going to say these aren't everyone's colors. It's not the typical. Yeah, but like, so you're going to see it. Even the black and the gray, like looks you see, a little it has, different. Like, yeah, shimmery, so, but I yeah. like this. This is a cool color. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So water bottles is a triumph. The swell seventeen ounce water bottle. The retail thirty five to forty. So you know swell. You know the brand. This always sells out quickly. Three new styles. They're two-tone, the ombre and the matte collections, mm -hmm. 15 different styles to choose from. They're great for hot and for cold. The brand says 17-ounce bottles keep beverages cold for 36 hours and hot for 18 hours. Wow. A long time. Deal price, $14 to $16. I mean, think about stocking stuffers you now. You really could. 60% off. So especially with kids, you know, they're always losing their water bottles. Every day, it feels like we lose yeah, water Yeah, is that bottle. like a, a big it's loss? A thing. It's like okay. headphones for adults. Yes. Okay, candles. First of all, Candles are very special to my uh, mother-in-law, and today is her birthday. Aww. And so happy birthday, Mama. I love you. And the Seda France Signature Pagoda 10-ounce candle, the retail price, $44. I always say Hoda loves this because it comes wrapped already. Yeah, exactly. So it's like the gift that keeps on giving. And just what a beautiful bo bo box. And I love the 12 print. But it's also the scent. So they have vanilla, autumn spice, holiday pine. Mm -hmm. And the, the scents are really exactly what they are. So when you go online, you could see. Um, the brand says each ri richly scented candle is hand poured. The retail price is 44 The deal price with the box, $19. Wow. 57% off. I think I got holiday pine and it's very lovely, not too piney. Okay, oh, we yeah. hold this okay, up for yes, me just to show the size. Oh, okay, this yeah. one always sells out super fast. The Barefoot Dreams Cozy Chic Blanket. This is their material that they're super popular for. Look how big this it's is. Nice. And will you just attest Let's to the softness the of it? It's softness, soft. It's delicious. It's great for <laughs> to throw on a couch. Really interesting colors. Um, super cozy, soft and plush. Their signature style comes in solid. And you see this two-tone pattern also comes with the bow. And better yet, it's machine washable. Oh, wow. Which, you know, any blanket should be machine washable, so you don't have to worry about it. The retail, 98 to 120. The deal price, 39 to 49, okay. up to 60% It is buttery, off. buttery, I mean, buttery soft, is, Jill. This is amazing. Okay, these always, again, sell out fast. Prints and beautiful. Look at the agate. I mean, if you can zoom in tight on these, these are just a gorgeous way to have a charger. The Funky Tree Wireless Charging Pad, the retail price, $79.99. So this is an elevated, obviously, charging pad. It combines cool designs like crystal, marble, bamboo with wireless technology. When you need to charge, all you need to do is place your device on the pad, even with a standard phone case. It'll work, the really? brand says, and any which, phone? Is not, okay. which is not typical. Compatible with Apple, Samsung, and other phones wow. and devices. Check it out on today.com. And there's a fast charging USB-C cable included and an LED charging indicator to show you how much you have left. That'd be I great mean, to have on your nightstand, your desk, or just, whatever. And just to know, yeah, and it looks beautiful. It so is, cute. the deal price is $24, that's 70% off. Also a great gift. Now, we could use it as a coaster. Oh wait, all right, go ahead. Yes. I know uh, we have the rugs. Yes, so this is unbelievable. So wow. really check out today.com to see all the patterns. My Magic Carpet Washable Rugs. This is the brand's largest discount ever just for steals and deals. So this is machine washable. Wow. So if you have 
kids. They're beautiful patterns. We're only showing a few here. They have multiple sizes, so you can find the perfect accent rugs, runners, area rugs, and round rugs for your home. Gets dirty, just follow the care instructions. You can put the entire rug in the washing machine, wow. so no fuss. It has non-slip webbing, um, so you don't have to worry about any slips, and comes in tons of patterns and styles. So the retail price, $79.99 to $269.99, depending on the size. Deal price, 32 to 108 up to 60% off. Okay, that's great. So could you run through the deals just one more yes, time? Yes, I would love to. The Olympia USA Phoenix three-piece luggage set, the Swell 17-ounce water bottle, the Seda France Signature Pagoda 10-ounce candle, the Barefoot Dreams Cozy Chic Blanket, the Funky Tree Wireless Charging Pad, and the My Magic Carpet Washable rugs. Well done, Miss Jill. Thank you. Love the two day extravaganza. Yes. If you want to shop the deals, days. go to our QR code. Go to today.com slash deals. That works too. They go fast. And we have more exclusives there. Yes. And all the deets. Carson? Hi, guys. Me and uh, Reed Drummond here just solving all the problems of the world. But she's going to help us do something that we, on a busy, chaotic weeknight at the house, don't cook longer. Don't take, you can be smart when you cook. We got a great rustic meatball recipe with pasta, and she's got 111 other recipes in the new cookbook. We'll talk about that, and we'll cook some food for you coming up. But first, this is today on NBC. And we're back with Today Food this morning. We are in the kitchen with the one and only the pioneer woman and best-selling author, Reed Drummond. We love the title of the new cookbook. I think it's your eighth. You just said the pioneer woman cooks. Dinner's ready, Uncle Al. 112 <laughs> fast and fabulous recipes for slightly impatient home cooks and Savannah. That's the name of the book. Uh, it's great to see you, Reed. Great to see you. And by the way, I love watching your show because we're a big family here, especially when it comes to food. Your family is here as well. Yes, my girls, my, my two daughters, Alex and Paige, and my sister, Betsy, we are it in New York together, so look out. You guys having fun in New York? Or do you go around just eating at your favorite restaurants? And oh, yeah. We've yeah. had lots of food so far, so. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> All right. We've done nothing but what, eat. You guys want to come over? Come on over and hang. Come on, Yeah, girls. come on over. Come on. Yeah, come help us out. All right, Reed, what are we doing? <laughs> Let, get you some of that, girls. Yeah, come on, um, come on in. Okay, out. so. Just walk in front of cameras. It doesn't matter. <laughs> just, that, they'll Don't worry about that. Out. Do it all the time. Come okay. on, girls. Come on in. Just so, like Oklahoma. This cookbook is really kind of reflective of my life right now, where I thought when all my kids left mm. the house that I would have all this time and patience to start cooking long meals again, but I... I'm over it. You know, I, I love cooking. I love food, but I'm still a little impatient. So right. this is the coolest recipe for basically spaghetti and meatballs that you make in the oven. And right. this, I love this recipe. So, But it's not like shortcuts. I mean, you have lots of fresh ingredients and stuff. Yeah, it's just cooking smarter. Yes. Yes. I should make you guys make it. Yeah, make it. Come on, put them to work. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to start work. with this. Yep. Uh, you can dump this in Got there. It. And this is basil, parsley, and oregano. Mm -hmm. And then we're basically making a pesto. Lemon zest, mm -hmm. lemon juice, mm -hmm. and parm. Love it. And then olive oil, of course. You can make this slow, or you can just dump it all in and then whiz it into an herby mixture. This is the pesto? Yes. Okay. And the cool thing is you can do no this. No pine nuts? 
No pine nuts. Yep. But you, because my sister's allergic. <laughs> Is that why? I just, okay. I'm used to not. Well, that's a good nuts. reason to not have pine nuts. <laughs> that works. Not to put you on the spot, nuts, <laughs> but, um, but anyway, but you can also buy a tub of store-bought pesto, which is cool. So yeah, whiz that up. Yep. And then I, using half of that, which is right here, yep. and you put cherry tomatoes into a pan, mm -hmm. and I'm going to scrape half of the herb mixture, but you can see how easy that would be with yeah. store-bought pesto. Yep. Mix it up. This is a little for a, a pre-cooked blistering action. Is that what's happening? Well, here? yes, exactly. So salt and pepper, get all this mixed together, mm -hmm. and then set it aside. Mm -hmm. The oven, by the way, is preheating oh. to 425. Yep. So we'll turn that off. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go like, ahead. It's, it's like the yeah. kids are still in the house. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and turn that off. You crazy. All right, Carson, come along. All right, you can go to your room now. Tell me when dinner's ready. <laughs> Get so the meat here. mixture, yep. you can do all ground beef, all sausage, or a mix. Egg, the other half of the herb mixture that yep. you oh, very thoroughly little, mixed over there. Yep. And it goes exactly. in with salt and pepper. Yep. And then you can mix with your hands or you can mix with a spatula. Yep. Mix it up. And so here's the cool thing. You can mix that if you like, sure. but we're, we're moving along. Go ahead, I will. <laughs> if, it does, if I don't get grounded for doing it, I'll do it. <laughs> so normally I would have my girls kind of part of this assembly line. Mm -hmm. So you get the meat mixture all mixed up, dished up onto a pan. These two pans go into the oven together. Okay. So okay. the meatballs it's go into the oven. Oh, oh, not again. Down. Here he goes. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll put that in the oven. What kind of kitchen is this? <laughs> it's a TV kitchen. What do you mean? It's a real kitchen. You have salt so, and pepper over there if you need it. While it's in the oven for 15 minutes, yep. you cook a pot of pasta. Oh. Okay. So you can see how easy this is. Um, the sooner you get done with dinner, the sooner you can work on your uh, series that you're watching. Yeah. Oh. Right. I'm almost through Suits, and I love it. What are you watching, um, Suits? Yeah. Everybody's watching Suits right now. That's yeah, right. really good. So... When the tomatoes come out of the oven, you can see that they're blistered and kind of the juices from the tomatoes. Is that um, spaghetti? That looks big. It's bucatini, oh, bucatini, which is like love it. thick, bucatini. hollow How spaghetti. How is it, guys? I love really good. Eating for the I love the bucatini. Yeah. Me too. You look great. So, Paige, come toss yeah, this. Yeah, come on, Paige. All right, toss me to work. And then what, makes the, what makes the meatballs like rustic? What does that mean? Well, you can, you can scoop them with a scoop, but what I usually do is just pinch them. Here, yeah. Paige. Yeah. What do you think about being on the Today Show? <laughs> yeah, Paige. That's so exciting. Tell us your life story, oh, Paige. <laughs> so then once you toss the pasta with the mm -hmm. um, delicious sauce, you just dish it up, and then the meatballs are out of the oven, and you can just Remember, we put, put half that on. pesto inside the mixture for the meatballs. There's a little yeah. surprise for you Which there. Which I love, and I have made this with store-bought pesto, and it is delicious. It's easy. Okay. So the Smart. whole thing comes together in about 20, 25 minutes. Today.com slash food. Pioneer Woman Cooks. Dinner's ready. It's out now. Pick it up. Stick around. Next hour, cooking more delicious pasta dishes with the whole family. You guys are getting put to work next <laughs> well hour. So get ready. Consider this the warm-up. Really up. great to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. All right, but Thank first, you. check your local news well, and weather. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody, good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. Hi everybody, good morning, welcome to today. What's shaking eggs and bacon? Hold what? on, I'm just gonna say it. What? Badass. Oh, thank you. So do you think you'll act forever? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We're gonna have lots of fun yeah. this morning. Yeah.
This morning on the third hour of today, mid-air scare. An off-duty pilot accused of trying to bring down a plane filled with people. We've got the uh, guy that tried to shut the incident down uh, out of the cockpit. What we know about the suspect and the terrifying moments in the sky. Plus, high-tech crackdown. The new way stores can combat the rise in thefts. The wheels on the card locked because you didn't go past the point of sale. Vicki Wynn giving us a glimpse at what could be the future of our shopping experience. Then later, Grammy and Oscar winner Questlove is here. How it feels to be back at The Tonight Show and his new project featuring some other superstar creators. And in today's food, we hope you're hungry because we got the pioneer woman, Reed Drummond, sharing two amazing pasta recipes. The only question, which one do you make first? Today, Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Uh, and a good morning to you. Welcome to this third hour of today. I'm Craig. Dylan's here. Al's here. Chanel is off this morning. Uh, thank you for being with us on this Tuesday morning. We've got a, a lot to talk about. We're going to start, though, with the I mean, absolutely terrifying oh. incident on board this packed plane. There's this, this off-duty pilot for Alaska Airlines. He's now facing 83 mm -hmm. counts of attempted murder because he's accused of trying to turn off a plane's engines in the middle of a flight. NBC's Tom Costello uh, covers aviation for us. He's following this one. Tom, this is a wild story. Yeah, it's pretty serious, too. Law enforcement says this Alaska Airlines pilot was riding in the cockpit jump seat of a Horizon Air flight. He was deadheading, in other words, catching a ride. Suddenly, he reached over, allegedly, and tried to shut down the engines, forcing the captain and the first officer to subdue him and make an emergency landing. The suspect is 44 years old, Joseph Emerson. He'll be arraigned later today in Oregon. Law enforcement and aviation sources do not believe that there's any connection to the Middle East, to terrorism. But the FAA is, in fact, warning other airline crews, crews rather, to be vigilant for any signs of trouble. The big question this morning, why did a veteran pilot allegedly try to shut down the engines of a passenger plane while riding in the cockpit jump seat? Alaska Airlines Flight 2059, operated by Horizon Air, was headed from Everett, Washington to San Francisco Sunday night when the airline says off-duty pilot Joseph Emerson suddenly tried to pull the engine fire suppression controls to turn off the engines at cruising altitude. The pilot and co-pilot stopped and subdued Emerson, removed him from the cockpit, then diverted the plane to Portland. We've got the uh, guy that tried to shut the engines down uh, out of the cockpit. We want law enforcement as soon as we get on the ground and park. Passenger Aubrey Gavello, seated in the last row, saw Emerson as he then walked to the back of the plane. I made eye contact with him. It was like one of those like soul chilling, like dead in the eyes, like just calm and just kind of like he was taking in everyone around him. Aubrey's boyfriend, Alex Wood, watched as police took Emerson into custody. Now booked on 167 charges, including 83 counts of attempted murder. It's scarier this morning to, to hear. And I was one of those people. Some acquaintances of Emerson are surprised. His demeanor, how he treats the kids, the family, no indications of anything wrong. Aviation experts say jump seat riders, including off-duty pilots and federal officials, are subject to increased training and security compared to other passengers. Anyone that rides in the jump seat, whether you're a federal agent or a pilot, there's training that's required and you have to get briefed on emergency situations. One passenger on the flight says he's glad everyone is safe, but wonders if more should have been done. The fact it was their own employee that, that did that, I, that, that, that's a whole different level. They let someone who tried to shut the engines down walk freely on the airplane. Emerson was hired by Horizon Air in 2001. He has since been employed by Alaska Airlines and Virgin. Alaska is the parent company for Horizon. As for whether this might be the result of a mental health emergency, pilots over the age of 40, you guys, have to undergo medical evaluations every six months and disclose mental health issues and the medications they're on. But a full mental health evaluation is not part of the physical. Emerson's last physical was last month. Mm. That's really unsettling, Tom. I say, before you go, talk about unsettling. Uh, we got to ask you about this JetBlue flight. If you're a passenger, if you were a passenger on that thing, are we saw it tip backwards at a, at a gate at JFK. Have, have you ever yeah. seen this before? <laughs> 
Uh, no, it's not supposed to do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, bottom line here, according to JetBlue, uh, the plane was at the gate. Passengers were coming off a flight from, um, from Barbados. This is an Airbus A321neo, I think, for those of us who are airplane geeks. Suddenly, they had a weight and balance issue, and obviously, it's heavier on the back end. We don't know why. What kind of cargo were they carrying? But this was a clearly a little bit disturbing if you were trying to get off the plane at the time. Uh, and, you know, whenever you're on, especially lighter planes, right, an Embraer kind of plane, and they say sometimes you'll be on a plane and they'll move people around. Uh -huh. yep. They need more people on one end or the other end because of weight and balance issue. That's why it's important, yes. so that kind of stuff doesn't happen. Yeah. 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 Oh, that what was in those Tom. bags? Tom, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of duty-free rum. <laughs> really? Kind of like the plane was doing a little trick. Up, oh, boy. Good boy. Good plane. Who's a good plane? Who's a good plane? Now lay down. <laughs> yeah. Lay down. All right, Tom, thanks so much. Uh, All right, turning out of the new ways, stores are trying to crack down on thieves, especially with the busy holiday shopping season approaching. I mean, this is a major problem all across the country. Ultimately, we end up paying for those stolen items. Well, NBC News senior cor investigative correspondent Vicki Wynn's here to tell us what's being done to stop it. What can they do? Vicky? Good morning. And speaking of rum, I get my hands on a few bottles of alcohol in this <laughs> piece. Good morning to you. You've probably already seen a lot of items locked up or attached to cords when you go shopping. But this morning, I'm going to show you some more anti theft technology that's in the works and could be coming to a store near you. We're going to take you inside a lab where researchers are helping some of your favorite stores stop the stealing. Thieves captured on security cameras brazenly running off with merchandise from deodorant and diapers to luxury goods. This is crazy. They're locking up the toothpaste. Losses from organized retail crime totaled $112 billion last year. Theft is an issue. If that's not corrected over time, prices will be higher right. and or stores will close. These crimes prompting some retailers, including Nordstrom, Target and Walgreens, to close stores. That's why I'm here at the University of Florida in a lab that's designed to teach retailers how to better protect their stores and their customers. With me now is the lab director, Reed Hayes. Reed, thanks so much. So who comes here and what are they hoping to learn? Well, we're getting in here almost weekly now. Uh, the main asset protection and loss prevention leaders from over 80 retail corporations. So let's start right here at the entrance to the store. What are we looking at? Well, this is an example of technology that can be integrated if it senses that somebody's getting ready to steal a whole lot of things at the same time. These gates will shut. You're not locked in, but it slows you down. And I notice there are cameras that you can barely see. That's right. We've got cameras in different areas designed to do just that, to help identify the offender later. The goal of these security measures is to make it more difficult to steal, increase the chances of catching the thieves, and cut down on the number of items they can get away with. What does this device do? Well, this is different. This is a device for very high loss items where you can't just take it. What you can do is use a device, call for a customer service. Right. If you don't want to wait, then you can hit the cell phone option. And in that case, it's going to send you a text. You're going to put that code in. So now you're able to well, open the case yourself. Yes. Okay. So this requires a consumer to be willing to give up their cell phone number. You've got to. So I'm going to demonstrate what happens when someone tries to take too much off the shelf. After five bottles, what happens? Thank you for shopping in our liquor and fine wine department. There he is. Services on the way to your aisle to help you immediately. So that's a classic example of using AI. Computer vision counted five times. You hit a tipping point and that tripped that alarm. So it says customer service is coming. I'm not going to wait because I'm a thief. Okay. So I turn and I make my way toward the exit. A lot of cameras are now picking you up right now because of that Vicky too. Okay. And this slows me down, but I can still get through. Yep, you can still get through. Ooh. The wheels on the cart locked because you didn't go past the point of sale and ring up a transaction. Hayes says some retailers are fitting store managers with body cameras. Research shows this can improve the customer experience and employee safety. And expect to see more of these cameras and screens when you're shopping. The researchers say that people are a lot less likely to steal when they can see themselves on camera. Hayes says in some cases, shoppers will have to use two hands to get products. So you can't take a whole lot of items in one fell swoop. Check out this shelf. First, you have to turn a dial to point the red arrow to the item you want. Then turn another knob to dispense it. And cameras will play a big role with features like facial recognition, artificial intelligence, even thermal imaging. 
and outside license plate readers that can help identify cars involved in other retail theft incidents. Are retailers really going to invest in all of this? Some of them have to invest in it. And just a safety reminder, if you do see one of these crimes in action, don't get involved. Report it to a store employee only if it's safe. And there are some privacy concerns here. The ACLU and others have raised because of the facial recognition. That's not always accurate. License plate readers, too. But look, retailers, they don't get insurance for these kinds of losses. So they're trying to figure out how to curb their losses. But all these measures, I mean, it seems like it must cost a lot of money to implement all of that. So doesn't that cost just get passed on to us? That's a great question, Dylan. Here's the thing. Retailers say, look, it is an initial upfront investment. But when you look at $121 billion in losses in just one year, that probably pays itself off over time because they can curb this. And then this summer, the Inform Act passed as well, which requires those large online sellers, think Amazon, eBay, to actually identify who's on there Mm -hmm. so that there isn't such an attractive secondary black market for the stolen goods. So if you can cut down on that reward, hopefully the theft goes down too. And party at your place this weekend with all that booze? All that booze, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right, Vic, thanks so much. Coming up, talk about shopping. Well, the holidays are coming, and our good pal, Stephanie Rule, is going to tell us how to figure out a spending budget and treat yourself to something special as well. Then later, a taste of nostalgia. We're going to take you behind the brand Joiva to see how they've been making sweet treats for more than a century. Third hour of today, I'll be right back. a week away, but the real scary thought is how much you're going to spend around the holidays. Just want to throw that out for you. So lucky for us, this morning's On the Money is all about how to create a budget and actually stick to it. NBC News senior business analyst Stephanie Rule is here to help. Steph, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we're getting If closer. you didn't spend enough on your Halloween costume, yes. let's get ready you for know Christmas. how much money I just spent on candy? Just uh, candy. It's another level. Stop whining. Okay. But I spent a lot of candy. Okay, this guy okay. gets full-size candy know. bars, so, like, he's big budget. He's so big trick budget. or treat at Owl's House. Um, first thing, as we get closer to the holidays, how do we stick to a budget? Okay, first and most important thing, make a budget. Okay, this is something <laughs> no point. one does, right? We forget this. It's really important. Actually make a list. You know, in your head, you're like, oh, just a few friends yeah, and family. I'm no, no, no. Started my list. I want you to write down every single person, and this includes tips, right? Your mail delivery person, uh, anyone at school, anyone in your community you might have to give a gift hair. to. Let's write this whole Ooh. entire thing down. Next, consider non-gift expenses. You might need to travel more. You might need to be hosting something, right? You might have to bring something to a party. How much do all those things cost and then at the end write it down people don't like to do it because like oh my gosh the number's huge yeah the number's going to be even uglier in january if you didn't think about it so just do it now okay so you have your budget how do you make sure you don't go over the budget which we so often do so i actually like to give a little bit of a cushion in there i like to plan for the unexpected right there are going to be surprise things you don't know you have to suddenly have to pay for you might need you want to buy a holiday outfit you might need to get decorations so i like to put an extra 10 percent in there on top and it's okay. You might want to buy yourself something, <laughs> right? You think about all the shopping you're doing. You're seeing all these deals out there. And you're like, like oh, I, I want, want this. Put it in your budget if okay. you can afford it. So just plan for it and then consider shopping alternatives. Are there things you can give a family member or a friend that don't cost money, right? Mm. My immediate family, we always go with gifts of service. You might oh. teach me how to make something. Al might teach me some barbecue tips, right? That way, really cool. you're going to, or one of my favorites, someone offering to do, if you're the host, 
do the dishes on Christmas. I would much rather somebody do That's the dishes. That's a really good idea. I would present. appreciate that as a gift. Costs right. nothing, That's right. but it's a great gift. And I nobody's returning them. And nobody's <laughs> returning them. <laughs> okay, so how do we get that money? How do we save that money? Okay, that's really for the important, budget. right? So you, now you have a budget. You're like, great, well, where am I getting that money mm -hmm. from? We have now planned for it. Let's say you're going to need $500 by December 25th. Well, now let's say you get paid bi-weekly. You can start putting, if you can afford it, 125 bucks away. And by Christmas, you're going to have that money. What I really love, and none of you are going to do it, you might, start planning in January. If oh. you start planning in January, actually create a separate account mm -hmm. and put a little bit of money away every paycheck. I love it if you put it in a high-yield savings account uh -huh. where you earn a little bit more. Come December, you're like, I'm not panicked. I have saved the money. When My we were last kids, they used thing, to have those Christmas clubs. Correct. Yeah, nice. Those Christmas clubs, you put that little bit of money away, and boom, by Christmas, you're in good shape. If you pay your credit card on time every month, mm -hmm. try to use a cash back credit card, then come December, you could be using that cash. All right. Mm -hmm. What do we have? Hey, hey. your next strategy Here to save. This seems like a no-brainer, right? Shop early. Yes, it's a no-brainer. People don't often do it because they're going, I'm not going to get the deals yet. I want to wait. No, 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 no. You saw Jill Martin today. There are deals to be had now. Shop early. Know your habits. If you're a procrastinator, and I feel like you are, I you am. are not. You know me well. King of the gift card. Yeah. Plan a little bit because there's nothing worse than waiting until mid-December and paying shipping fees. I hate paying shipping fees more than anything. Know that shipping fees are coming mid-December, and please do that ahead of time. Last one, take inventory. You don't necessarily need new clothes. You don't need yeah. new decorations. You might want to re-gift. Yeah. Please go oh, in your yeah. basement. Please go in your attic. There are things there. You don't need a whole new glitter costume. Sorry. <laughs> I, <told laughs> well, I like one. Yeah. Thank you, Steph. Craig was looking forward to that. <laughs> that's right. Right, Coming up, you. we're going to be going behind a brand that's been satisfying sweet tooths for more than tea? a century. Or is it sweet teeth? Uh, I got a hands-on look at how what they do it. Oh, uh, yeah, goodness. we're going to have to watch. Then later, the incredibly talented Quest Love, hey. Studio 1A. Quest is here to talk about his latest project with some other superstars. Third hour of today, back in just 60 seconds. Time. This morning in our series Behind the Brand, it's a family-owned business that has been creating sweet treats for more than 100 years. The candy company Joyva has been making sesame-based halva and other conventions since the 1900s. I got a little taste of their own Willy Wonka factory right in Brooklyn. You are, dare I say, a national treasure. We can almost feel like one national treasure is meeting another national yeah. treasure over here. I yeah, mean, but it's... you taste better. So. <laughs> For more than a century, Joyva has been enjoying the sweet taste of success in Brooklyn. Cousins Richard Radusky and Sandy Weiner, along with Richard's son Ben, are behind the fourth generation family owned candy brand, crafting tahini, confections, and their signature product, halva. For those who don't know, what is halva? Halva is mostly tahini, but kind of like a melt-in-your-mouth sesame party. A melt-in-your-mouth sesame party. Wow. That's what I'm going to go with. As the largest and oldest producer of halva in the United States, Joyva's beginnings date back to 1907. My grandfather Nathan came over on a boat as an immigrant from a small town outside Kiev and had a recipe for halva. 
And he started making halva and selling it off of push carts. That's kind of how it all started. Richard and Sandy joining the family business in their early 20s with their dads and uncles at the helm, eventually becoming co-owners of the brand in 2015. What's it like working with family, with and like your dad? Personally, I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Amazing answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Through working with my dad and working with Sandy, I've come to you know, appreciate what family means through the generations. Family values and tradition have been the recipe to Joyva's longevity. I know this sounds cliche, but I think the candy and the manufacturing is secondary to doing the right thing. It's really the secret sauce that allows us to keep going. I think that people have such strong associations with Joiva and family Joiva and holiday Joiva and gatherings. And those three things are, of course, timeless. Recently, the family, along with Chief Marketing Officer Farah Besner, has been working on evolving the brand, hoping to reach a new generation while still honoring the past. We worked with some amazing um, food technologists. We've changed our logo. So we are very, very excited to introduce Joiva to new fans. I heard you, Sandy, say food technologists. I mean, <laughs> I could hear your, your grandfather, your father <laughs> yeah. saying, what are you talking about? Yes. <laughs> we make candy, Wait, for yeah, God's sake. Yeah. It sounds like you knew them very well. <laughs> yes. I mean, would they be amazed at what this has become? Yeah, I think they would be very, very um, proud of us. I think that they're, they're they're smiling up there. These are busts of edible halva busts. Maybe we'll make one of you one day. <laughs> oh, my head in halva. <laughs> Finally, I wanted to get a taste of where the magic happens. This is special Joyva chocolate. Oh, that's good. From marshmallow twist to sesame crunch, Joyva's treats have been made in this factory for more than 90 years. These are our world famous jelly rings. Very, very popular for Passover. So these are kind of your peeps. These are our peeps. But the star of Joyva's factory is no doubt the halva. Ooh, smells good. And the family putting me to work. How much halva do you make in a day here? 20 and 30,000 pounds of halva a day. 20 to 30,000 pounds? Yes. Yeah. The ancient confection is made by hand using copper kettles. I gotta keep going around. I'm just gonna pretend this is Craig. <laughs> this could be the best batch we ever made, Al. With 116 years under its belt, Joyva isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Now you get, Al, to taste a piece of warm halva. Wow. It's a tahini party in my mouth. You are officially a Joyva halva maker. It's like a lot of work. Uh, oh my, I, I, that is a workout. Yeah. Those folks are doing that eight hours a day. Well, yeah, here, the, here we are. This might be a little disturbing for you. <laughs> uh, it's it's uh, my head in halva. You know, it's, a, look at, this, is, right this is really... It, look at that. What's, what's, okay, nobody can see that. Smells. It smells funny, though. Take a... Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> We also have this. It's funny because growing up, my grandmother would always have these jelly I've always rings. wanted my head in your lap. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Joyva is available in grocery stores all across the country. And starting today, you can now find their products on their website. If we come back, okay, Grammy and Oscar okay. winner Quest Love is live. There's Quest. He's talking about his new project, The Tonight Show. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's he's going to share some great advice, too. Yeah. Yeah, don't come on this show. On uh, then later, some cool looks that are going to keep you warm. Top-rated jackets, some gear for the winter. Third hour of today. Right back after this. I mean...
our next guest is the definition of multi-talented. Amir Questlove Thompson is a six-time Grammy winner, New York Times best-selling author, and an Oscar-winning filmmaker. He is also the front man for The Roots, who you see each night on The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon. He personifies Renaissance Man, right? Well, now Questlove is back with the third season of his web series, because he doesn't have enough to do. <laughs> yeah. It's called Quest for Craft, <laughs> a collaboration with Balvenie Scotch Whiskey. This is where he leads a, a conversational investigation with other creatives, like musician Anderson Pop. Because it's like, what haven't I done yet? What, what haven't I said yet? That's all, that's all the game we're playing is like, I can't fool myself. I know I've done, I done that melody. So you trust your gut? <laughs> oh my God! You really- yeah, I trust your gut. You really tattooed that one? I had no idea. <laughs> Coming? TMI, man. <laughs> wow. I had to report him to HR. No. <laughs> I, That's I, I, I didn't see that coming either. I didn't either, so, you know. <laughs> tell, us, tell us more about this, this digital series and how the, how the paid partnership came to be. You know, it's weird. Um, you know, I have a lot of peers that are in the industry, but I tend to freak them out because, you know, I just can't be a regular person and be like, oh, yeah, what do you want to get for dinner? I'm always like, so in the third verse of that song, like, what, were you, what did you mean by that? <laughs> so, you know, I, I guess, uh, not I guess, the, you know, the Balvini was, was kind enough to let me use their platform to create a show in which I get to ask about the creative process. Because for me, I like looking to figure out how the engine is made. Yeah. Like, I'm the person that would take something apart just to see how it's made. And, yeah. This, this show allows me to do that. It's a genius concept. And yeah. it's, by, by the way, it's, it's shot beautifully. Like, the production value yeah, of it is just... Nice. Yeah. So <clears throat> besides seeing Anderson Pox gut, you know, which yeah. kind of threw us all for a loop, uh, you also talk about joy in music. But what other conversations and who else did you sit down with? So, you know, this is our third season, so I really wanted to sort of... Uh, broach off into uh, subjects that you don't normally find on how to be creative mm -hmm. books or websites or whatever. And so um, we got uh, Yo-Yo Ma to talk about connection. Um, we got Fred Armisen to talk about commitment. Um, of course, uh, uh, Lena Waif talks about uh, finding your voice and, and Anderson .Paak uh, talks about joy or just letting being vulnerable inside your craft and connecting with people that way and joy is one of those components that he uses so yeah you talk about sharing advice uh you shared this with your viewers if you're struggling with a project and you're wavering don't step back don't waver just dig in and press on mm -hmm. what what led you to that you know oftentimes you know artists are people well not even artists everyone they they often live in their head and sometimes they might look at something the size of Mount Fiji or whatever, like, oh, I'll never get to do that. But I've learned probably, I think I learned during the pandemic, especially when we were working on Summer of Soul, yeah. that every day is just one step forward, mm -hmm. one step forward. So um, you won't have time to think like, oh, I'll never do that. If you're always gauging like how far you have to go, if you just do one step forward, right. then good. you'll you'll right. wind up to your destination. That's good yeah. Um, Rider strike ended. You guys started back over at the okay. Tonight Show. How happy are you to be back? You know, it's, it, for me, being here, uh, you know, I call this Thirty Rock University. Like yeah. it's a campus. It you guys yeah. are, you guys are a part of it. Um, I'm more than that. I couldn't wait to get back, you know, my entire life. Well, literally, like, my studio, my entire life is in my dressing room right now. So. You were still working in your office. I saw you a couple of times. Yeah, I'm always, yeah, I'm, I'm there. You'll, you'll tend to see me more on off-peak hours, like anywhere between 3 a.m. Oh. And 3 p.m., like. Is that when you're, you're most productive, you're most creative? Very much so. Quincy Jones taught me about, like, certain hours. Is, that's when inspiration comes and whatnot. So yeah. for, like songwriting or, or ideas for projects. Mm -hmm. I got to sit in silence and, and that's, my, that's my happy place. This year we've celebrated a lot, the 50th uh, anniversary of hip hop. Yeah. You co-curated the tribute at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. um, so just thinking back, like what was the song that fired you up back in the day? Like what made you want to do this? You know, I'm one, uh, I, I promise I wouldn't tell this story like, <laughs> To anyone, because I don't want to be the person that's like, we're back in my day. Yeah. I was, <laughs> you know, but to be of the age when Rapper's Delight mm. first came uh, on the air, 
the only way I could describe, and I'm always describing the people that never get the reference of, like, uh, War of the Worlds, like how the world mm -hmm. thought that this was a real thing right. happening. Right. Um, I just remember my sister and I doing dishes. I was nine years old, and it came on, and we just stopped and looked at the radio like, what is, yeah. this? What is happening here? here? Something like, new for the first time. Yeah, so just to, to experience so many firsts mm -hmm. um, and to be of age to, to see how it affected people, like, you, you couldn't ask for anything more as a music fan. And yeah. it's true that you can't rap and drum at the same time? That's something you're working on? That's the one thing I cannot do. Yeah, I, it's, I'm, you know, I'm not Phil Collins level with it. But. It's coming. Yeah. Amir Questlove Thompson. Yeah. Always a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you for having me. Thanks I for appreciate it. Uh, Quest for Craft episodes, by the way, available on YouTube. You cannot buy those glasses, though, on the internet. Those are one of a kind. Uh. Uh, catch The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Fallon, weeknights. 11.35 Eastern, right here on NBC. Well, coming up, we got hot looks to stay warm as the weather gets colder. We're going to share some top-rated winter gear. And then later in Today Food, a spin on pasta night when the pioneer woman, Reed Drummond, shares a cheesy recipe. You're going to want to try tonight. Third hour today, right back. weather will be here before we know it and this morning we are bundling up with the hottest winter gear tested and approved by experts good housekeeping's executive textiles director lexi Sachs, is here to walk us through their top picks good morning good morning thanks for having me it's nice to have you here because we are going to get into some colder weather and first things first you need a good warm jacket exactly so when you're shopping for a jacket it's all about the little details they make a huge difference so we have elliot here wearing a jacket from columbia and what's really cool about this is it has a thermal reflective lining in it. So what does that do? I have a jacket so, with that. And yeah, I know it's what it very is. subtle, but it retains your body heat. It sort of reflects it back onto you. Mm. So you get to feel warmer without having such a heavy and bulky coat. So you get to stay a lot more mobile. Mm. You know, it's easier to move around in. Um, this jacket is also weather resistant. So it's mm. got that waterproof outside. It has some adjustability around the cuffs. So things that are going to keep out the cold air. That's great. Yeah. Is it comfy? Super. Okay. Kind of like a baked potato in there. And you can find this technology does come in kid sizes and in women's oh, styles. So there's options for the whole family here awesome. as well. You wear it well. It looks good. <laughs> so uh, I, I wore mittens last when I was like eight. <laughs> Are they coming back? Yes, mittens do help keep your hands warmer mm -hmm. than gloves. And if you ever notice when you go outside when it's cold, you kind of hold your hands together, and that's because you're trapping in your body heat. So right. a mitten is a great option for that. This is from Smart Wool. It uses merino oh, I like wool. Smart wool. Yes, so merino wool is much softer and smoother. It's really thin. Exactly. So the it helps, you know, regulate your body temperature or your hand temperature, I should mm. say. And these actually do have touchscreen technology in the thumb. So if your phone rings, yeah. you can answer a call. I was oh. able to text out a little bit using the thumbs there. So it still has those features. It's not the same dexterity that you get with the gloves, but it will keep your it's hands warm. Hello, Craig. How are you? And you can hey. use your hand puppet as well. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Take off your there you mitts. Go. 
Yes. You can have fun with it as well. Awesome. Yeah, they're super smooth, not like itchy wool. So What's next, Chris? Lexi, Lexi, you say traditional scarves out, neck warmers in? Yeah, we are seeing these pullover styles a lot more this year. Feel how soft this is. It's amazing, right? So this is from Uniqlo. It's under $20. I can't feel it. And, yeah, feel this. It's so soft. Oh, that's Unisex, nice. so you can, you know, everyone can wear this. And it has this adjustable draw cord, so you oh, really close yeah, to you. Pull it down, yeah, you can pull that cord so you get that tight. Oh, that's close a, oh, okay, yeah, that makes yeah. a little bit more sense. Exactly, yeah. so you pull that's, that in, keep and tighter, tighter. you know, you don't have the extra <laughs> layers hanging down that you do with some of the scarves. Um, so really, you're warm, really cozy. But you look totally ridiculous. No, you do not look ridiculous. No, you look, you look great. Great. jacket on. That would be good. You look like you're in an accident, but other than that, you're fantastic. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah. Sally's wearing a, a neat parka. Yes, this is from REI Co-op, and this is a down parka. It's your great everyday down puffer jacket. Um, it comes with um, Real Down, which is the best insulator because it's super fluffy, so it tracks in air better. We have this flap over here that you know keeps the cold air out from seeping through the zipper. And one of the other things is it's really long, which is a great mm -hmm. option for the coverage. But if you're walking around or if you need to sit, they have these zippers here, so you oh. can get that Ooh. mobility too. I also want to point out the hood because our testers describe this as like a blanket. It is so cozy Watch here. Out, please. Yes, so we've got that lining in there. Oh, super cute. Amazing. Pair that with right. Craig's scarf. And yeah, you're not okay. super ready, cozy. ready for winter. Exactly. Yes. Um, sometimes the, the winter, it's not just about the cold, it's about just really bad weather. Exactly. Conditions. So over here we have Amanda and Alex in their weatherproof jackets from Land's End. This is a squall parka. These are truly weather resistant. So the materials, the sealed seams, they keep out all those harsh elements, the rain, the sleet, the snow, the wind, even that. So really great. We also love that these come in a wide range of sizes. Our models here are very tall. They are wearing the tall sizes. You can also get the petite, the regular, the plus sizes, all of that. And again, the adjustability features are key here. We have the wrists at the waist. You can pull them I love in. The cinched waist. Yeah. Exactly. And that really helps keep the cold air out from seeping in through all of that. So. I checked on the website. They've got a bunch of different colors, too. Bunch of different colors, bunch of different sizes. All of these jackets come in a lot of colors and sizes. So great options. And these also come in kid sizes, too. Right. So really the whole family. Remember the Brady Bunch episode mm -hmm. where they dropped the encyclopedia yeah. to see if his neck brace was real? I remember that. Yeah. That's, that's how I look. <laughs> thank Lexi, you, Lexi. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. All right, for more on these products, head to today.com slash shop. Well, coming up, we've got the pioneer woman, Reed Drummond, here sharing two tasty pasta dishes you can make for your family, including one that is packed with veggies. Mm. Third hour of today. We'll be right back. back with Today Food. This morning, we've got the pioneer woman, best-selling author, Reed Drummond, sharing two tasty pasta dishes from her new cookbook. We love the title, The Pioneer Woman Cooks, title. Dinner's Ready, <laughs> featuring over 100 fast and fabulous recipes for the slightly impatient home cooks. That. Reed, good to see you. Good to see you, Al. All right. Good it's morning. great to be here. I just feel like I'm home. You it's are. It's fun to be here. And I speaking of home, mm -hmm. I want to cook because I'm, I'm hungry. Yes. Okay, <laughs> and I'm laughing it's a good because reason to cook. it's all about pasta mm -hmm. today. I mean, I say bring back pasta. Yes. And I am really into these oven pasta sauces. Oh. So basically you put all the ingredients in the oven, mm -hmm. put on a pot of pasta to cook, Makes and then so by the easier. time it's ready, you pour the pasta in. So mm -hmm. Bing. a couple of years ago on social media, there was this viral recipe that yes. took over. You might remember the feta, the, cheese, the feta right? pasta yeah. phenomenon. So you guys help me add this. Okay. 
All we're adding is cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes, shallots, mm -hmm. or you can use onion, mm -hmm. garlic. All this hot pepper? Yep, hot pepper flakes and oregano, olive oil, salt, right. and pepper. So you're preheating the oven at this point to 425, really hot. Mm -hmm. And then you can stir this, Dylan. Okay. Yep. And then the original had feta, which mm -hmm. is delicious, but I'm sort of a goat cheese girl. Oh. <laughs> so I'll make a little look, hole for you, you here. This pasta. Yes. <laughs> and you just nestle this goat cheese okay. right in. Nestle the cheese. And bake Put this. Put it in the oven and cook the pasta. And then this is what it looks like out of the oven. Dylan, what kind of pasta is this? That's Campanelli, Craig. <laughs> she oh, knows wow. her pasta Thank shape. She does. <laughs> we were all stumped. And she's like, Campanelli? So uh, you like win the, the pasta pastas. prize. So in goes the, the pasta, pasta and then reserved pasta water, which okay. is always good. Mm -hmm. And then, then you, you just can toss that in. Okay. And it turns into this creamy, like magnificent, just, you know, this the, the so tomatoes simple. burst open. I love it because you don't have to stand at a skillet and right. cook a sauce. Well, yeah, it really concentrates sure. the tomato. I want to make sure we have too. enough time for the this second one. This is the one I'm obsessed with. So this is a play on the whole theme, and it's cauliflower and broccoli broken up. Hmm. And you just add garlic. Mm -hmm. Diced onion. Oh wow, this is and delicious. Isn't that yummy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the goat cheese. It just has that certain creaminess. Oh yeah. Olive oil and then cream, oh, which is uh, like my BFF. Makes it <laughs> and a little bit of broth. You can do veggie broth or chicken broth. Salt and pepper. Toss this and you put this under the broiler. Oh. oh. Hot, hot, hot. And so what happens is. You get this Ooh, beautiful, nice like quick roasted veggie situation. Oh, nice. And then in goes the pasta. Let's quiz Dylan on the. I believe that's Orcetti. It is Orcetti. Congratulations, <laughs> little ears. For two. Which translates to little ears. ears. Little ears. Or, yeah, they, they're shaped like the ears. <laughs> but of yeah. course, you can use macaroni or whatever you have. So after you add the pasta, you go in with some pesto, which this is store bought, or you can make your own. Mm -hmm. Parm, and so all of this is steaming hot. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the great thing is, you stir it; it's all ready to go. You can serve it straight out of the baking dish. Mm -hmm. Put this on the table it's, on a trivet. Crispy roasted broccoli, broccoli is my favorite too. Me too. It just brings out the flavor. And then you can sprinkle on some toasted pine nuts. Your sister oh. couldn't eat this one. Unless you're Betsy, my sister. Betsy and then, can't have this one. <laughs> you can't. Right. Sorry, but Betsy. Way to call nuts. out Betsy. You can yeah, use right? macaroni, any kind of short pasta. Mm -hmm. We were talking about. Too silly and Ooh, rotini right. and good. all that stuff. Because you're okay. silly, Jerry. <laughs> that's really I love, good. Babe. There you go. Thank well, you. Wow. Of course, Thank you can you add much. roasted chicken. You can, you well, know, add meatballs. Anything you want. So that's fantastic. Bring oh, wow. back pasta. All right. Yes. Oh, what goodness. kind of flowers are those? Fake. <laughs> <laughs> the fake ones. <laughs> Artificial. Some dollars. Anyway, uh, for more, head to today.com/food. Ree's cookbook, oh, The Pioneer know. Woman Isn't Cooks. That? Dinner's ready. That's is out now. Third hour today, I'll be right back. Thanks so much, Ree. It's great to see you. A very special and personal conversation with figure skating legend Tara Lipinski. Coming up on Hood and Jenna, country star Jayla Kramer's here. We hope you have a great day and hope you'll be back tomorrow. Until then, have a great day, everybody. <laughs> bye bye. You were stretching. And have a great day.
today feeling overworked and exhausted, unmotivated? Well, we've got some advice to help you beat the burnout. Plus, country music star Jana Kramer opens up about her past and her next chapter in an intimate new memoir. And the next big trend for men, Kim K has just what the guys have been waiting for. And we're talking about it. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. My name is Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, October the 24th. The 24th day of October. Halloween's almost here, by the Can way. Can you believe Halloween is knocking on the door? It, it is knocking. Do you have your costumes? Well, we have our costume, you and me. Oh, yes, we do. We can't reveal it. But Are you it's into going it? To be, I'm into it. I just had a fitting <laughs> for my outfit. I'm into it, too. It's going to be so you're much gonna fun. Be, you're going to be hilarious. You I like humor. I feel like humor Halloween costumes are the way I tend to trend. Can I tell you, in some moments where there is a lot of despair, in those open cracks yes. of your day, your time, that's what we should be filling it with, laughter, yes. which is what exactly what we did yesterday. Yes. By the way, I delighted in our show yesterday. You were totally embarrassed, and I delighted in it. Okay. So we had Chris Appleton here. Yes. I kept calling him Chris Stapleton. I, I mean, this could, is so embarrassing. Wait, he claimed that he could do seven different looks in commercial breaks. Yeah. And each commercial break was only like two and a half, three minutes, maybe 3.30. So in those times, he came up with seven looks. <laughs> so we thought, hey, let's get viewers to pick their favorite. One, which was the big hair. Two, <laughs> that, I don't know. Three was J Lo. Four, top knot. Five looks the most like when you let when you're having like yeah. a really good hair day. Six, I loved. It was like a loose bun. There's Chris in the background. And seven was after the cut. That's my real hair. That's your hair. Number okay, seven. So I'm gonna say who I picked because I think it's fair that it's all, I can it's weigh all me, in. But you can pick the hair. I'm gonna pick the hair. Okay, which one? I think that the winner was. I'm gonna go unconventional. Six. What was it? Seven. Oh, they you liked know. my actual hair. That's so sweet because I have to tell you, I was telling Talia and Gavin yeah. earlier, I learned something about myself. What? Which is when I came out at the beginning, and you probably yeah. sent this yes, for me. Yes, you did not. You not it's one thing to wear tons of extensions when you're in a Halloween costume because you're playing a character. You, you know, feel, you That's felt fun. subconscious. I felt weird. At yeah, the beginning. I could tell. You were totally not yourself. I felt so weird. And what it taught me was uh -huh. that whenever you're trying, and like this, you know, can be a spectrum for me, and I think for everybody, mm -hmm. when you're trying to be something you're not, it ain't ever gonna work. It ain't ever gonna work. So with all of that hair, I kept looking and thinking, like, I don't even know that person. I don't person. feel like me. I don't feel like me. That is, you're right. That is such a good life lesson, no matter what it is. Yes. Whether you go and you, sometimes when you're glammed up at a party, you know, when you go to a party, sometimes you feel self-confident yes. and, and sometimes you feel like Weird. you're playing a role and you become more, you know, you go more inside. If you have like, too much makeup mm -hmm. on or too, too much, much hair, hair, there's too much. It's too much. Um, you know that they told us that uh. th some of those were actually J-Lo's extensions? Had I Wait. known that? The hair that he put in they your hair? hair? Possibly. Were J because he takes care of J-Lo's Because he extensions. takes care of J-Lo. Um, I think that's also a good lesson. Also, when you talk about being yourself to teach your kids. I am learning so much of about child re raise, raising my kids. Char I like how you child, child rearing. rearing. I was going to call it rearing. It sounds so old-fashioned. Yeah. But I'm learning because what I realized is there are resources available if we need to help raise our child. Yes. I think sometimes we think my, ki my child's this way. Because... You know, sometimes at our house, Haley will have a meltdown about something. I didn't know how to do, deal with it. And someone yeah. was helping me. And they said, this is what you should do in case anyone has a child with meltdowns. In case every single person every single has person. a child with a meltdown. <clears throat> what do you do? If, the, if your child's saying, I'm scared, I'm scared, Mom, I'm scared under the bed, under, something's under the bed. Don't go, look, honey, there's nothing under the bed. See, there's nothing. Why are you scared? There's nothing to be scared of. Yeah. Or I don't, my friends all me. They like you. Don't do that. The very first thing you should do, they said, grownups and kids, is validate your child's feelings. That must be scary. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the shoulders drop. Yeah. And you can have a conversation. And then he said something to me, which was a game changer for me. Because sometimes the meltdown's happening, and it's bedtime. So you want to go, but yeah. honey, you got to go to bed. Yeah. But honey, you got to go to sleep. He said, take the word but out of your sentence and always put in the word and. So in other words, honey, I see what you're saying. 
And that honey, your body needs to rest. Yeah. And and you find your this body is working. Needs to rest. It's working. Look, if I said, Davey, you're doing a great job, but you really have to da da da, you'd be like, but. Yeah, wait, the but Dave, makes you. Davey, you're doing a great job. And can you please cue me on. See? <laughs> like the and. It's the and. The and makes no, that's it nice. So true. Even though it's the same so it's as a but. Not it's even an and. for kids, by the way. You can do that for adults. Grown ups. I want to help you. And, and I'm busy right now. now. Yes. Right? But yes. I'm busy yes. makes a person and not feel yes. seen. And I'm busy right now. And, and I'd love to help you next give week. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> yes. And. You know what's so funny is that I actually set, gave Mila. Yeah. Because one of the things that I've been doing yeah. is trying to talk about either myself or a fake person or a friend. Oh, when they're having a problem. Yeah. To, and, you know, I just said, I had this thing yesterday. She saw the hair. She thought it was hilarious. Yeah. She saw Hollywood Hager and it oh. made her life. Hollywood is now She saw the Hollywood fine. costume and she was like Did showing you, wait, it. Can we go and delve into that a little bit? Do you know that people were saying, and I don't know how this came about, Lisa Renna was compared to that oh, yeah. cat. No, she, and then Lisa Renna commented on the page and then it's like a whole thing what Lisa Renna the cat no Sean, but that was how if Hollywood Hager were human. was a human she would be Sean plus Lisa Renna is that insane? with the claws okay go back to you I'm sorry okay so what I said, said oh. because Mila saw all the weird yeah, 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 news because yeah. Henry showed her because he yeah. thought it was hilarious because you know it's not it's funny me, but you know you're yes. gonna do it next no that was your thing. No, 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 no. It was no, our no, thing that we shared thing. together. Our thing. Okay, and continue, I know continue. that it's going to be something you'll do. But anyway, so. <laughs> and I think not. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, yeah. There is Hollywood. Is that not Lisa Renna as totally, a cat? Totally. I think it's the hair. and It's the hair. But the also the outfit. The I mean. Outfit. That's exactly okay, what go, a Lisa Renna okay, cat would wear. Go on. We anyway, can, okay. Focus. So I said to Mila, because yeah. she did a dance at school, and I could tell mm -hmm. she was feeling small yeah. yeah and first of all i went all mel robbins on her yeah. i'm what like you girl you are big I'm gonna, you go and you <laughs> high five yourself and you say i am brilliant she's like mom please stop i'm like you are amazing i'm like do you want me to go mel robbins on you she's like who's mel robbins <laughs> she was scared but i went all mel robbins yeah, on and her how first. Did it work? yeah not great it didn't work because i was preaching yeah Trying to be all raw, raw. Some yeah, she was like, well, she yeah. was scared. Yeah, she was like, you're yeah. too much, mom. Yeah. yeah. Shh. <laughs> so <laughs> then what? So then last night, I told her, I said, I felt really weird when I looked like that. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, why? And I said, because I wasn't myself. I wasn't acting like myself. That you know, I don't really care about big yeah. extensions. Yeah. Yeah. I felt weird when I was talking to Hoda. I couldn't even be in my own body. Mm -hmm. I was like, have you ever sort of felt that way? And she, she did. So I feel like my new thing is to, and sometimes I make up fake people. Like that my works. friend Sue. My friend Sue, my one friend time Sue got had a thing. On. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, whatever. Yes. By the way, by the way, I think all this, anyone who's got any child rearing tips, I love that. Yes, yeah, send them because to us. Because sometimes don't hoard your secrets. If no, you no. know something, tell us. We We're don't like, gatekeep. Oh. We're, right. We don't gatekeep around here. Oh. And also, the fact that y'all picked my real hair. You know what? I want to cry. That's because we Look at the people that watch our show. Because, we love y'all. We like you just as you are. Okay. Stop. I'm on a fragile, I know fragile. You are. <laughs> okay. She's right on the edge. All right. So Kim K has once again broken the internet. She breaks it at least once a week. What happened this time? Well, Skims, which you know is her shapewear brand, is launching a new line. Yes. Skims is now aimed at men. Okay. Mm -hmm. The ad campaign features big name athletes like NFL Nick Bosa, Brazilian soccer star. Neymar and oh, NBA. Neymar's in it. Do you love Neymar? Okay. By the way, all these top athletes are in it, and it's it's Skims for men. Now, Skims has a whole variety of clothing. It's got undies and PJs. By the way, and I'm a Sk I get why Kim has cre is a billionaire because, or maybe she is. So because look. Skims, I'm obsessed with Skims. Yeah. Me now too. you can't get them half the time. No, I know They're they sold drop. Out. The nightgowns are like squeeze you in, but they don't mean to. They're so great. But anyway, so they've started with unders and boxers, but they're... I love that you say unders. We've always <laughs> said unders. I didn't know anyone said unders. Do you have your unders? That's what we say. Unders. And you know what else you say that I say? Micro. Oh my God, are you going to put in the, the micro? Do you use the word unders. flicker for A remote flicker. control? Flicker, unders, micro. We, we like we're sisters from another mister. All right. Okay, anyway, they're starting with the underwear and the boxers and the briefs and such, but they're moving into shapewear. Oh. 
They're moving into. So men are getting tight. They're moving into. <laughs> now, here's the thing, Kim. I like that you had those very taut. Yeah. Yeah. Strong. Yes. But we got to put like Regular real men. You got to get like a Henry Hager up in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because otherwise, oh, how did y'all have that prepared? <laughs> There's always a Henry Hager <laughs> shot ready. I can't believe they I had that on the ready. Of course they do. You got to get like Would Henry real. ever wear shapewear? Let's be real. Like a spank? Ish. I mean, you know. Yes, would he have a girdle? Would he? No, he doesn't need one. Men, like, it, men first like of all, free. it would have to go real high. Cause no, and I think men like to be free. But I, don't think I just think if you're, it. if Kim's going to go into shapewear, she's going to have to highlight people with the dad Regular. Dad yeah, because, like, none of those men, you know, nobody needs it. But Yeah, okay. All right, so <laughs> up next. Are you feeling exhausted? Overworked? Burned out? Yes, yes, and yes. If the answers are all yeses, we've got some help right after this. <laughs> so funny. I can't a topic which many women can relate to burnout yeah these three ladies you're about to meet they know the feeling all too well and um, I was feeling run down a little mm -hmm. bit run down a little bit ago so take a look you know what I learned yesterday sometimes you just have to stop sometimes you're run down because you're trying to do everything for everybody and you realize like I have to stop it all started right here with my own realization I slept I slept and I slept and I slept and I slept and I slept. I was feeling sick, run down, and a little burnt out, and apparently, so were many of you. When we posted this clip on social media, the comments flooded in. So what is burnout? Burnout is, very simply put, a psychological response to prolonged exposure to stress. It's like stress fatigue. It doesn't feel like depression to me. I just feel burnt out. It's been a long day and I've only been up for like three hours. I don't know if I should spend this time screaming or zoning out completely. So when we think about who's subject to burnout, it literally can be anybody. My name is Leah and I am the mother of two teenage girls. I have two small businesses. It's just a lot for me. Hi, my name is Alana. I'm 29 years old. I'm my own boss. With everything I have going on, I've been experiencing burnout. My next paycheck is never guaranteed, and I don't feel like I can take breaks. Hi, I'm Elisa. I've been a practicing lawyer for decades and have a family with two kids. I am currently in between jobs. Being productive from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day has taken a toll. Most mornings before I even start working, my eyes feel like they're burning from staring at screens the whole day before. How can I take more breaks without feeling like it'll impact my business? What does it look like to take time for yourself as someone who's burned out and just tired? Is there a solution? We want to get to solutions, but first we want to visit with Ilana Dunn, Leah Sardina, and Elisa Dunleavy. Ladies, you're singing our song. Like when we, yeah. we were nodding as we were listening to you, how bad did it get for you, Ilana? I feel like it's something that so many people, like everyone I talk to can relate, where it's this constant pressure and constant feeling of, if I stop working or if I take a break, I'm doing something wrong. Especially for me, where my next paycheck is guaranteed, I feel like I have to always be working. And if I'm not working, I'm thinking about working. It hurts my hands, it hurts my neck, yeah. it hurts my eyes. It's, it's this constant cycle of feeling 
Like, I need to be doing more. Mm -hmm. But then when I do more, I feel worse and yes. I resent my job. It's, yeah. so, it's so interesting, Leah, because I feel like the pandemic, in some ways, like, there's less boundaries than ever. Mm -hmm. We can Zoom. There's, you know, mm -hmm. no nine to five right. was a thing in the past. You have teenage children. I do. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we think, oh, we're in, you know, people will say with kids our age, you're in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. But you say it actually continues to get <laughs> yeah. hard. It doesn't get any easier. It's yeah. all fun and cute when you have toddlers and they're doing all the cute stuff. But the older they get, the greater the demand. Um, uh, you need to supervise. We have to be on top of technology. We have to be on top of, you know, the, the friendships that they're curating and their paths in the world, what they want to do, who they want to be when they grow up, aside from everything else that you're doing for yourself. Yeah. I think, at least it feels like everything is going out. There's a lot of outflow. You're taking care of your kids. You said you're in between jobs. You're working. There's a lot going out. And it seems to me, listening to you, not enough coming in. Is that right? Yeah, it's you're just constantly on this hamster wheel of productivity and trying to keep yourself motivated and putting out all of your love and effort and everything else with your kids, your family, your job. It's a lot to balance. And being in you're in between jobs now still? Or? Yeah, so I'm still in between jobs. That's and gotta be stressful. It is because, yeah. you know, in your career, as you're building it in your 20s and your 30s, you know, you feel like I just wanna be, you know, a top performer. And when you're suddenly finding yourself in a place where you need to find another job yeah. and get that motivation to apply and have interviews and everything else, it can be exhausting. Yeah. 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 It's so, it, I feel like exhausting. Mm -hmm. I feel like when we are burnt out, when we're overwhelmed, our, our anger, our, our yes. sharpness comes out sideways. Have y'all yeah. found that at yes. your sort of lowest? <laughs> Snapping at everybody. Yeah. Snapping. I mean, okay, uh -huh. so we're going to find out how to fix this. Okay. Yeah. We all need it. Yes. So right. stay right here. Up next, we're going to have some advice from you and help our viewers to help manage and avoid mm -hmm. burnout right after this. We are back now with three busy women you met before the break, Alana, Leah, and Elisa, and they are feeling burnt out, and y'all, help has arrived. We've got Dr. Alfie Breland Noble here to help us manage and avoid burnout. She's a psychologist and founder of the Acoma Project. Dr. Alfie, it's so good to be here. Okay, you've heard the problems. Yes. We know that everybody's stressed out and feels like they are on fumes. Yes. If you were to take the very first step to yeah. try to combat burnout, what yeah. would you advise people to do? I always say to people, you have to decide that you want your life to be different, right? Mm. If you don't make the decision first, anything that comes after that is not something that's going to stick. So I think the idea is decide that you want so things to be better. So say out loud. What would you say out loud? I would say to myself, do I want to feel better and different than I feel right now? Yes. Okay, so I would say that all three of the women here, by being part of this, yes. by sharing yeah. their stories, have done that. Okay. Absolutely. So what? now what? Yeah. The next step is how much motivation do I have to change, right? Because mm -hmm. you can plan and make all kinds of ideas for changes, but if you haven't decided that you have motivation to change and you're gonna stick with it, then it doesn't change. So there are all these kind of pre-steps before you do before anything. Before you act, so you have to imagine what your life would Visual, be. Maybe yeah. visualization. That's it, visualization mm -hmm. can be it. It can just be sitting quietly. You can be writing out, okay, like on a scale of one to 10, how ready am I to do this stuff? How much time am I gonna invest, right? Mm -hmm. So you gotta, 
decide and, how and motivated by the way, you are. I mean, all three of these women, by just reading their stories, are torn in so many different yes. directions they, yes. that they may not even have time to sit down and think about how you can, actually feel. But can you take that? Yeah. Time? Yes, you yeah. can. You can. It's it's a matter of you know we make times for the things that are important to us, yeah. right? So if it's not important to you, you're not going to make time yeah. for it. And if your schedule is already packed, yeah. right, then you need to find time to well, take care of yourself. They always say, and you guys were saying this, take time for yourself. Yes. What do people suggest you do? Yeah. Oh, self-care. Go get yeah. a massage. Get your yeah. nails done. Get your nails done. Yeah. Yeah. Take a vacation. Yes. Take a vacation. Take a okay. vacation. Right. So All of which is money. Yes. 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 Right? yes. All those things cost money. Right. And, and not also, only that, do they actually... Do they work? ...have sustainable no. change? No. So I think it's temporary. Yeah, a massage will help but like we were talking about earlier you know 10 minutes later 20 minutes later an hour later then you, you're the back where is you back. were so it's the idea of i've decided i want to feel better i'm motivated to feel better now i have to do something yeah right? so what are but people don't know what would be the steps what would you do yeah what should we do? setting boundaries is a big one okay right as yeah. a mom i have two kids right mm -hmm. so when my kids were little they knew that mommy needed time in the morning and they were toddlers right and so i remember hearing them whisper don't bother mommy because she's meditating so you would tell them the truth too because we can yeah. always say, say we have a work, work call Call. Yeah. If we need a break, sometimes we hide in our closet in and the say, bathroom. We're on a work we're call. Oh, yeah. right, but, but think about think about the message that we're totally. sending our kids. Like we want to teach them young. Okay. It's okay to take time. Okay, for what if yourself. it's too late and you have teenagers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help right. you out here. Right, right. You can you can set boundaries boundaries with them as well. So you have a daughter, right? One daughter. Two daughters. Two, two daughters. Two daughters, right? So what better message to give them than as a woman? You need to set those boundaries and take so time for yourself. So you could say, hey, guys, I'm going to go take 10 minutes taking, to meditate. That's yeah. it. And I will well, be back. I'm taking 10 minutes of quiet time. Yeah. I just quiet need time. to be quiet. quiet. I just need silence. You know what? And quiet yeah. time can, can look a lot of different ways. Yes. But one of the things that I think people are doing, I, I know I do sometimes, is when I've just had it, I'm just scrolling. Yes. That is not no. wasted. That's so not quiet time, right? Yes. I mean, it's it's silent, but your brain, you're still making your brain work, right? right? So it's really kind of zoning out, listening to music. Right, I have this app I love called Nature Space. Mm. It's just literally sounds. I love the ocean. Just listening to the beach, listening so to the lake. what does that give you, that 10 minutes of listening? It turns your brain off, mm. right? That 10 minutes of just listening to sounds means you're not actively engaged with your brain. Yeah. You're allowing your brain a break. Something that I feel like works for me during the two things, I like to have a, like a little morning routine to set the day. Yes. And then throughout the day, if I if sometimes I feel like, oh, I don't see light at the end of the tunnel. I'm yes. going to be going through this. And then the weekend, yes. we already have this. And then it's going to go on. I try to take like mini breaks. Yes. And I actually will call it that. Yes. Yeah, I'm taking a mini break. Because yes. that makes my heart feel like, oh my God, I get, yes. a, I get a break <sighs> coming up. Even if it's yes. A half hour or That's 20 exactly minutes. Right. And we, you know, in technical terms, we would call that a reset, mm -hmm. right? You're yeah. just giving your brain a, a mini reset. Yeah. You're doing that throughout the day, right? The stress doesn't stop after the first time you meditate, right? You meditate or you're quiet or you have your quiet time in silence or you're listening to music or you journal or whatever it is that you do. For a little while, it stays, and then all that stuff starts building right back up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you want to give yourself another break to reset. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I you know, we were we talk about this a lot. I feel like there was a period where it was so cool to be busy. Mm -hmm. Like you, people would say, how They'd are you? Oh, my gosh, I'm bragging. so busy. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm so Well, busy as a yeah. positive as a thing. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah. How, bit, how wanted I am. Yes. I'm busy. Yes. But that isn't cool no it's more cool and it's like it's that thinking about the peer pressure when i was listening to the ladies talk earlier one of the things i was saying to myself i'll tell people all the time your value is in your existence your mm. value is not in the things that you do oh, yeah. and so if you can bring yourself back to you know mm. i'm here i made it to another day i got mm -hmm. up this morning there were other people who weren't that fortunate that's where i feel like the day mm. has to start and then you don't have to pile stuff onto your day or be busy mm -hmm. to feel like you're valuable or contributing what do you do lastly what do you do at the day's end what's a good practice yeah, that people great. can do i think well i'm an avid meditator so you mm -hmm. talk about meditation i like to like consider the day. I made it through the day. I think about something that I'm grateful for in the day. I love practicing gratitude. Mm -hmm. I might journal something. Um, I might go back and meditate again, but it's just giving myself some quiet reflection to thank myself for getting through another yeah. day. You know what someone once said to me at the end of the day, say, these are three things I appreciate yes. about myself. Yes. By the way, that's so hard and yeah. weird yes. when you think about yeah. it. You're like, yes. what do I appreciate? What do, It makes you think of the three things it you does. did right. Yeah, and then totally. you, it's a different 
twist on it. Yeah, but and I would say too, nature. Yeah. Like I sometimes if my husband calls and is stressed, I say get out and walk That's around. Right. Yes. Walk. Put your feet in Just, the grass. Who, you can say yes. Yes. Feet. feet grounding. In, oh yeah, yes. she loves that. Yes. I mean, she yeah. likes to put her feet I right in some Yes. Thank right. you guys. I mean, we could talk about this forever. Y'all, thank you guys so much for coming. Good luck. Keep us. Do y'all feel a little better just by being heard? <laughs> Definitely. I've got some okay. to do today. <laughs> All right. Coming up next, y'all, actress and singer Jenna Kramer. The country star is opening about her turbulent past. Now she's finally found happiness after this. I tell you. and lows of Jana Kramer's personal life have been played out in the public eye, but now the actress, music artist, and podcast host is telling her own truth. Yeah, we're going to talk with Jana in a moment, but first, take a look at her story. Once upon a time he loved me Once upon a time I loved him too Jana Kramer is an award-winning country singer who rose to fame after starring in the teen drama One Tree Hill. But her personal life was far more complicated, as she reveals in her new memoir, The Next Chapter, which she reads here. My dad leaving was the start of my issues with anxiety. I started to think that if I had been better, smarter, prettier, worthier, my dad wouldn't have left us. Jenna married her first husband when she was 19 and says she endured physical abuse, her husband eventually going to prison. The more he hit me, the more I wanted him to love me and he often threatened to kill me. The more I tried to get his approval, the more I disappeared. She says her third marriage to former NFL star Mike Cosson suffered from infidelity and broken trust. Today, she has two children she adores and is expecting a new baby with her fiance, Alan Russell. She says she holds space for both the trauma of her past and the hope for her future. I have found authentic happiness for the first time in my life and when I truly loved myself, is when I found love. Jana's new memoir is called mm. The Next Beautiful. Chapter. Hi, we're so, I mean, I, <laughs> you're pr pregnant mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. watching this back and I could mm -hmm. tell that it was mm -hmm. kind of hard yeah. to look at for yeah. you. Yeah, it's just, well, I think, you know, book release day, it's just a lot of emotions and then just having to see all that. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not easy, you know, well, even with all the work done, it's still yeah. our past and our past holds a lot in our bodies still, right? Yeah. yeah, there's that book that's called The Body Keeps the Score, yeah. and it's so true. Yeah. I think it started, in fact, when, we were, when you were reading that line about your own father yeah. and what it, what it is like to feel unloved, unwanted sure. at such a young age. And how do you think that shaped you? You know, I think for me, yeah, my, my childhood, I don't want to say wounds, but the mm -hmm. things, the messages that I believed, which were never true, but yeah. those the messages that I either made up or that I thought to be true, just stayed with me through all the years. And to have to rework that in your brain and to go, okay, no, that's not the truth. I am deserving of love. I don't deserve abuse. I, I am good enough. And that's a really hard journey, especially when you're starting at almost 40 years old going, mm. okay, I've believed all these messages, messages for so long. Mm. So now I have to retrain my brain to go, no, I do deserve this. And, you know, I, it's, that's why I'm very mindful of things that I say to my kids too, because mm. I don't want them to have certain messages that they might make up in their head as well. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, I think you put it out there, mm -hmm. some of your past heartbreaks. Mm -hmm. You write about your first marriage and it was almost 
hard to read. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of women who experience domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is a scary mm -hmm. topic, but to live it, mm -hmm. you know, and to read that you said, but the more he hurt you, mm -hmm. the more you were like, love me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did it feel like in those darkest moments? So I, I, yeah, I, I haven't spoken much about the domestic abuse because it's just still the hardest piece because yeah. I still have a little bit of shame mm -hmm. around it. Just I remember when I was reading the audiobook of this, I'm like, girl, what are you doing hiding in the bushes? Like, get yeah. out. Like, yeah. You deserve so much better than this, yeah. you know? And so there's that little piece of shame that still kind of like lingers inside of me. And, you know, it's it's difficult, but I mean, that also, it's, I, again, I'm just trying to, when I, when I talk to people about domestic violence or when I um, share my experiences, it's like, of course you're gonna think those things because that's what, again, what you thought was to be the truth. And now I would never let anyone put their hands on me or talk to me or disrespect sure. me in that way. But now it's because I know that I deserve respect. And mm -hmm. I think you, what you did, and it's clear in this book, is you put in a lot of work because you don't go from A to where you are today without putting in some hard work. What did you do and how did you arrive in this place where you are today? So I realized that I was repeating some bad patterns. Yeah. I was kind of picking the same people, mm -hmm. but I realized it wasn't, and I could sit here and I could say, oh, my ex is so bad and this and blame yeah. him. But it's really, truly like, yes, maybe their choices were bad, but I had the, the broken pieces that allowed certain patterns mm -hmm. to continue. So I had to really go, okay, something is broken inside of me to allow this to keep happening. Mm. And it was a lot of therapy. I went to this amazing place in Tennessee called Onsite, which just changed oh, my I've entire that life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just really, mm -hmm. again, um, doing some really hard work and going, okay, I have, this is where I can take ownership. And this is where, yeah, I was definitely controlling and I manipulated and I was not the best version of myself. And this is also why, it's not an excuse, but here's, here are the reasons why I did these things and mm -hmm. why I was gripping on so tight and just wanting to be loved so badly and repeating and you know, just trying to have these men fall in love with me and just the, the, the toxic pattern mm -hmm. and the cycle of being chosen. Well, we, ha we have more, we wanna keep yes. talking. You, you, can you stick around for yeah, a little sure. bit? Sure. Okay, we're gonna talk with Jan a little bit more on baby number three on the way and a lot more coming mm -hmm. up after this. To that place. We're back with actress, singer, and host of the Wine Down podcast, Jana Kramer. She's out with a revealing new memoir. It's called Next Chapter. And I think it's interesting because some people, you, you talk about how you had a pattern. You picked the same kind of guy, and it was the, the wrong kind of guy. And you kept doing it. And a lot of women do that. They beat themselves up, yet they continue doing it. At some point, you pulled up and you said, enough. What was your point where that was it? I think for me, it was realizing that it wasn't just them, it was me. I was like, yeah. I'm repeating the same like toxic yeah. patterns. Like, I don't want to be this, I don't want to be controlling. I don't want to be a detective. I don't want to be like anxious. I don't want to yeah. be just desperate for love. Yeah. That felt exhausting yeah. to me. So it wasn't even like them, it was me. It was that you. That was like, <clears throat> I need to wake up. Was there a moment in your last marriage where you mm. were just like, okay, I've had it like uncle, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. something has to change. It was the, the scene in the book, the laundry room scene where I would have normally gotten in his face and we would have just battled it out. 
And mm -hmm. I just looked at him and was just like, I have nothing, I have no fight left in me to mm -hmm. continue this. And that's when I went into the closet and was just, I basically just prayed and was like, just show me that he cheated. Just give me some kind of sign, even mm -hmm. though I had a million you other know. signs, but I just, I, 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 I didn't have the fight anymore. I didn't want to fight anymore. I was exhausted. I was done. And it was going to be more painful to stay than leave this go around. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the switch for me. Can we talk about now you're choosing a different kind of guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit about him and, and the he's, baby on the way. He's wonderful. And it's, it's, um, I love talking about him because there's just so much love and there's so much respect. And I had this kind of like aha moment uh, like a month or so ago when I was saying like, he just respects me so much. And mm. I was like, wait a minute. It's because I, I, I deserve the respect. Yeah. And it's yeah. Like I'm actually asking for that and, and I'm receiving it now. And, and so maybe that it's feels... that you respect yeah. yourself too. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right? So, um, and he's just, he's wonderful and he's just a good old Scottish boy. Mm. Yeah. I love that he slid into your DMs from <laughs> that's another how you, country. Wait, that's how y'all met? He did. He DM'd me. Oh. He, he said he respectfully reached out to me because he doesn't like the whole, like, I slid into the DMs. Well, yeah. well you did. Slid, but... for some reason, yeah. slid something. We need he's, to change the term. And he's yeah. very, like, old school. So he oh. just is like, I respectfully reached out to you. So oh. I was like, okay. And now y'all are about to have a baby. Oh, yes. yes. Is it time? Any moment. <laughs> Any moment right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I was like, that's a contraction. Yep. Oh, and wow. It, yeah. And, well, my, my, baby, my baby came at my baby shower, so it could happen. It How could. many weeks were you? 36 and a half. Oh, yeah. How many weeks Where are, are you? you? Well, I'm like almost 35. So okay. okay. So okay. it could happen. Go. Could happen here. We yeah. just are so thrilled that yeah. you found joy um, you. and that you worked for it. Yeah. Thank you you yeah. deserve it. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. You can check out her memoir, The Next Chapter, at today.com slash books. Yeah. Thank you, Jana. We'll provide a lot of inspiration. Thank, Thank you, Jana. So Coming up next, y'all, beauty, best for less. Bobby's back with exclusive discounts you can only find here right after this. So good. I like that. We are back with today's style editor, Bobby Thomas. We got another edition of Bobby's Bests for Less. Yeah, okay. If you want to score some exclusive discounts, y'all know what to do. Mm -hmm. Just scan that QR code by yeah. Bobby. Bobby has the best deals. Okay, what are we going to start with? I am so excited because fresh. I yeah. put this soy pH balanced uh, cleanser on my list before we started this series. It's as a 50, dream, basically as a dream. Yeah, I was like, this is my favorite. I go to this all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a pH balanced mm -hmm. face wash. And let me tell you, I'm a big advocate of double cleansing. This is my second step. Especially if you wear makeup wait, like this. What do you this. mean double cleansing? Well, I use the balm first to melt the makeup yeah. and then this gets everything off. But if okay. you don't use a lot of makeup like we do, this is your all in one. It softens. It's Amazing. Mm. I've loved it. One is sold every minute globally. What? Smells. So don't even listen to me because nice honestly, to that. I am yes. going to probably buy the rest of the stuff yes. at 50% off because that is how and they much never, I use and it. And by wow. the way, this pump, by the way, at your sink in the morning is so easy to just, yes. at yes. night you'll wash your yes. face. This is a beloved brand. It. So I bet 50% is fresh a is big awesome. deal. It's huge. Okay. The next big thing, everybody asks me what lip shade of I'm course. wearing. And I do love Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk, yeah. like everyone else. Yes. But my secret is 
Fenty's Gloss Balm. So I love the shade Fussy, which okay. I think would look good on you. Thank you. But the Gloss Balm collection mm -hmm. is gloss that's not sticky, and it makes your lips just look like moisturized and plump. It diminishes if you have fine lines. It is not sticky. It's, oh, hold on, wait, look at the camera. Oh yeah, that's pretty on but you. Now don't look, you like that? If, I don't know, I can't see it. But if you look <laughs> close, you might think it's like a glittery, shimmery yeah. something. It's, it's not, not as glittery as you think. It's micro. This but is good. I also like this I color. Know. Let's nice. see. That kind of looks like you too. Mm. I like it. Okay, so it feels mm -hmm. like butter. Oh, that looks good. No, it that feels looks like good. butter. They have one that plumps and cream, but don't even listen to us again. Get 25 it. percent. Twenty-five percent. Fenty time. doesn't do a discount. Okay, okay but they Natural do it for Bobby. Pasica, what? Natural Pasica. Glenn Close's <coughs> sister launched this. Wow. Forever ago, I went to her spot in the Hamptons. I fell in love with what the chill. This? chocolate vine mask. What is this? So one? it's got niamidicide and chocolate vine in it. Smell, it's divine. It's It'll actually chocolate. help to mm. soothe, soften, and plump. And the eye balm, that's the chill, it's for puffiness and under eye circles. Oh, that's that's that target. Put it on at night, in and the morning? you put it on after you wash your face or if you have mm -hmm. a breakout. This mm -hmm. is like a universal go-to made in the USA. I'm obsessed. Everybody should love natural mm. Africa. It's okay. such a good brand. That's the eye cream. It. it feels good. Last, and do we get a discount here? Last. Yes. The discount is 50% off. 50% wow. off. I'm so excited kidding? about the stuff that the yeah. fact that it's on sale, it's ridiculous. Oh, I like these okay. minimizers. I, want these. I like Brie. these minimizers. Everyone likes okay, a minimizer. Well, it's not even just a minimizer. Brie McKinnon, she left her VC job to make a better bra. These have a, what's called, she calls it an EB core. It's like a sling. So there's no underwire. Sling. A sling. Okay, girls sling like goes me, babies up. Girls like me need this. Yeah, okay. So, so it's sling. got this sling so that even though there's no underwire, it lifts. Does it really and hold? And separates and it's holds. kind of like an athletic lifts bra, but separates. better. Can I just tell you, they have them in all the colors, all the different styles. And of course, I was partial to it called, being called Evelyn and Bobby. So uh -huh. yes, I'd like to design my own special one. But and they come like small, medium, large, which is I do, and I have to yeah. tell you, one of my favorite things I noticed about it was that they were giving me stats about most uh -huh. women who are 36F have to support 20 or more pounds. That's exhausting. That's a lot of... Less than, than, it's um, heavy. First of all, we, we want yes. to say something to you. We yes. sure do. Happy oh. birthday, Bobby! We love you! Happy love birthday, you. Bobby! Yesterday was your day. What? Did you feel loved and celebrated? I do, and now I'm embarrassed. I thought we got away with this. I was like, no, no we didn't. Oh, we, didn't. we love you. And we Happy got you a ball. You. <laughs> Happy birthday. My favorite. Thank we you, Bobby. You. We love I you love you so both so much. much. We love you. And you all can check out at Bobby's Best at today.com slash shop. And we should mention that today may collect a commission on any of these products purchased through our links. And we'll be back right I after know. this okay, birthday, here. girl. Yeah, have uh -huh. a little. Oh, oh. Williams is going to swing by That'll and say be hi. Fun, plus a performance by singer songwriter Zia Victoria. She was here when she was a little baby, and now she's a star. Look at that. Also, Jenna's latest book club author, Safia Sinclair. Oh, will be I can't here. wait, y'all. If y'all haven't read it, read it overnight. It's homework. It's oh, homework, baby. You mean tonight? Right you now. Read it. Like, go to the bookstore and let's read. Bye. 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 Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names. Only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. Boys are 
back in town. It's a miracle. It is a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on Today. when it's cold outside, mm -hmm. there's not much better, nothing better than a hot and hearty bowl of chili. Mm. And this recipe is just what you might need for a busy weeknight. Dina Delisa Gonser is an award-winning home cook. She's the personality behind dishitgirl.com, which is <laughs> such a cool, clever name. Oh, thank you. How Hi, are you? Hello. This seems like the per perfect recipe, especially for today. It is like, it's like it freezing is, it cold out. It is crazy. Out. You got that chill on your bones. You want to get it out. So let's do some I love chili this. for okay. sure. But okay. let's do it a little bit different. Okay. Now we're used to those tomato base. We're going to go for um, a white chili oh, with yum. a little bit of coconut milk in there. Oh, like coconut You're going to start milk. up with your onions mm -hmm. and your garlic. We're going to chop, chop it up it. a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then and you put it, you yeah, put it in the pan? Yeah, we're going to put that in the pan with a little bit of coconut oil. Coconut oil. Coconut yes. oil. Yes. Coconut I just oil. want to tell you I'm a big fan of coconut oh, oil. She likes all oh, forms. There put you go. Well, this is, this is for you. What's and that? I like garlic? to saute the onion and the garlic just to um, give yeah, it a little bit. Um, I give it like two minutes, two, three minutes. You just want to make sure that it's not that raw. Yeah. Onion flavor yeah. getting Look into Look how cute your... and teeny your spatula is. Oh, is it? My guys are what, 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 what is happening? <laughs> is like, this a dog no, like spatula? Bar it's like Barbie. Barbie came to visit. Is this the American girl? Okay. okay. All, oh, right. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Yeah. So we have that. So you're gonna yeah you're gonna salt it. You can also throw in some of your spices. We have some oregano. <laughs> you want me to help you? Over here. Yeah, that'd be great. Let me use my spatula. <laughs> yeah, and this just kind you know what? Wait, you put it in there? Oh, you can put sorry. it straight in. That is no problem. Where is it supposed to go? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, go for it. Or you can also saute that along. Inside the oh, onion okay. and garlic for Sorry. a little bit just we to open know. up those spices. Okay. Should I dump this no in? No problem. Is so this all going here? It's all, you're just going to dump it dump, and dump, go. My dump. We've got some chicken broth in there. We've got some kernels I'll of take corn. Care of this. And I'm using green chilies. chili. Yes, green chili. I like a little spice. How about you? Okay. Yeah, we like it. But is yeah. this kid friendly or not really? It How is kid <laughs> friendly. It is what not super hot. Those are chickpeas. I love chickpeas. But you know what you could do? Don't Jenna, judge me. Is you could just take the chicken that's in here that's kind of falling apart yeah. and put it into, um, you can just make a quesadilla oh, with ooh, it. Oh, great so idea. That's, yes, that's right, what we do. So come on down. What's the, you, so this so is. So look, your, we're going to shred our chicken. This is how you do it. Yes, you shred a chicken in a blender. Just gonna click it on, and it's gonna Does do it that work? hard work oh. for you. Yeah, look. No, is that just like a rotisserie chicken you buy at the grocery you know store? What? You could take yeah, rotisserie chicken, yeah. and yes, you could use that as well. Okay. And again, like I said, oh. just wow, look what happened there. Yeah, I've look. never seen that before. Me either. Well, look at that okay. new trick for the new year. So, so here we go. We're just yeah. Going what's to eat. in there? The corn so and all that. So this is um, this is what we um, mm -hmm. raised down. We have the okay. corn. We have the chickpeas. So do you end up putting chicken. this chicken in? Here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That gets really soft. You put it and take it out. You shred it up. And then you, you put, put it, back it all again. together in here with oh. a little bit of coconut milk. Coconut. Another Look couple of minutes. Look at that, that coconut is. milk. It's yeah. foamy. It is there. beautiful. I just taste right? it. I know how it is. What are you go doing? Oh, it's good. You she gotta love the food you're working with. Oh, gotta love the food you're okay. with. And you're gonna let that cook down till it thickens a little bit. Now, what have you done here? Then, you put it in a baked potato? Yes, yes. we put it in Dinner. a baked potato. Because you just need it to be a little bit hardier. Why okay. not? This is the kind of recipe that's great even for the next two or three days. Okay. So and you top it with avocado. Yes, mm -hmm. we're gonna go and we're gonna give it a nice little squeeze of lime here. Mm -hmm. A little bit of mm. jalapeno, mm. depending upon how hot you like mm. it. Cheese. I mean, if whatever you want to dream up to top it with, you top it with. You go for it's it. It's spicy and delicious, mm. but not too spicy. 
That's right. why I love That's it. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know. want, you can mm. even do a little bit of mm. chipotle sauce if you want to kick up the heat. I mean, I, I, the spicier, the better for me. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is delicious and mm. hearty and yummy. Thank you for this. It's mm -hmm. really good. Awesome. And you can get this recipe at today.com slash food. All right, this morning in today's food, a hearty meal that's packed with nutrients. Health journalist and author Max Lugavere is here to show us a recipe from his new cookbook. It's called Genius Kitchen, over 100 easy and delicious recipes to make your brain sharp, body strong, and taste buds happy. That seems like yes. a great combination. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot to promise, but the cookbook <laughs> delivers. It's, it's the only cookbook, I think, that can simultaneously shrink your belly and grow the brain. Oh, wow. I like I'm it. super excited so about. So brain foods in particular, what in this recipe would make our brain smarter? Oh my God, every aspect of this recipe is calibrated to support brain health and mental health in accordance with the latest available evidence. And it's delicious as well. Awesome. Even better, right. so how right. yeah. yeah, so this is a, a mole chili. A lot of the recipes in my book are internationally influenced and inspired. Mm -hmm. And so we've got our ancho and guajillo chilies right here, which add a little bit of spice. Mm -hmm. People that eat spicy food every day have reduced risk of early mortality by about 14%. Oh, so it's, wow. if you like spicy food, that's a, that's a nice perk, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to combine the mushrooms with the chilies. Mm -hmm. But these are dried. These are dried mushrooms. Uh -huh. mushrooms Why do you are like great. using dried? We like using dried because they have uh, more of an umami Water's flavor. Ready. The water's ready, it's boiling. <laughs> that's perfect. So we want to put, do you want to do the honors? Sure. So you want to put about a, a cup okay. of boiling water in there. And typically when you're preparing this recipe at home, you want to let it sit for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Dried mushrooms as compared to fresh mushrooms, they have more of that uh, umami flavor, which mm -hmm. mushrooms are known for. And the darker the mushroom, the more umami flavor. So right. it doesn't matter which mushroom, so long okay. as you're using shrooms. <laughs> so you let that sit for 10 minutes and then you put it in a blender to puree the concoction. Now what you want to do is you want to chop up an onion. Uh, we don't want any bloodshed on the set, so I'm not going to do this <laughs> live. But um, but we have our chopped onions here, and then we've got delicious garlic, and we've got yeah. cilantro stems. Oh. We don't waste any of the cilantro. Uh -huh. So we're using the stems, which actually have a more potent cilantro flavor than the leaves. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. The leaves are great for a garnish. They sure. look really beautiful as mm -hmm. well. So we've got our chopped onion. We've got our cilantro stems. We've got the garlic. Garlic is, by the way, a wonderful prebiotic fiber, really good for gut health. Okay. Oh. And so is that why you're using a lot of garlic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also keeps the vampires away. Yes. All right. I was thinking that. So here we have a crock pot. It's a very thick pot, really good for evenly distributing mm -hmm. the heat. And we've got our sliced brisket. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a big fan of grass-fed, grass-finished beef, but mm -hmm. any beef will do. It's a very nutrient-dense food. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so what we want to do? It's fatty. That's okay. That's still good for our grass-finished beef fat is actually quite healthful. Yeah, it's a okay. it's a it's a decent source of omega-3 fatty acids, mm -hmm. a good source of vitamin E and pristine protein. Okay. So you want to put the beef in the pot like so. Is that olive oil or? I use avocado oil, oh, okay. which is very heart healthy and uh, chemically stable for high heat cooking. Mm -hmm. So we okay. want to use avocado oil. What, no, why avocado oil? Well, it doesn't impart a flavor like extra virgin olive oil does. So it's from a flavor standpoint, it's neutral, mm -hmm. but it's very heart healthy. It's rich in monounsaturated fat. And the point of this step is we want to get a nice char on the outside of the brisket. We want, to, we want it to develop a, cr uh, a crust mm -hmm. on the uh, surface of the brisket, which lends a really delicious mouthfeel. So yeah, you're doing a good job. So you want to cook this for a little bit, maybe about 10 minutes to get that nice sear going. Right. Okay. You also want to throw the onions in the pot as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get your hands dirty. <laughs> Love that, Al. Ooh. Amazing. Yeah, so you want to cook this. How about the garlic? And yeah, throw the garlic, the stems, all that good stuff. Look at that, you can smell it. The garlic oh, is becoming fragrant. Mix it? Okay. Yeah, okay. mix it up. Again, the crust on the beef is is key. So you want to brown that up. You want to brown that up. Everything else. Yeah, yeah, you want to brown that up because okay. it, it lends a really nice mouthfeel. You don't want uh, uh, you don't want like a uniform consistency with mm -hmm. brisket. Okay. Right. And um, you can also use you can use whole brisket. We decided to chop it up, but a whole brisket would be easier to um, to shred. What are these? Some of the spices you put in. Cayenne. So here we've got a little bit of cumin. Mm -hmm. We've got oregano and we've got ah. chili powder. Oh. So you want to add these in. My Again, oregano doesn't look like that. Yeah, they come in different in different forms, but typically, um, yeah, we, we yeah, see some flowers on there. Mm -hmm. But again, spicy food is really great for your health okay. if you can if you can stand okay. it. Not you'll that, this, not that this, this dish is too spicy. Right, you'll saute this, then what goes in? You saute that in. Yeah, it's already starting to get. I mean, just smell. Yeah, it, it smells, smells delicious. So good. I hope we only have early. about a minute, no. so I want to right. make sure we get on right. So great. then we want to throw in the diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got a bit of a tomato puree. Throw that into the mix. And okay. is that chicken broth? We're compressing time here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then this is bone broth. Bone broth. So bone broth oh. is rich in collagen. Does it right. taste the same as regular broth? It uh, it tastes similarly. It's not soup.
But okay. what makes it the mole? So the mole, we add dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. oh. Again, the, oh wow. The, yeah. So we. So this is the finished. Um, it's almost finished. We want to okay. add the dark chocolate to it. That's okay. how you make a mole. Did, dark chocolate is really good for the go. heart. You stir it around. Mm -hmm. Did I miss that? Where did the chilies and the mushrooms go? We the puree it. So we put we put the puree. You're meant to once you puree it, you put it into the uh, oh okay into the dish. So yeah. So okay. Well, thank you so this much. was amazing. We really We're going to eat this it. in so the break. Let me taste the bite. Right. I know. And be sure to check out his cookbook and mm. for this recipe, which is oh, fantastic. Wow. Oh man. Wow. Today dot com slash oh, my goodness. food. excited this morning because we have a super special guest here for today food Brian Baumgartner starred as Kevin on the hit NBC show The Office and office fans will definitely remember this <laughs> iconic scene at least once a year I like to bring in some of my Kevin's famous chili the trick is to undercook the onions everybody is going to get to know each other in the pot I'm serious about this stuff I'm up the night before, pressing garlic and dicing whole tomatoes. I toast my own ancho chilies. It's a recipe passed down from Malone's for generations. Oh, no, I just like feel for you with that. Well, guess what? Yes. Brian became serious about chili off screen. That is mom. so funny. So now he's compiled, listen to this, some of his favorite recipes in the Seriously good chili cookbook. How many recipes did you say? 177. 177. I opened it up and I'm like, okay, this if you like chili, this is your man. This is it. Is it true sure. before that scene you weren't a chili guy? I no, I no, I'd never made chili at all. <laughs> I and I made it one time, it was like football season. I posted it online. People went nuts. nuts. Yeah. They went crazy. And I thought, okay, and I started getting into it. It, it, oh, thank you, Al. Yeah. I'm putting you to work you already. Know, sure. Very nicely bit. done. The thing that's funny about that scene is it wasn't even like the whole episode. It was the 30 seconds at the beginning of the show. And you stole I, the show. I, <laughs> well, it always makes me laugh when when I say to people, I meet them, like, what's your favorite episode of The Office? Yeah. And they say the, the chili one. I'm the like, chili well, episode. Very good. It was about 90 seconds. So how do we get started? We want to make Ke Kevin's signature so chili. This okay. This is, this is my recipe okay. that I have, uh, I don't know if it's as famous as yeah, Malone's. Come on this side. All right, you're going to go there. Yep. Okay. And and now it's about it's about chopping. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna chop very carefully, and then we're not gonna Good. chop that carefully <laughs> yeah, anymore. We're, we're gonna chop. Nice and, chunk. And we've got some uh, some vegetable oil in here. We're gonna mm -hmm. add it all in okay. to Garlic, uh, to all the in. pot. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna put it all in there. And here is here is where uh, Kevin and I are, are similar. The the trick truly is. Uh, n to to undercook the onions. Okay. okay. You Undercooked don't want to caramelize them. The oh. too. Yeah, yeah. They, they, and you want the onions to be translucent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got some uh, some garlic. We've got some onions, and we've got uh, some green peppers in there. So then okay. you cook it down. Okay. And then so fast forward. So yes, good. we're we're still here. Al, you helped it to not get fully caramelized here. Um, once once that's cooked down, mm -hmm. then we're gonna add in. Uh, you can you use, like turkey? You, I do. I like the ground turkey. You uh -huh. can obviously also use 
uh, ground beef. Sure. Okay. And uh, we're going to saute that in there with uh, the peppers and the onions and the garlic. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another trick. Okay. Okay. You add the tomato paste once the turkey is like half brown. So it's not okay. brown brown. Not brown brown. A little pale. That's so it right. Absorbs okay. some of the it does. tomato flavor. Yes, and it it to me it sort of combines all the flavors mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Now this is not lightly brown, no. but we're gonna pretend <laughs> it is, and it's gonna be delicious. It's television. Yes. It is television, <laughs> Al. Yes. Um, and so we're gonna combine that all together. Mm -hmm. Now once that's browned. Sorry, I sneezed. That's okay. Wow. That's okay. It's I live television. Anything sneeze. can happen. It's fine. Sneeze. America, the crew. relax. Don't try this it one. We're fine. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, all right. Once that's brown, right. then what we're going to do, we're going to have some diced tomatoes. Uh -huh. We're going to put those in. Just canned diced tomatoes? Di so canned good. diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, some tomato sauce. Right. Okay. Right. And then what are the sauce? spices? And then we've got some... We've got some oregano, and if okay. you want to, you're going to add it with flair. You can do that. Oh, we've whoa. got some chili powder, <laughs> and and we've got some oh, ancho chilies it's and the jumping, a little it's, salt. That's the uh, antithesis of the salt bay. How messy is your kitchen? That's, with that's <laughs> my question. I don't He's spill the chili, it. but <laughs> spices are totally allowed. And, and then so when chilies. do you add? And then when do you add the beans? And then so the beans, mm -hmm. uh, beans with chili sauce. Right. Don't don't drain oh, it. Oh, you like? Okay. Yes, but you add that. When we're about 20 minutes Thanks. away from serving, okay, because you don't yeah. want you don't want to get the beans you don't want to get the beans mushy. Over, wow. oh, right. Listen, so this beans are soft to begin. A with. fan. Mm. This this can be cooked all day. Yeah, oh you can God. reduce it all the way down and then just add the beans uh, mm. when you're ready to serve. This is oh, a great this is cut. perfect. Is it? No, yeah, really good. I was just telling you before, my husband doesn't like cumin. He loves this. Have cumin in it. This is the perfect chili I can make at home. It Ryan, is perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you guys, from one Ryan to another. Yeah. You've thank created you. magic, Brian. Oh, this is thank you so, so good. Oh, if you want you. this recipe, and we can all do this one. This is an easy recipe. You can go to today.com slash food. By the way, watch Brian at all nine seasons of The Office. Relive your favorite moments. The streaming on Peacock from our parent company, NBC Universal. Mm. Ooh, the answer's calling. You need them most. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. Al Roker. Today, food joined by one of our favorite chefs, Ooh. our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the kitchen with 100 plus battle tested oh. recipes. Oh. 
<laughs> and this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all-time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? <laughs> well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beef Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it, it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, so come on over. So um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic, so we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> no, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. I'm just going to Google it. I'll have it by the end of the oh, segment. Wow. All right. So the go ahead. When right you put out the meat in? Sure did. Nothing remains nameless, Where'd you Bobby. Meet? It's How'd 2021. You How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat like. So we're going to <laughs> very we're going to Carson uh, founder. Carson founder on the gonna, internet. We're not I will not say, say it out loud. Name, but he promised. Very, but very impressive. No, he didn't. He did. No he did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no. Veg you really are dating have, up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right. So anyway, this guy went off the rails. Mix, what what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace so the meat? So thank you so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we <laughs> okay. have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushrooms Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well, and we're gonna let this cook for a little while. And then basically, what happens is you have the base of the chili, and it mm -hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these like really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the key, oh, right? Nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm. We want that nice cooling effect. And then I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm -hmm. and some chilies. I'm going to put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm. you got to make sure you have that crunch right. going. Hey, Bobby, and does, it, does the Mexican chili take cheese. less time because it's meat-based, I mean vegetable-based, than, yeah. than a meat-based one would? It does, Al, because you know if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms, then the eggplant, mm -hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well, and uh, and then you know you, you just you, st you start to garnish it. A little bit of lime zest on top. So you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things, and it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm -hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because mm -hmm. right. you know I am I am a meat eater, and um, but I have to say like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job Ooh. of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant based, is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in reverse. Mm -hmm. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried that oh, first wow. bite? I was just <laughs> curious. She's trying to help you here. Uh, trying no, to what, help a brother out. So what, what did she say? Who? Um... You know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're done. right. Well, is yeah. she there right now? You told me to give it to her. On in. <laughs> no, she's not <laughs> here. <laughs> but but yeah, thanks so much for having me. You're the best. Bobby, we love you so much. This is so fun, fun to tease you. you. Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Oh, you know, there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh. Um, there's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, yeah. um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's there's really classic home style dishes, mm. cool. and then there's a couple of things in there that are a little bit fancier. But it's a you know, if if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. 
Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, we've, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, and you've only uh, lost so twice. They're not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one. Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volume. It's a terrific right. book. Thank you, Bobby. It's a great show. It's a great book. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys are the best. Can't Thank wait to Bobby see you. Bobby Flay is out next Tuesday. Find out more of the chili recipe with no meat in it. Go to today.com slash boring I think you've learned a valuable lesson, Bobby. There's a new meat Bobby Flay. We're like 13 years old. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has two hearty slow cooker recipes that you can set it and forget it. Hey guys, it's no secret that I am in love with my slow cooker. And if you're like me, you are really gonna enjoy these recipes. The first one is eggplant parmesan. So I'm starting with two large eggplants. I'm just gonna trim and then I'm gonna slice them into about half inch rounds. I have paper towels lining a baking sheet here. We're going to salt the tops to help draw out some of the bitter water. And this is also gonna help our eggplant slices to keep their form within the slow cooker. So these need to sit 30 to 60 minutes. And while we're waiting, we're gonna head over to the stove to make our garlicky walnut breadcrumbs. So first I'm adding one cup of whole grain panko breadcrumbs, one cup of crushed walnuts. And I saute this for about 10 minutes on a medium flame. And I'm gonna add in some garlic, some dried basil, and some black pepper. I'm gonna take this off the heat, and we're gonna mix in some parm. I'm gonna take you back to our eggplant now. I'm gonna press down with paper towels onto my eggplants, which have been sitting because I'm sopping up a lot of the excess water. I'm gonna season up our slices with some garlic, oregano, and a little bit of black pepper. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of tomato sauce to line the bottom. And now the fun part starts. You line the bottom of your slow cooker, then for your garlicky walnut breadcrumbs, more sauce, I've got part skim mozzarella cheese, calcium protein, and of course, cheesy goodness. And you're gonna repeat the same exact thing with two more layers. So you have three luscious layers in total. And now for the easiest part. Put on the lid and cook it on high for about three hours and 30 minutes. Guys, this is so good. And now we're gonna mix things up I'm gonna take you over to my island and we're going to make a salsa verde chicken chili. And I'm starting with butternut squash. And butternut is packed with potassium. It's got beta carotene, great for your immune system and so many other nutrients. Some onion, of course, a green bell pepper, finely diced. And this is a jalapeno. So this chili is customizable to whatever spice you want. And now I'm adding salsa verde. And this is reduced sodium chicken broth. I'm gonna mix this around and I'm adding in loads of spices. And I'm gonna mix this around again, all the flavors, get them nice and well combined. And you're gonna add in two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I'm submerging the chicken into the liquid 
put the cover on and let it cook on high for about four hours. 30 minutes before it's done cooking, carefully take out all of the chicken breasts, then add in two cans of rinsed and drained beans. Stir the beans, put the top on, let everything simmer, and while that's simmering, you're gonna shred your chicken. Then put the chicken back into the slow cooker, stir everything together so the chicken can sop up all of that scrumptious liquid. Oh my goodness, guys, this is so so yummy. The flavors all complement each other. Mm, this will definitely warm your soul this weekend. That Yum. is good. All right. Uh, for these recipes and so much more, go to today.com slash food. Jocelyn Delk Adams, she's back with us. She's the author of Everyday Grand. Jocelyn, welcome back. Good morning. I know. Hey now. It's been so long, guys. Oh, it's it's good been to see so you. long. Thank you. What are we making? Meal you're making? Lemony chicken mm, rice casserole. With chicken thighs. Oh, yes. With chicken thighs, because you know it makes a difference. Yes, it does. It does. Right? Makes them nice and juicy. So we're going to start by dredging our chicken thighs. We've got some flour here. I'm going to add in some Parmesan. Oh. Mm, yeah. I've got wow. onion and garlic powder. You're like, oh. And then, of course, some lemon. Zest. You know okay. how to, you know how to zest it. Okay, let me see. Let me see this. Let me see these skills. Hey, this is right a woodworker here. right here. Yeah. 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 How much do you, how much do you want? All right, just, oh, you like, how much do you want? You're like, I'll be over here all day, right? Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, I'll give you more. I'll give you more. All right, all right, all right. All right, I'm putting you to work here. We're going to whisk that up and then we're going to dredge these, okay? We're just going to add this right in. And why is it so important to dredge? Well, we want to get that nice coating. It's going to give us like that nice, crisp coating. We want to get it in that flour. Does it help thicken up the Sauce well, it's also going to thicken up the sauce too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And could then we're going to add almond flour if you want. Of course, okay. you could. Oh, come on, you know, <laughs> you know. And we're going to put this right into our oil. You can definitely play around. You can even mm -hmm. use, you know, any type of gluten-free flour okay. if and that's like. You like, like the starch skin side? Down? Yeah, I do too. I do. I like to, crisp to get it that up nice crisp. crisp. It up. Yeah, we're going to get that crispy, and then we're going to work on our casserole dish. Do you have we to cook some... it through in the pan? Well, you don't because okay. we're also going to throw it in the oven too. So we just want to get it browned, and then we can get it in the oven. So we've got some. Cream of chicken, you want to whisk okay, this sure. up for me? Okay. And then I've got cream some chicken soup. There you go. Yeah. Because you know, nothing's more comforting than yeah. some yeah. Cream I chicken yeah. soup, yeah. right? So. Got and some chicken add back some there. Yep. And then I've got our rice that was oh. going to go right okay. in here. And then awesome. I've got some garlic, too. I'm going to pop that okay. in. Well. Yeah, because we love garlic. And then down here, of course, you can see that our our um, our chicken thighs are mm, ready. Right. And then this oh is when gosh. we're just going to add this right into our dish. Oh, sure. Goes right in. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You already this tasted is, it, oh, didn't Craig you? started it. This you is already worth making. did it. I know you did. This is That's, worth oh making tonight. Yeah, look, you're going to do it, aren't you? Oh, my goodness. Chicken I'm goes so in. So you just put it in there. Yep. So it's just a one dish. Pop this oh, in. That is. Pop this in. And then in. how long are you going to put that in the oven for? We're going to put this in the oven for about 40 to 50 minutes. And then oh my, usually oh we gosh. cover it mm -hmm. with foil because we want to make sure all that rice gets really tender. Oh, oh, Y'all over there are killing my dish, right? Wow. Y'all know how oh, I wow. do. Oh, all right. Wow. And then the lemon goes on top because oh it's so beautiful. So you cook it with the lemon there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. to get oh, a little bit more of that How long do you bake it? She told you you about your eating. Eating shorty Come on, section. Whoa, 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 what's I'm going gonna... on? What's going on? I can't remember. Oh my God. So yeah, this goes in. You put the foil over the top. Mm -hmm. Bake it for about 40 to 50. Then take it off if you want to brown it oh a little gosh. more for about 10 minutes, and then you're ready to serve. Oh, oh you got an air fryer salmon. I sure do. Four Wait, this ingredients. Is an air fryer? Yes, four ingredients. Because no. we were talking about the air fryer, how it's like the perfect okay. appliance. Okay. If you want to add <laughs> another appliance. Yeah. I've never made salmon you know, in the air fryer. So easy. How easy is it? So easy. What are they doing? Like, so and it's done really quickly, oh, too. Four ingredients. Okay, what are they? That's it. 
So I've got some oh soy God. sauce mm -hmm. in there. I got some honey. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Let me see. What else do I have in there? I can't that's even remember. Sesame seeds. Yeah. Oh, that's a garnish. Mm -hmm. And then you just drop it in the air fryer mm. for about like 10 minutes. But sometimes mm. it depends on your air fryer. Sometimes it cooks really quickly. Mm. But I love the air fryer because it gets that nice crisp skin mm. at the top. Oh this my is God. delicious. Come on. Great. Oh, that's well done. All uh, right. I can make salmon skin bacon. Oh, oh. Well, oh, I like that. What do you do? You just. Just put it on. Just take some of the skin off the. In fact, I go to the I go to my fishmonger and yeah. you know he gives me extra. He goes, a lot of people don't, don't so like to go to his fishmonger. I love this right? It's so good. He goes to his fishmonger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I am two that for two on this. You guys love him. As one, as one. Uh, so I like good. a fishmonger. It's been a little while, but it's time once again for cooking with Cal. And this time we are making my mom's famous casserole. Like. Super famous within our family. Okay. It's a, a super easy weeknight dinner, and my boys literally eat bowls and bowls of this. Take a look. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Casserole. Casserole. So there are so many different types of casseroles, but this is what my mom made when I was growing up, and she just called it a casserole. Whatever mac and cheese you like to use, we're going to use gluten-free, right? We're going to use some veggies, some ground beef, and we're going to throw it all into a pot, and that's your casserole. Okay. Okay. So, I'm going to cook the pasta. So, I use the zucchini and the carrots because I hide them in the casserole and you guys don't even know they're there. Because, but we like them. You do. Well, you finished that one already? Yep. Are you a speed peeler? No. You're just really good at it? Yeah. Yeah? That's like record time. What should I do next? The zucchini or the onions? Zucchini. Uh, but what do I do? Well, uh, I'm just standing here. That's true. You are just standing here. Want me to give you something to do? Yeah. Let's see. I could do the zucchini. This knife is really very sharp. So, I'm going to give you these strips. Cut them in like to little pieces. So hard to open and shut. Perfect. Okay. Hey, listen. Glug, glug, glug. Go, 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 go. So much glugs. So many glugs. That's how I measure things in gloves. Okay, and that starts sizzling a little bit. We're gonna add the meat. Can I mix it? Sure. So while this continues to brown up, let's yeah. finish up the mac and cheese. So after 50 minutes, it should all the flavors should come together. It'll be a little crispy on the top, and we'll be good to go. Oh, it's so hot. Mmm. Mmm. Love it. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash fit. This is delicious. Good. Thank Yummy. you. It's just like a good yeah. family style meal. Now, if you want to go super crazy, okay, okay and make this even more retro, if you take slices of American cheese mm -hmm. oh, yeah, and put it on top, 1984 throw it in call. the microwave for a second before yeah. you eat it, it is so oh, delicious. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. So, My kids that. would love this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank well, you, thanks, Cal. guys. We'll be right back. There, there you go. go. It's like comfort Enjoy. food. <laughs>
This morning on Today Food, we are bringing you a dish straight from the south of France. It is called Provençal Vegetable Casserole. Brings back some childhood memories for our guest chef. Chef Daniel Bell. Hello. He owns several award-winning restaurants around the world, and he's joined us this morning to show us how to make this beautiful dish. Chef, it's always a pleasure to have you. So let's let's start with this special place that it has in, in, in your heart. What's the story there? Thank you. Well, this is the kind of dish I cook every summer in my parents' home in Lyon oh. because all those vegetables come from the garden. Oh. They are in full bloom, and uh, we always make this. And sometimes I cook it in huge pans mm. for at least... 30 people around the table. Wow. And you can also cook it for just so a it's small scalable. gathering. Okay. A scalable, totally. And normally it's called a bayaldi mm -hmm. or a tian of vegetable. So here you have some red paper and some onion. So there's always a base here. Oh, don't be careful. I never oh. used that knife here before. <laughs> so, you know, NBC knife is good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I am slicing the vegetable and you don't have to be too Fancy. I'm, I'm putting paper, I'm putting onion that has been sliced. And this is the base with some garlic, some a little bit of, um, you can put uh, pepper flakes, you can put the jalapeno. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you also, use the red pepper, I assume you can use a little green bit of salt. Or whatever peppers you have. Yes, absolutely. You put a little bit of rosemary and inside. How long will you cook this down? You put a little bit of thyme. <laughs> Ooh, the paper is hot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you let it sweat until it's tender and not color a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay. And okay. <coughs> now do you're you, going to do a little. Do you keep the herbs in And there then you slice me some herbs? vegetable. What about the basil here? Do we not, we not use uh, You can put some basil as well. Yeah, why don't you put some couple of leaves of basil? Sure. So this is the base onion, paper, basil, herbs, mm -hmm. garlic. And then all the vegetables. So normally you could take your time and make this dish very fancy. Mm -hmm. Kind of like I a think ratatouille. They may have a picture to show, like uh, of a of a tian of vegetable where it's layered, uh, color by color, vegetable mm -hmm. by vegetable. Okay. The difference of this with the ratatouille is that this we don't roast the vegetable. We mm -hmm. bake them over the onion that has been sweated like this. So we use an eggplant. Voila. So I am putting olive oil. Mm -hmm. I have eggplant, I have yellow squash, I have tomato, I have zucchini. And whatever you have in your salt, garden. Salt, pepper, Lord. of course, this. And then we can put a little bit more basil leaf inside. Mm -hmm. And actually, I just toss it like this. Okay. That's the quick version. If you have time and you want to play with the family and all that, then you can you just make dump it. That right on top. Voila. You put it all on top like this. And then you bake it in the oven at right 350, oven. 375 it. until it really baked down mm -hmm. and it evaporates and voila. That's all. This is wow. the casserole of Provençal vegetable. And this is the perfect side dish oh to use yeah. up all those vegetables. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is totally vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And you can use it with a, lo a roasted leg of lamb. You can wow. use it with mm. a roast chicken. You can use it with eggs on brunch. And, oh, wow. This is... And it's a quick version. I don't know. You, they told me, Danielle, you will not be able to spend an hour making all these <laughs> vegetables beautifully <laughs> laid down. So what, do you have any quick version? And I said, yes, I'll make one. <laughs> and that's just and toss that's your vegetable. Version. That's your version <laughs> on TV there, by the way. Oh, oh well, that's, that's your version. Beautiful. Yeah, that's the cook one. And there's mm. the other one, which is the, the raw one, before I put it in the oven. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is, like, beautiful. It's, it, in a way, it's very artistic. It's very soulful. Mm -hmm. It's very Provence. And it's very it summer. And how long does it cook for? Because the vegetables have still a, a bite to them and, and a lot of flavor. Um, you could cook that for about an hour, I would say, 45 oh. minutes to an hour. If mm -hmm. you like your vegetable a little firmer, mm -hmm. you cook it for 45, 40, 40 to 45 minutes. But an hour, an hour and a half, and what's delicious yeah. is you don't eat everything. The next day you reheat it, That's and it has a different flavor yeah, in yeah, an yeah. omelet or something. Chef, thank, thank you. you. Merci, thank you so much, Chef. Thank, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Uh, by the way, for this Happy recipe, summer. it's today.com slash food. It is Superfood Friday, and today nutritionist Joy Bauer is turning two family favorites into casseroles. Good morning to you, Joy. Hey, Joy. Hey guys, we are casseroling right into the weekend with two scrumptious recipes. And the first is a veggie packed cheesy pizza casserole. Let's Can I just it. tell you how much I love my job? <laughs> I love my job. Okay, so what we're starting with is a cauliflower crust. Oh. So here I have 
four heaping cups of cauliflower florets that I microwaved. And then you're just going to want to mush them with a fork and take out all of the water. Then putting in some eggs, some mozzarella cheese. Whoops, got a little bit stuck here. A little bit of Parmesan. And because I want to bring all those pizza pie flavors to the table, this is Italian seasoning and a little bit of garlic, salt, and pepper. So this is going to all get stirred up. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because I push it into the bottom of a casserole dish. Mm. And let me show you how it cooks. It's a crust. This is a real crust. And at the same time that this is cooking, we are going to have an antioxidant love fest because I roasted all these vegetables. Again, at the very same time, we're going to layer it. Look at this. And you could do any vegetables that you want. And honestly, you could also open up your fridge and you could throw in whatever you have left over from the night before. This is really good, Joy. And I think with all these veggies, it's like you wouldn't even know. It feels naughty, but it's yummy. No, I feel like I'm getting ripped right now just eating this, Joy. (laughs) Oh, you are. It's an (laughs) antioxidant love fest, I tell you. (laughs) So here I have um, tomato sauce goes over the Mm. top. Whatever marinara sauce is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going to layer on some more ooey gooey mozzarella cheese, or you could blanket it with uh, slices of mozzarella, and then you get those puddles Mm. of cheesy bliss. Mm -hmm. And a little bit more Italian seasoning, and then I like to fake out pepperoni slices. So look what I've done here. I just sliced some tomatoes. You put them right in the oven, and it just just until the cheese melts. So I would say that this is probably about mm, 15 minutes. I'm going to show you what this looks like. And, Joy, I want to also get to the taco. We're already picking out on our casserole. Uh, Tell us about – oh, there (laughs) it is. really good. We're going to eat that while you tell us about the taco. Okay, so this is a Tex-Mex dream. I'm going to grab over here on the skillet. I have some sautéed – Lean ground turkey meat. I'm okay. going to bring over all my fixings. And all you're going to do after the turkey meat is cooked, I put in a rinsed can of black beans, okay. of some corn. I have two cups of jarred salsa. You know what I say? You are the sauce of your, you are the boss of your sauce. Boss so it could be mild <laughs> or spicy. And a taco seasoning packet. Oh my gosh. We can do this. You do stir this up and you're going to then, let me show you how easy this is. You can do this tonight. I I have a casserole. I layered some whole grain tortillas right on the bottom. I'm sampling one. You put your meat on top. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to add some cheese. I'm going to get to the finished one. You add some cheese. You put another layer on top of the tortillas. And then anything you want. I'm going to show you this taco bar. And you can set up a taco bar. Look what I have here. Shredded lettuce. I have um, tomatoes, scallions, jalapenos, guac, sour cream. This is a no-brainer. And everybody, right, you could make your own personalized taco. Really quickly, Joy, how long do you you bake it for? I mean, maybe 10, 15 minutes because all you want to do, the the meat is already cooked. Right. So all you want to do is melt the cheese and you want to slightly get those tortillas a little bit browned. It is sensational. So good. Home run, Joy. Thanks, Joy. Thank you. For these Happy recipes. weekend, everyone. You too. You too. Head to today.com slash food.
us this morning, Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes, also the author of Everyday Grand, which, oh, by the way, is available for pre-order as we speak. Sure is. And <laughs> Jocelyn is here to share her spin on a classic and easy weeknight dish the casserole. And you're going to help me. I am going I am going to help this morning. <laughs> so tortilla chip casserole could not be easier. Tortilla you can get the kids involved. Casserole. You can even do this, okay? Cuz I know you can be <laughs> I know you can be cooking challenge. So we're going to get True. this together. So to start, I'm going to show you how we're going to dice up these like bell peppers, okay. right? You're going to get these strips just kind of get them together really easily and then just go down to create like these small little dices, okay. right? Really easy. Just gather them up. And that's all you Even I do. can do that, Josh. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah. See, you're okay. winning already. So we're going to start on our meat mixture. I've got some ground beef here. Going to add this to some olive oil. You hear that nice sizzle. And I assume you could easily swap that out with turkey or yeah, you even ground turkey, chicken. Even ground chicken. Okay. Yep, whatever you got is fine. And then I'm going to add in our bell pepper here. And then can you add in that diced onion yes, and some garlic yes, for me? So that's it. That's pretty that's simple it. so far. So yeah, you got to start cooking this down. You're gonna brown it. How much garlic is that? Uh, I mean, hey, is I it? love garlic. Okay. All right, add it in. All right, oh, yes, add as much as you want in there. And then this is when we get into the flavors. Like we're gonna add in two salsas. So if you have Taco have Tuesday that. tonight, of course yes. you might have some leftover salsas. Mm -hmm. Add in the red and the green. That's gonna give us ample flavor I like here. Chunky one, Josh. Yeah, yeah. you can grab the chunky one. Yeah, yeah, for that chunky. texture. Yeah. You take so your salsa seriously. Out there. <laughs> I do. You can't play around with salsa, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna add in this salsa, and then we're gonna add in some really taco good. seasoning. So just store bought taco store seasoning. Store bought. Wow. Get it in the little Easy. packet and just toss it all together mm -hmm. with some chicken stock. Chicken stock. What's oh, the word, Al? It's very good. Mm -hmm. it's really good. So really good. yummy, Crunchy. right? Yummy. Oh my gosh! So you're gonna cook this together. This is our swap. So this Hello, turns the magic into of that. TV. Okay. Yep, looks really good. You're gonna let that kind of thicken up into this, and then we're gonna start adding in our additional texture. We've got is that cream of mushroom? It is. Oh, I love that. I know it it's makes it so creamy. For everything. You throw it that. into everything. We throw it into soup? everything at my home. Yeah. Everything. Oh, mushroom mushroom soup. Soup? Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. throw it into everything. Wow. It makes everything so much better. Why do you like it so much? What the, so um. it's so creamy. It adds mm. so much richness along with like the sour cream mm. in this. It mm. really Umami. makes that texture so great. Yeah. And I love anything with mushroom too. We're gonna add in some black beans okay. too. Grab that, add that in, and of course the sour cream I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Throw that in too for that extra richness and that tang. Ooh, and then we're gonna like add in some Mexican cheese. cheese yep, get that in there. Right. And we're gonna stir that together. Okay. Oh, oh, nice. And then this yeah. is when you get the kids involved, or mm -hmm. you can get rid of like your morning aggression. I'm gonna have you like, <laughs> you know, just go for oh, it. And yeah, just, you know, go. Oh, get that get out. The kids. This get the kids. I know. He's like, I'm taking that over. Yeah. Right. You're gonna crunch oh, that so this together. Is cool. This goes in the pan. Goes in. And you then can, you build it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just start building it, and this is where we get into our casserole. It's almost like a lasagna. You're gonna just layer it up. Oh, mm. the oh, bottom that's... layer is Doritos or whatever yeah. your corn chip is. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. you, can you can do the Frito. cheesy ones, mm. Frito. Mm. Fritos, Fritos, yeah, like Frito. whatever your faves hot. are. Oh, yeah. The flaming hot, mm. you know, get oh, some like spice that. in there. Like whatever you love, like you can really adapt this and make this into whatever this is really you like. Good. It's almost yeah. like a layered dip. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. And like you bake it off, and you get all those textures. You get the crunch. Oh, it's so. That How long do you bake it? About 30 minutes. Okay. And then you're gonna add some cheese on top. Don't add the cheese at the beginning and put the foil over it because it'll, it'll stick, stick to, to the foil. foil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. So do it, My take the foil this. off, this and then great. just add the cheese and then let it get off. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it comes it's out. So I'm gonna taste it. Tell oh us about this new cookbook. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, Oh my gosh, it's called Everyday Grand, yeah. and it's all about just mm -hmm. loving and enjoying every single moment of life. So like, great. I wanted to just make a book that just made everyone happy, mm -hmm. right? Finding so much joy and just beyond just holidays, like, you got a good hair yeah. day, celebrate. celebrate. Yeah. Got the book is hey, terrific. Ooh, that's good. Thank you, Al endorsed it. I was so grateful to him. Awesome. I mean, like, hey, you changed the tire, celebrate. That's good. Your four year old's gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. <laughs>
good friend, Chef Ryan Scott uh, from I, Ryan Scott to go. All right. Right. all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take chicken apple sausage. You want me to cut it? Yes. Okay. Look like at, this? Oh, my goodness. She can actually I chop. have been gone for two years, and I come back and <laughs> You've been gone for two years? Well, I mean, it was COVID. I haven't been oh. in the studio. You haven't been in the studio in no, two years? No. Hi. Why does it feel like this we... This is your first time in I know, two years? Because right. you know what? You were on Zoom, and then we just yeah. love you so like much. We know you. All right, so All we right. chop that so up. So chicken apple sausage, you yeah. can do pork sausage. You can even do the vegetarian sausage if yeah. you wanted to. Okay. Mm, I wouldn't really. Yeah. Okay. So this caramelizes and it gets super delicious. Okay. So once that goes in there, get it nice and crunchy because you want those little pieces in there. Crunchy. Then we're going to take some onions and some sage. These are already caramelized. These are Look at that. already cooked. Mm -hmm. And then what we do, Hody, take these out. I like how Hody. it calls me Hody. Hody? Yeah. Take those out for okay. me. Okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, wait. Yeah. yeah. I watched you a couple days ago. Yeah. Light bright in my house. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have the old one from the 80s, and I have the, the new, new one. one. Wait, yes. does the new one hold up? No, I can't stand it. I like oh, the old one. one. You know why? Because it's just, it has Light like two, two extra, like, things. No, yeah, we, we don't, don't want extra. That. I want the car to Simple. start without a button. I just want to turn the yes. keys. Yes. Yes. Like, give me old, old school. school. Thank you. See? Okay. Uh -huh. All right, uh -huh. now All right. what is that? Watch. Apple. Apples, not <gasps> onion rings. Look. So, so you leave the onion juice. Yes. And you put the yes. apples on and top. And you put it in away from you. And look at this. So now we have that sweet and we have that savory okay. that goes all together. Now we're going to go into our pantry. Kind of like a little quick oh, fix. Here. I'll take this away from Okay, me. thank you. A nice little mm. quick fix. So what we're going to do is make the wet batter. And this is pancake batter in your pantry. So easy. Plain so easy. old pancake Everybody batter. Everybody has it. All right, Jenna. Okay. You go over here and take four eggs. Okay, and is this cream? cream. Yep. Oh, good. Because we're cream. super Since watching. you now. haven't seen her in a while, she's no longer lactose intolerant. Oh, my God. Oh, something happened. Here, it's a here, miracle. Here, here. Just drink straight from this. There you go. <laughs> Oh, wait, now, you, do we add the cheese? For 11 years, I know. Making dishes I'm not to... kidding. I don't know what no, happened. No, she's fine now. It's it. weird. <laughs> like, literally, you woke up and you're like, yeah. I can have dairy. By the way, we'll it's... tell you what she did later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so chives and yeah. a little bit of salt comes yeah, down. Yeah, this Just is like... giving me, like, I like that vibe. Okay. Yeah, it's now giving me, what? like, baked potato vibe. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, and what's this? so now we, this is pancake batter. Yeah. A little bit of, so we have sage and onions in there. Here is dried sage. Should I join this? No, no, not yet. Watch, watch. And a little bit of water until this comes together. Could you use milk? Yes. Oh. Um, should you? Should, should you use well, milk? Well, since now you're not lactose, Dump we'll it. go ahead and just go. So yeah. it's what I would do is go like this. So you have your egg batter. You have your apples caramelized. So Jenna, let's do the layers. Come over here. Girl. Okay, okay. Okay. So here's my favorite part. Wow. Okay. So everything is. is mixed. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our sausage and our onions and our sage, dump it on top of the caramelized apples. Oh, oh I love fine. that. Right. Doesn't this look fun? And Looks you kind of spread, spread it. Spread okay, it out. Spread it out. Okay, okay, then the what? The next thing you do, watch this. <gasps> wait, ready, wait, wait, ready, wait. Ready, camera guy? Oh, Ooh. yes. Wait, what are you doing? He was ready. He oh, was ready. Yes, he was ready. Look, Look at him. Ryan turned the bowl right way. So there that becomes go. kind of like a giant pancake. Okay, watch that. Now, do you, do you start cooking that? Oh, watch, Mama. Well, you're just still go. adding? Go. We're going to put the egg eggs on top. Is that what Wait, makes it a Dutch baby? Real? The Dutch baby is more the pancake aspect of it all. And then the eggs you usually would so, be inside it with a little leavening, and then you have to bake it real Okay, so, so what's watch. happening? This guy goes in the oven. Oh, in the oven. Okay. 15 minutes about. 400 degrees. Oh, look at and that. And then you cover it for 400 degrees for about 15 minutes, and then you uncover it, and then it comes oh. out. And then what's cool about Wait, this look is at the, this can go big, in the fridge like the night before. Pie. Get over here. The Get night on before it. this can Get go on in the it. fridge, and, and then you, put, you pop it out. And oh, you put on. a little syrup? Hold on. A oh, little I need a little syrup. And because you're no longer lactose, yeah. this has butter and maple syrup in it. Do it. Oh, girl, here. Do it. Bring it. And you know what else she could do? What else can I do? Because she's no longer. What? You could add a little whipped cream. Or, oh, girl. Good, good you are cheese. crazy. Or tequila. Oh, my God. Right? Well, that, that, that doesn't that's have lactose delicious. in it. That doesn't have lactose. That's a... Oh, my okay. God. Okay. You can tell me. What do you think? Mm. She's waiting for you to Wait, eat. wait, wait. The sausage, mm. the apple, the egg. Hold on. Let me try The maple. Oh, my gosh. Let you did it. It's sweet and savory. Today's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. What are y'all gonna do? Like you're gonna be getting ready because yeah. everyone's a week got from kind of today, pared down Thanksgiving. I think I make a pumpkin pie, mm -hmm. Brussels sprouts. How do you make your sprouts? My sprouts, my sprouts. <laughs> I actually are the best thing that I cook. What? What do you? Apple, 
Oh, you make them sweet with a little Apple. sweetness. I put a little caramelized um, syrup on it. I put some um, balsamic vinegar. What? And I bake them till they're burn crisp. Black. I burn them. Do you too? Wait, wait, wait. Maple syrup. Yeah. Maple What's the other syrup. one? I, okay, sorry. Turkey the bacon. Turkey bacon. Okay. Which you need. Okay. I mean, you could do real bacon. Okay. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. I love this already. And I put it on oil on a big cooking cookie sheet. I put them in the oven and just bake them. So they bake get, them first till they're crunchy, right. like so they potato get, chips. And also, they need to be cooked through. Yeah. Because there's nothing worse than like a hard Crunch, brussel. Yes, not like that. <gasps> when I actually, when I was little, I went to Luby's Cafeteria, my yeah, favorite place to Luby's, go for yeah. dinner, yeah. <laughs> with my mom and my sister. And I was like, a Brussels sprout? I've never had one because they weren't popular in the 80s. They have their heyday now. And I and they were when they broiled the whole Brussels sprout. Broiled it? So oh. my mom was like, well, get some. So with my Luann special, I got some Brussels sprouts, some full ones. And I couldn't swallow them. Oh, we geez. said I had a Brussels sprout popper upper <laughs> because every time one went down, it <laughs> came back up. So that made you want to remember cook them? those broiled Brussels sprouts? I remember. But by the way, your recipe. Then I'll send it to you. Wait, tell me again. Maple syrup. Maple syrup, balsamic <laughs> vinegar, turkey bacon, apples cut real thin. And if you want to put a little bit of scallions in there for fancy. So that'll be your, contr your contribution. That's my to contribution. Your, to your and Henry will make the turkey. Valerie, we're so happy that you're here. I'm happy you, to be here. You, um, when you spoke on the Today Show, you touched so many people. Um, you touched them in their soul. I mean, there was something about what you said. And now we're several weeks out. How do you feel? Like, how are you different today than you were four weeks ago? I, I, I have found that I am actually being kinder to myself. My mm -hmm. brain, my negative brain is not as loud. Mm -hmm. It's really starting to calm down. I've had a few episodes where I've like really um, melted down yeah. with like this d a day of shame. And I was able to really come out of it a lot easier than I've ever been able to do in the past. You have this great life coach named Angie Johnsy, who you guys have been communicating with and people online have been able to get some tips from her too. But what's the She's put thing? a lot of free content on her yeah. website for anybody that really wants to look so, into it. What's the one thing that you think you've taken away from this, this at this portion in your journey? The big thing that I've taken away is that my brain and my emotional health, my um, motion mm -hmm. in emotion mm -hmm. is very different. And my brain is always trying to poke my emotional yeah. self. Yeah. And I can now see that like if a, a feeling comes up, I'm like, oh, OK, what's being poked right now? Yeah. And how, so I can logically walk through it and mm -hmm. talk myself through it going, OK, my brain is just feeling a little scared because it thinks that it's losing control. Yeah. And that, and you can I've found that I'm able to talk myself through it a little bit easier. Out. Yeah. Well, I know you've wanted you've, you're on this wellness journey and that mm -hmm. has to do with great recipes, mm -hmm. too, healthy recipes. Will you cook a little bit? For yes, us? I would love to. Do you mind? I All right. To. Yes. We little love it when you cook. We do. Oh, good. Love when you do anything. So you're starting with a little zucchini. What are we making? Um, we're going to make some zucchini rollatini. And I am. Rollatini. Rollatini. Uh -huh. This is a really comforting, classic dish that has no pasta. No, like the carbs okay. are super minimum in here. Zucchini is really, really good for. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a lot of uh, vitamins in it. Mm -hmm. It's got some fiber in it, all those greens. Now, I'm using a. Uh, <laughs> this thing. I get scared I've, of that. I'm a little scared of it because I, I have too. ripped my finger off. Is before. that a mandolin? <laughs> this is a mandolin. But I really want these zucchini rolls to be nice and thin. So what you do is you get yeah, as like much as you can out thin. there and be very, very careful. Okay. But you want them paper thin and then you stick oh, them into a little bit of okay. boiling salted water. All right. And this is just for about 45 minutes, uh, 45 minutes, 45 seconds because okay. you just Real want to quick. soften these guys up. All right. Soften them up till they come to this. Okay. And then you want to get them really, really dry because then you're going to make the filling, which is ricotta, mm -hmm. a little bit of egg, yeah. some Parmesan and some lemon zest because I like that really nice tang. So have you changed your diet, Valerie? Like, what are you eating now that was different than what you were a month or so ago? I have definitely been more aware of pulling sugar out of my diet because yeah. I feel, I, I can feel my body is different when I have sugar. Yeah. I can feel all the stress yeah. kind of pound yeah. up and everything. Yeah. So I've taken a lot of the sugar out uh -huh. and I've got a, a cookie recipe that I'm going to do for uh, your show at the what? 10 o'clock. So. What? Yes. Yeah. No Sorry sugar? guys. No sugar. Yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so we're going to uh -huh. put the Parmesan cheese okay. in here. We've got a scrambled egg or is that the mozzarella? That looks yeah. like mozzarella. That's all right. <laughs> my bad. Okay. There I am. I'm losing my Italian part again. <laughs> now you go a little Egg just in a there. little bit of egg, and I have honestly, I, it's just a tablespoon, but you can throw mm. the whole thing it's in there too. Really want to. It's delicious. Is it Do you delicious? like it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We got some basil and we have some yeah. oregano and that gets all done up. You want to try and make a roll? It's yes. Super easy. Yes. How do you do it? So you grab your little scooper. Okay. If you don't have a scooper, just grab a big spoon. Spoon and Put get that in there, and then just try to smush it. Smush it just a little bit. 
to this the would be end. great for the kids, okay. too. The kids yeah, yeah, this is a lot of fun to yeah. make. And you just roll it up. I like the right. zucchini Boom, better than like eggplant. That. Do you, you really? Do? I do, personally, yeah. It's a little bit more gentler on the stomach. Yeah, just like and it. just a little more subtle on flavor. And then you just kind of just put in lay the pan. them in some marinara sauce, add some more mozzarella. You throw this in the over, oven? And then you throw this into okay. the oven. What are the flavors like, y'all? Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Is this to port your portion? Is this what you would recommend? Can I can I have two of these? You can have two of those, Carson. <laughs> okay. Because you're Here's special it. like that. I love you. <laughs> a little ramekin. It's so cute. It is cute. All right. Cute. Okay. We have so a little bit more. Here, I love you can this. have this one, Carson. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try this one. You okay. Now, you know with me. I, yeah. well, so What's what we're going to have up on the on the website is yeah. seven seven new dinners, brand new dinners, oh, yeah. Yeah. three new sides, and the cookies that I've come up with. Uh, so, okay. Now so what we want to do is get some nice this wilted. Is, what's this? A salad you're making? A I'm going to make a, a wilted Brussels sprout salad. Mm. And again, with the mandolin, but please be super careful. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a mandolin, you can just cut these nice and thin. Okay. Just get them as thin as you possibly can because what you want to do, yeah. shave them, yeah, is you get them nice and thin, mm -hmm. get some pancetta in here. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. the now pancetta is going to add a lot of mm -hmm. flavor, but there's not so much that it's going to add that much sodium okay. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So you have all this beautiful pancetta oil in here, and now you're going to wilt Brilliant. All uh, these guys, because you know these juice. guys can be yes, and these guys can be really kind of firm. It's a cabbage, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a little hard on the tummy if you don't wilt it. As okay. For me, so you get this all nice wilted in here, mm -hmm. and then after a few minutes, it's going to look like this. It's going to get this beautiful bright green. Is that as simple green. as that? It's That's that simple. It? Yes. Oh my God. You throw a little salt on there. there. Yeah. Boom. You don't need that much salt, but salt. here's the little oh. kicker. Huh. Get a little red wine vinegar. Okay. Uh, and get that over it because then you're going to add that tang. So your mouth is all going to yeah. be having a lot of fun in there. You got the, <laughs> you have the, the texture, the fat, the, the texture, yeah. the Crunchy creaminess. Crunchy pancetta. And, and then you have that little tang of the, uh, here, let me get this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that it. Delicious. So Maybe that's two of them. Vino, mm -hmm. A little, little vino. And, and this isn't wine. terrible mm -hmm. for me, right? This is because it tastes, for you. tastes so no, good. No, I mean, there, you can make any food terrible for you, but mm -hmm. I this is my journey, too, to make food not the enemy any longer right. yes. and really enjoy everything just depending on the portion control and, and how many vitamins am I getting in you my body? You do that so well. You do it better than anybody. For, uh -huh. You always read people who's, oh, you could eat it this way, but yeah. then take out everything that's good about it yeah. and eat it this way, and it tastes terrible. <laughs> right. No, oh, yeah. you're, you're, like, perfect. You're laying Let's have fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer joined us now from her beautiful kitchen. Good morning to you. Hey, Joy. Good morning. Can I tell you guys my favorite part of the week sure. was being in studio live with I you know. and giving everybody a great big hug. I know. Of course now I'm back in the house and Ian has his job back. <laughs> so my, my camera my cameraman is back on. I love these two recipes. We're definitely rocking into the weekend with easy delicious fare. The first is an action-packed cob salad with a do-it-yourself super creamy blue cheese dressing. So look at that. I mean, come on, you want to dig into it. Yeah, yeah, and it's do. very, I very- I have all those ingredients, so <laughs> tell us how to make yeah. it. So simple to assemble. This is my version, but you could do anything that you want. So I'm starting with leafy greens and I'm putting on some juicy nutrient-packed tomatoes, 
Here we got heart healthy. Look how green this avocado is. Nice and uh, dreamy avocado. Putting on protein packed chicken. And I have turkey bacon. And it's so simple, right? I'm sitting here. This this is just a chopped uh, two slices of turkey bacon. You know, going lean. You could certainly use regular if you want. And I'm spreading this on top. But now comes the epic egg trick. You're going to love this, guys. Let me get this out of the way. So I have my hard-boiled egg, and I'm taking a grater. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to grate the hard-boiled egg. And you make confetti-like pieces so that you get eggy goodness in every single bite. And I always love eggs, but especially now because um, with all of the food prices going up in the grocery store, eggs remain one of the lowest cost, high quality proteins that you could buy. So I've been doing a lot of things with eggs, as you'll see. Oh, I like that. I love that. Cool. Yeah. So, so now I'm going to show you the dressing okay. because we need to dress this gorgeous salad up. So this is a blue cheese dressing that is so simple. All you do is you add in, I started with some non-fat Greek yogurt mm-hmm. and I added in some light mayo, some buttermilk, a little bit of lemon juice, garlic powder, onion powder, and you could see I just put in crumbled blue cheese Yum. and a little bit of scallion and um, scallion and parsley. Yum. There it is. It, That's it. So it, it's so simple. It comes together very, very quick. And when you make it, you'll think, oh, my goodness, this is so thick and caloric. But, guys, it is so light while it's very, very decadent. So you could be very heavy-handed with okay, your drizzle, okay. which I like. So I'm putting this yogurt? right over. It's because of the yogurt combination with the light uh, mayo Mm. and the low-fat buttermilk, yeah. So it's very, very simple. And you make a great big batch, so you can put it on anything. And if you don't like blue cheese dressing, certainly you could use any other dressing that you want on the salad as well. you make that whole thing without the blue cheese crumbles? Is the dressing still good? So then it becomes ranch. It becomes the lowest calorie, most delicious ranch ever. And it will... Stash in the fridge for up to five days, and you do make a, a pretty nice amount. And I love it on sandwiches as Jordan, well, so it's super than, flavorful. We've got less than two minutes left for the br- Brussels sprouts okay. and eggs. Okay, this one is a sheet pan um, recipe that you could have for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So okay. we have our Brussels sprouts, which which I trimmed and I quartered, and I'm adding in just garlic powder, salt, and pepper. And I have the oven preheated to 400, and you mix this up. Then you lay it out on your baking sheet, and you pop it in for just about 12 minutes. And you really want to soften and caramelize those Brussels sprouts, and you want the edges to start to get crispy brown. We fight over the leaves in my house. They're so delicious. Don't toss them. Yeah. So then it goes in the oven, and then when you take it out, 400 for just about 12 minutes. Then you take it out. Did you hear that crash? Mm. Uh (laughs) No worries. (laughs) It was me, actually. (laughs) And, And so then what you do is, when it comes out of the oven, you sort of push the Brussels around to create a nest for the four eggs. And you crack the four eggs in, but one one important step is before you crack the eggs in, you have to liberally spray with some with an oil mister, right? Mm-hmm. So there I am. I'm spraying because you don't want those eggs to stick. Mm-hmm. And then you carefully crack them in the little nest that you made. It goes back in the oven just for five minutes, guys. And then when it comes out, I add on a little bit of ground black pepper and Parmesan cheese. And I'm going to show you what it looks like because you can't believe how easy this is. Well, we don't have the oozing of the egg. Do we have that picture? I cut the egg and all of the yolk oozes all over the, um, the, we're going to see it all over the um, Brussels sprouts. And it almost creates like its own sauce. And then together with the parm that you put over the top, I mean, guys, it's really good, yes, and it takes so maybe delicious. 30 minutes. That'd yeah. be great for brunch. That'd be a nice brunch really dish. Really good. If you're I'd doing. eat that right now. I don't yeah. know what time. What's 9.30? Brunch. Okay. okay. And not bad. So it could be a side or it could be an entree. Like, that's the beauty that of it. Wow, that looks amazing. Yeah. Joy, thank you it's so really much. It's really good. And very doable today, for sure. Oh, you got Always. it. Thank you, Joy. For these recipes, just head to today.com slash food.
Welcome back this morning on Today Food. We are cooking with Zung Lewis. And now, well, she's got her own cookbook. Honeysuckle is uh, the title of that cookbook. And it is filled with 100 healthy, feel-good recipes. Zung, good morning, good morning to you. Thank you good so morning, much, Zung. Good morning. Getting up to cook salmon and Brussels sprouts at 5.30 in the morning in Los Angeles. <laughs> What a way to wake up to. How are you guys? We're good. We're excited for this. Where'd you get that salmon? Give us a tip on picking out good salmon. So I really love to use um, Atlantic salmon. I got this from Whole Foods and um, a slice that's nice and thick, the center cut right here. Mm. I like a little bit of fat, but not too fat. And the skin is really important. Yes. Skin on. You leave yeah, it on, right? Skin. Yeah, good. All right, yes, let's do absolutely. it. Absolutely. The crispy skin is my favorite. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to start with the salmon, and then we'll try to squeeze in the Brussels sprouts. Yes. That's right. So first, we're going to start by making the sauce. I'm making the tamarind grilled sauce. I've already cooked up my um, garlic here. So we're going to add the brown sugar, some fish sauce. Brown sugar. Mm. Tamarind, mm. which is a very tangy, fruity sauce. Um, that you don't typically see with salmon, but this was something that my parents Yum. taught me to oh. use a lot with like soups and mm -hmm. we love it with fish really. Mm -hmm. So I made this dipping sauce and it's really easy. You just let it um, simmer and thicken up. So this will thicken up over here. But in the meantime, we're gonna work on the salmon. So with the salmon, I really love just using um, a grill pan like this, oh, anything oh, cast iron. a nice grate. If you don't have it, you can always use like a flat cast iron pan, anything that sears really well and get it nice and hot. So okay. once it gets hot, you just add it right on. Oh, skin side nice out. Okay. Right. Yeah. Flush side down. <laughs> and what I like to do is just sear it each side for about five minutes because it is a thicker cut. You want to make sure that it's cooked, but not fully cooked because it mm -hmm. tends to dry out the salmon. Mm -hmm. And Let's here I have the final product. Oh, that was lovely. Nice. Nice. With the beautiful grill marks. Yes. And the fun thing about this is like, I like to dress it up. So we have this slice of, or uh, this beautiful cut of salmon. Mm -hmm. And I have some fried shallots here. Oh, yeah. Sprinkle it up oh, on yes. top. Fried shallots just add so much depth and flavor. Mm -hmm. And then you also have a crunchy component. So you have uh, chopped peanuts. Oh, so we add that it. on top there. And then another fresh component is this green onion relish okay. for Ooh, color. Wow. And it adds like a nice, and beautiful stick. So what healthy. happens with that dipping sauce? You just dip that salmon right in there? Yeah. Oh, yes, yum. Absolutely. The dipping sauce, I just add oh, on, on the side. side. Look at that. Nice. Like a little umami. Love it. I, th I think we I, may have to do your Brussels sprouts on online website. on the yeah. website, but we love that salmon. That oh. looks delicious, oh Zung. Zung, thank Yum. you. Pass that through, Zung. Mm. Thank you, thank you. The Honeysuckle <laughs> Cookbook, by the way, it's out now. You can find more of Zung's recipes, including so those Brussels sprouts at today.com slash food. Uh, so today, Fitman Cook founder himself, Kevin Curry, hey, has uh, healthier Kevin. takes oh. on two of our favorite <laughs> sides created in collaboration with our friends over at Instagram. Kevin, always good to good see you. Thanks for your time. Always good to see y'all. Hey, What's going on? let's start with this, this <laughs> Brussels sprout mm, wild so rice mix thing. Yes. Yes. All right. So uh, um, Brussels sprouts is probably like my least favorite veggie, but I love them this way. So these are maple roasted veggies and some onion. And all I did was just roast these for about 15, 20 minutes on a high temperature Put this into your air fryer. Add in some maple in the last ten minutes. You know and, what? I've oh never God, put Brussels sprouts in an air fryer. You've never put it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it's a game changer. Does it make them the crispy, crispy or like or soft? Yeah. You're Absolutely, so crispy edges, okay. and that's what you want for Thanksgiving. It's really important. And mm. then we're going to combine these with an amazing wild, great wild rice mix. And this is just like some brown rice. It's black rice. It's red rice. It's all of the colors, and it's really, really interesting because this is a very filling recipe, but it's also just happens Healthy. to be good for you. Yeah. Don't say that out loud on Thanksgiving. People don't want to hear that. All right. And then we're going to add in some more sweetness with some cranberries, dried cranberries, and then some crushed pecans. And let me tell you, y'all, once you just begin to, mm. to stir it all up, yeah, we should try and that. you can mm. be a little naughty, too. I mean, if you want, you've got a little bit more, you know, maple, you could just 
add a little bit in there. there. No one's going to say anything. And then you just add some sea salt and pepper as well. And boom, let me tell you all, this is one of my favorite dishes and one of the only ways that I can eat Brussels sprouts without putting so copious yummy. amounts of Velveeta cheese on them. I love so wait, really quickly, because <laughs> so we have to move on, but yes. you put them in the oven yes. for what temperature mm -hmm. and then how long do, before you take them out and put them in the air fryer? Sure, sure, sure. I put mine in there for about 400, you know, for 400, and then I do it for about 20, 25 minutes. If okay. you're doing the air fryer, I'm telling you, just put it in there for about 410, for about 20 minutes. Crispy edges, okay. it's that so amazing. So... Don't forget the oil. Don't forget the oil. That's okay. really important, too. Can you use any different right? rice, or is that the rice that you recommend that's, like, the way to go? No, you know what? You can use brown rice. You can use farro. Just any type of grain that you like. I was just trying to incorporate a lot more of the complex carbohydrates into my diet. Okay. And, you know, it's just an easy way to sneak them in on Thanksgiving, yeah. you know, and okay. everyone's trying to, you Kevin, know, go really all quickly, out. I want to make sure we get to this sweet potato and plantain mash. Yes. Tell us about yes, this one. Yes, yes, yes. So this is sweet potato, plantain mash. This is like if Ooh, soul food yes. met West African, <laughs> met like Latin American. All right. So what you're going to do? Bake up a sweet potato. Poke some holes in it. This is really easy to do, Craig. This is going to be your recipe, all right? Okay. Then get yourself a plantain. Now, it needs to be a yellow and black one. Please don't get the pure yellow ones because you're going to be yelling at me talking about, Kevin, you ruined Thanksgiving. It's not sweet. Get the, get the black ones. Yes. yes. It's going to be and don't get a banana. Extra sweet. <laughs> Slice it's it. True. Don't. Yeah, please don't get a banana and then write me and say, your recipe is terrible. <laughs> all right? And then we're going to just bake this. Bake it in the oven. You're going to bake this for about 25 minutes. Bake this one for about a full hour, okay? Then you're going to come over here with your mash. Mash everything together. Mm -hmm. You're going to add in a little bit of almond milk. We're going to keep this plant-friendly for all the vegans over at Thanksgiving. A little bit of vegan butter. Ooh, okay, my goodness. we appreciate it. And then some, oops, some coconut sugar, which is amazing. Coconut and then a little bit of cinnamon. Ooh. Boom. And then mix this together. And then what you're going to do is you're going to bake this in the oven, y'all, okay. for about, I'd say about 25, 30 minutes or so. That's it. Um, and then you can take off the top and add just a little bit more sugar, mm. a little bit more butter. And then it comes out to this that. amazing right. caramelized mash that's oh my God. Probably dip that in it's so, so good. good. Where's our sample? That's mm. out. Mm. So, Kevin, mm. come back in the studio next time. For I'm come sad. back in the studio. <laughs> Kevin, thank so you good. for these recipes and more. Today.com slash food. Okay, if you're tired of coming up with dinner ideas night after night, we're kicking off a new series to help you out. It's called One and Done. It's simple, inexpensive, and also healthy one-dish wonders. And today, nutritionist Joy Bauer is starting us off with a menu for you tonight. Hey guys, so everybody has re been requesting hearty, delicious meals that you can whip together in a flash. And that's why I love One and Done. These are one sheet suppers and we are gonna be making roasted chicken and Brussels sprouts. And you'll see, it could not be any simpler. So we're first gonna make the marinade for the chicken and I'm adding in some olive oil. 
And this is a little bit of a secret ingredient. Two teaspoons of vinegar. What's nice about the vinegar is it acts as a tenderizer for the chicken. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, because everything's better with garlic. I have one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. And last but not least, smoky paprika. I love smoky paprika, and I'm putting in a heaping tablespoon. And it's gonna give it a nice, vibrant color as well. So now I'm going to cut up my chicken breasts. So I have skinless chicken breasts here. If you wanna leave the skin on, you can do that as well. But the key is, because we want this to cook really quickly, I'm cutting each breast into three large chunks. And if the breasts are really big, you can certainly do four or even five. And now I'm just gonna add the chicken breasts into the marinade that we made. And the vinegar is gonna allow the chicken breasts to tenderize. I covered up my chicken and I'm gonna marinate it in the fridge for 30 to 60 minutes. Next, what I think is the star of the show, our Brussels sprouts. So I love Brussels sprouts so much. I trim the edges and I'm cutting them into quarters. They are packed in vitamin C and they also have cancer fighting properties. And you'll notice as I'm cutting, we're getting all of these stray leaves. It's the best part of the Brussels sprouts. The best part because they brown and crisp up. To me, it tastes like potato chips. And Hoda, I know you're laughing right now. You're saying, Joy, those do not taste like potato chips. They taste like potato chips. I'm gonna take all of my Brussels sprouts and I'm gonna lay them out on the sheet. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and some ground black pepper. And if you like a little spice, you can add crushed red pepper flakes too. I'm gonna pop this in the oven at 400 for about 15 minutes. Guys, I told you, like potato chips. Can you hear that? That's a crunch. Mmm, so good. And now I'm gonna nestle the chicken, and this also works perfectly with thighs. Now I'm gonna pop this back in the oven one last time on the middle rack, set at 400 for 10 minutes or until the chicken is done. And there you have it, one and done. Now you can enjoy it exactly as is or you can bring it to the next level and add some fresh lemon juice on top and either some crumpled feta or some grated Parmesan cheese. Back to you guys, mmm. Morning on Today Food, we are making sweet and savory pies with New York Times bestselling author Allison Roman. Her third cookbook, congratulations, is out today, and you are getting back to your roots as a pastry chef. It's called Sweet Enough, and it's filled with simple recipes for for everybody. And so, yeah, we were talking about how for you, baking was like an entry point uh, into the culinary world. Yeah, it was sort of the job that they had available at the restaurant I wanted to work at. I had no training in either department, so it didn't really matter. I said, I'll do whatever, and then I was a pastry chef for six years. And as a person who's not that into desserts, I feel like that was an interesting choice, but I'm glad I made it. But I'm glad you put some savory desserts in the in the cookbook too. We're gonna start with that. Yes. This is your mushroom pot pie, which you say is better than a chicken pot pie. Yeah, I do okay. say that. And I, it's not even if you're a vegetarian, I just think that that's like the case. But I'm glad we're doing a savory pie too, because if you're doing a pie, sweet or savory pie crust is the most important part. Mm -hmm. And I believe firmly in doing your butter by hand, but that's also the beauty of this book is that most things are sort of done by hand or without equipment. Right. Oh, um, yeah. So, are you Like the old with, school baking way. Yeah, yeah I get that. we're doing old school. Am yeah. I familiar with what? With pie quiz dough. Me. With pie dough. Yeah, like the making uh, of it. Pillsbury pie dough, I am a little bit, okay, but this is the real, this <laughs> is the real <laughs> deal. Okay, well now that I've made it What was the, what was the with that butter that you had it cubed? Just, was that to help break yeah. it down? So it's cold butter and unsalted. And basically you kind of just want to smash it in. And I think that this is also like is a good flour? reminder. Yeah, flour, sugar, salt, Got a little it. bit of sugar. Okay. Because it's for sweet and savory. Um, but just like have a good time, like play with it. It should feel like you're playing in the bowl of flour. So don't get too precious with it. You can add your vinegar, your ice cold water. The vinegar's in there because it adds a little bit of tenderness, the acidity mm -hmm. 
boring, boring, boring helps prevent like <laughs> gluten formation, which is Got like, it. you know, if you must know. Um, Al, do you make your own pie crust? You strike me as the gentleman that might mm. do that. I've uh, tried. Excellent. I'm not that good at it. Okay. I think you should get over here and try this. Right. I think Ooh. you would mm -hmm. trust yourself to have a much better. So you make this time. dough. Obviously, it works for sweet or savory. This, yes. this pie so it's dough. It's like a great all-purpose pie crust. It works for galettes. It works. And for can you just freeze it and hold on to it? Can there always be a roll of dough in your freezer? And you know, thing, or in no? my house, there is. Okay. There is always a roll. Um, but yes, yeah, so this one is mushroom, and the reason I included savory recipes is because I sort of figure if you can make a sweet pie, you can also make a savory pie. Mm -hmm. And pot pie is obviously very popular. They don't have to be always meat-based, mm -hmm. and I feel like mushrooms are a really great way to sort of showcase like flaky pie crust, creamy filling, all that what stuff. What kind of shrooms are you working with today, Alice? We are <laughs> working with a multitude of shrooms, Carson. Um, these are my taki mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, Look and regular button mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but, but for like, people at home, they want to make this tonight. Like, literally, can they just grab any mushroom in the market? You can grab any mushroom in the market. Okay, and I think, like, the nice thing about just cooking with regular sort of button is that they are, they're more affordable, they're accessible, but shocked at the variety of mushrooms available these days. They really come a long way. Okay. Um, okay, so we are going to sort of cook half the mushrooms down. Are you guys eating this over there? How are you enjoying they're, 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 they're going right. for it. They did not is wait for us. Is, is there cheese right. in this? No, a little bit of cream. Okay. Really I know we good. don't do a ton of dairy. So but good. All right, so you just cook all these mushrooms down. Yeah, we and start add by cooking to them, half. Or? I'm gonna start eating. You cook, yeah, and then <laughs> they're like, "You have run out of time you know now." What to do. <laughs> um, there is mushrooms, onions, garlic, and you sort of like cook it Delicious. down, do the whole thing, salt and pepper, season as you go, and then you end up with these gorgeous. Little mushrooms this is here. great. This is a little cold. Really I don't know if it's supposed good. to be, oh, really but it's yeah. delicious even chilly. You know like the it's next day. Magic. Um, mm -hmm. We add more butter, we add herbs, we add flour, and oh that's gosh. basically the thing that thickens the pot pie filling. Uh -huh. The butter. Delicious. Um, so good. There's a cream. Um, I like to make the roux sort of in the pot rather than like using 28 yeah. pots and pans for any pot pie. Um, it makes things a lot easier. And what is this oh. liquid right here, this brothy thing? It's broth and it's cream. <laughs> it's broth and cream, which okay. is, this is not cheese, is. but not not cheese, you know? No. <laughs> but it's um, Add that, add that, and it basically cooks down into wow. something really beautiful that looks mm. like this. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to add that to here, Creamy this is a double crust pie. And the reason I like to use a glass bottom pie plate, whether it's a savory pie or a sweet pie, because you can see the bottom bake as it goes, right? Ah. So if you're like, how is it done? How do I know? With a glass bottom pie now. plate, so smart. Uh, you can see the bottom. Right. Mm. Okay. And you got transparency a crust on top. all around. Yeah. And you then, do a little crimping around the you know, edges there. You we got about a minute. Crimp however, you want. Great. Yep. One minute. Sixty seconds is more <laughs> than enough. Okay. We're doing great. Um, what's, the, what's the crumbly thing? Let's try the. Oh. It's just the flaky pie crust. That's wow. just how flaky it is. Mm. How about oh, the lemon pie, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Do you use yeah, a whole lemon good. in this lemon pie? Some cream on that. The whole lemon is in there, so it's. <laughs> like, it looks like there's part of the. It is. It's a shaker pie, so it. it's like a classic sort of thing mm, where they nice. use the whole lemon and everything, which I'm a huge fan of. But like same mm. pie crust, and one is sweet, one is savory, one is salt and pepper, one has sugar. It's super versatile. Is your cookbook oh, 50 50 savory and sweet, or is no? It? It's like 95 sweet, five savory. Okay. okay. I sort of did the savory because I'm like, it's for me. Too, yeah. You know. If you were gonna bake one thing out of your own cookbook. Book, what would you bake? Wow. God, tonight? Wow. Yeah, like tonight, what would you make? Maybe this lemon shaker pie. Love it. Yeah. I love, it's really I love good. the whole lemon. It's wow. bitter. It's sweet. It's not too sweet. It's sweet enough, as it were. It's so good, Allison. Mm. Well, Come get on. the cookbook, everybody. Mm. It is sweet enough, and you can get these recipes mm. also at our website, today.com slash food. One of the best parts of Thanksgiving, of course, are the leftovers. Melba Wilson is the chef and owner of Melba's in Harlem, and she's going to show us how to repurpose our turkey insides into, like, we're not just making the turkey sandwich. We're having oh, something no. kind of yes. fresh. We love it. Yeah. Well, first of all, happy Thanksgiving. How was yesterday? It, it was, was good. delish, was as good. usual. Good. All right, there's so much, much left over, though. So, so what are we doing? So many things left over. So what we're doing today is we are doing my turkey pot okay. pie. Turkey which I, pot pie. Pot pie. So smart. Who doesn't love that? a pot pie? Okay, so comforting, so warm, and so delicious. Okay. So, Jenna, what we're going to do is we're going to dice up those oh. that celery stalks okay. right there. Okay. I know this okay. is You got it. Dicey. No, that's good. good that's enough. good. Good girl. Okay. That's that's perfect. Right. perfect. Let's pretend I diced there it. There you go. And then we're gonna sweat that in and there. And is there onions already in there? Those are onions in there. And then mm. we're gonna add carrots. our carrots. Do you put butter yes. or do you put oil? Oh, girl, you know, you know I put butter in there. Everything is better with butter. Really yes. true. You so see much how better. wonderful that is? Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna take our flour, all-purpose flour. Okay. We're gonna oopsie. <laughs> 
Go ahead, girl. Okay. Okay. This you know is what, what I, I this is what I do at home. You okay. I'm happy to know that even Melba's even I make a mess every you now and then. All right. Okay. But the beautiful thing about this yeah. is this flower is really, really look at watch what it's yeah, gonna do. It's like making it's gonna it, get some of that make some of that room. fat and it's mm. also gonna toast it. Mm. Okay. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Would you please add the sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes. Yes. Sure. Pass the potatoes, you please. You got it. Yes. Yes. So these are raw. Raw sweet potatoes. Okay. Yep, they are. The ones you already cooked or no? Well, you know, you can, but we'll you don't want that. it to get too mushy. Do that at the we'll end. Right. So now. take your turkey stock. Put May that I? turkey okay, stock. Turkey stock. Yeah. Mm. Now, turkey do you smell stock. that? Mm. Wow. Yeah. So you cook that. And we're going to cook this down for about 30 minutes or okay. so. Okay. All right. Come to the good part. So after that's cooked, we got it? No, we got add, add a collard greens. Oh, collard, collard greens, greens going in. got to put some collard greens. And collard greens, greens going in. Turkey. In oh, the left. Yes. And so my mom, she yeah. loves the white meat, but I'm a dark meat Me girl. Me too. And so what I do I love a dark meat. is I just pull the dark meat. And I put it in there. So, so you're going to put all this yep, in there? all that pulled dark I, meat in there. We don't have that much leftover dark meat oh, in our house. Really? You no. only have no, But, but I think if you put the, the, the white meat in here, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's in whatever. A, it, really, really, it really, really doesn't. Okay. But one of the other things you can do with your with your dark meat it, mm -hmm. is with your collard greens, you can add it in and use it as a side dish. Yeah, and that's it a good it so idea. it so much more smart. flavor. Okay. Okay, we're going to take that perky pot. Do you want me to try it? Oh, yep. this is the no, filling. Yeah, this is the filling. We're going to put it in. Where'd you get these? Normally, I would make them, but I've been cooking for three Three days, girl. Yeah, I, yeah, so I just brought some little delicious Do you have uh, too much? Crust that, no, that's that's And you perfect. put it on top? That's perfect. I put mean, that how on top. cute are those? Cute. And we're going to take our egg, egg wash. wash. And what am I doing? Wash it right on the top. And then how, you put Beautiful. it in the oven? You're going to put it in the oven at 350 and just let it cook until it's golden brown. I've got to try this. voila. Tell oh me what you God. think. Look at the top on it. It's so beautiful. Cute. Isn't that beautiful? And this is crunchy and crispy. Mm -hmm. And it's a great way to use leftover turkey and leftover collard greens. Mm. Oh, my God. And I think kids would mm. love this. Kids mm. really would. And, you, and mm. you can use it as a starter or you can use it as an entree. Mm -hmm. No, it's just so good. Mouth so up. delicious. Is Wait, there more? Have, there's one more. Oh, oh, I know. This. Okay. Well, okay. Go. we also Take it with have you. our mm -hmm. fall harvest turkey cob salad. Mm. Okay, this is brilliant. Okay. So, look at this. These are all Gorgeous. things that were pretty much left over. What do you right? have there? Tell us. Well, we have roasted sweet potatoes, sun-dried tomatoes, leftover turkey, bacon bits. Who doesn't love bacon bits? And you know, have dried fruit left over. Always dried fruit. All you that can stuff. use cranberry. Okay. Or you can use cherries. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start with our dressing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love a Dijon Me vinaigrette too. dressing. All right? So we have our Dijon mustard mm -hmm. here. And did you have some cranberry juice left over? Yes, yes. of course. Well, girl, let's put that in cranberry there. Cranberry juice. Okay. Red wine vinegar. Of course. We red have a little vinegar. of that. Yep, let's put the red wine vinegar, and we're going to whisk that oh, together first, right? Oil. And then you put the oil in? That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly add the olive oil. There you mm -hmm. go. Beautiful. To emulsify it. Right. Emulsify. Just so that it doesn't separate. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Hoda always that? multiplies things. No, she is good. You, you have a lot of experience. Hoda, you Use multiply. Keep it going. Keep Melba, it going, come girl. Come on, Melba. I'm going to put a little bit of salt. Come on, yeah. Bam. Uh -huh. Fresh pepper. Yes. There we go. Oh, look at that. Now, the beautiful thing about That's this. That's beautiful. This will last for about a week in the fridge. It will? Oh, really? It really, really will. Okay. Okay, so you're just using iceberg. Uh, romaine. Romaine. <laughs> romaine lettuce. That's okay. 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 That's all right. And you have and this beautiful. Take your toppings. We got the turkey. Just put them right on what top. Want. Whatever That's you so want. good. Whatever you want. Sneak down here and try one of these. Okay, I'm going to add some, some over Arch here. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Mm. Mm. Got to put some turkey in here, some sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, my gosh. Eggs, avocado. Melba. What a smart idea. And crumble. Lay this out for people to pick mm -hmm. what you mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. It's kind of healthy. Mm -hmm. and it's kinda I healthy. love the sweet potatoes. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you, Melba. Melba. For Happy these recipes. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You can head to today.com slash food.
are just days away from Thanksgiving, and this morning in our Make Ahead Monday, we're getting some inspiration to add something new to your holiday meal. This morning, we are joined by Skylar Bouchard, also known as Dining, Dining with, with Skylar. Hello, and you guys. she's got a twist on a classic <laughs> comfort food. Skylar, welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. We are going to get cooking today. Uh -huh. okay. You guys are going to be working with me. So this this is something that we could make ahead for, to be ready for Thanksgiving. Absolutely. So we are making vegetable pot pies. So you okay. can do this casserole style, you can do it little side style like we're doing in ramekins um, or in little mini cast iron. I love it. It's a lot of nice. fun. Um, and then we're going to make some pear and brie pastries. It smells are you so ready? What's the, the, the start it for this? Good. All right. So this is onion and fennel we have going with some butter. Mm -hmm. And we're going to add some salt because you want to season every single layer of your dish with some kosher salt, preferably. Mm. Even the concept of layering just yes, sounds yummy Yes, that is the... The base of it is so important because we're building all of our flavor. Diced so I'm garlic, adding garlic. some garlic. We're adding thyme, mm -hmm. rosemary, and sage. Oh. All the things. Yeah. All the things. Yeah. All the fall things. Yes. This almost starts to smell like the base for stuffing. Exactly. It does. That's kind of the inspiration mm -hmm. here with the sage. We're making it kind of fall themed. We want to hang on to fall a little and bit it's longer. Veggie. You can add veggie broth. Yes, yes, that's okay. what we're doing. So we're going to build a roux, and actually, okay. Chanel, I'm going to have you help me. Okay. Al, I know you're a shell. No, no, so. no, I think Chanel. <laughs> Chanel, right. you got to start. Actually, we're going to start with some white, white wine, wine here. Okay. We're building Casually a or just go for uh, it? You know what? Casually pour it in. Okay. Uh, we're going to cook it off as you're pouring it in, and okay. this flour is basically the thickener for mm, our sauce. Without the flour... So we have a soup, and we all don't right. want a soup, right? Well, for the sake of time. Yeah. I'll kind of hurry it up there. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let's add all that veggie stock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're not like a true vegetarian, you can go chicken stock there here you for go. flavor. Okay. And but sometimes, at least you have this option because there are a lot of people exactly. these days who are trying not to eat meat, so mm -hmm. you have something for them that's and still comfort food ish. Absolutely. You know? and what's that? What was that? So this is my secret ingredient, you guys. This is some veggie stock concentrate paste. Ooh, so it has yeah. a lot of depth of flavor, mm -hmm. okay. and it really boldens the flavor more. And just some milk. Some whole milk. Whole We're gonna milk. just yeah. mix. That up. Right. So you're gonna, mm -hmm. if you're doing this at home, you do that slowly. Right. Let that thicken. Okay. Wait, and we're gonna Hold add on. all oh. of our vegetables. So in just the pour pot. all of them right into the pot. Are okay. these See, frozen veggies? These are frozen oh. veggies. Oh, so it makes it that much easier. Even that much better. Easier. Already we prepped. could okay. blanch them all, and it would uh -huh. take different times for different vegetables. Right. We'll but just like for sake of time, you know, vegetables yeah. are actually frozen after they're blanched. Uh -huh. Okay. So they're all part cooked, and it'll cook evenly and perfectly. Mm. So okay. here's our filling. Right. We're gonna let that thicken and be beautiful. Here we are now. We I have waited, so we let this come to room temp after it thickened, okay. because that's just a safer way to do it. We we'll okay. put it in the fridge, yep. up to three days. Okay. And now oh, we so this part's already done. And it's done. done. Yep, it's already done. We're going to scoop it in as our turkey is resting. We oh have our oven preheated right. to whatever the pastry instructions will say. Okay. Al, why don't you help me out here? Okay. So we're going to get a lovely square of puff pastry. Right. Just plop it on. Cheating. Feel free to stretch it out. This is thought out, mm. thought the night before. That's mm. a really important thing to do. And we then like you've got an egg wash? Cooked, yup. And we're going to slit it. Oh, my God. You can slit it first or egg wash first. This might be my new favorite thing. Yes, I love that for Wait, you, Wait, I can Chanel. be vegetarian if I can wow. do this. And then this goes in the oven for how long? So this goes in. Oh it God. depends on your puff pastry. This would probably be 25 minutes. Oh, see, you know. You've pulled out all the stops. Listen. I'm just going to slit yours for ventilation. We don't want it to get soggy. It's That's a very right. important step. I need like the, the yes. steam Ow. escape. Are you I the new salt bay? Pardon? Your salt bag. Get a little salt bag. Listen, whoever <laughs> at home, if you like, and that's the thing, you don't even have to be a vegetarian to love this. This no, is exactly. amazing. In fact, you Thank could put you. a little, little, little uh, rotisserie chicken in oh there. Rotisserie, so that's the other thing. What you can okay, use Thanksgiving on. leftovers. And then vegetable, filling. I mean, uh, a dessert time. Exactly. Ooh. All right, you, we're all building them today. So you say mm -hmm. you have leftover puff pastry. Mm -hmm. This is a fun little thing. We're gonna, Come on, Chanel. Oh, now oh, let's I'm get so in here. Eating. We're going to layer some pear slices. Pear and cheese, or yep. you doing so two, two different things? Two different. No, we're doing pear and cheese. They actually oh, complement each other really sweet and savory. Well. Okay. Exactly. It's like the idea of a little apple and cheese. Yeah. That's such a great idea. And I love a good pear, so we're using Bartlett pears I think I and mine. some creamy brie. You can use camembert. See how cute hers looks? So, oh. no, wait, question. <laughs> Before we run out of time, so then you questions. just do this and then just bake it. It's that simple. Yeah, it is that simple. We're gonna add a little honey and a little sea salt. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Honey Bay and My Salt Bay is, is Al Roker right here. Look yeah. at that. Oh, uh, this is nice. Oh yeah. So you get the sweet, the <laughs> salty. <laughs> salt. Ooh, wow, try it. Skylar, this is fantastic. Yeah, and Ready? if you want to jazz it up, you can add some prosciutto as well. Oh my god. Oh my. You god. like it? Are you kidding me? No, I'm gonna hear you. It's like having your meal and dessert <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, and this is a great starter or a great dessert, so you can do either which way.
so excited. We're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one, the only, the returning Martha Stewart. Hi. Hi. Oh, so her. great to be here. 99th. I can't Book, believe it. Martha Stewart's fruit desserts. And we are so and excited the, to have you here in person. The recipes are so good in this book, and I've been baking every single one of them, and they're delicious. But I want to show you how to make apple pot pies. So the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces, mm -hmm. add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Just mm. three kosher salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon and allspice. Which okay. It's a very nice flavor, half a teaspoon. You can stir that up. All some right. Now. And then you saute half of them in a pan, add two tablespoons of flour. Oh yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, wow. Yeah, well, you, a little bit more won't hurt. And you cook <laughs> that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. really and then add yeah. this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to get it like a thickened up sauce, well, kind of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up yeah. in the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can and I stop then, Okay. Yeah. Off. Mm -hmm. And then these stir all together. Ooh, yum. Oh Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> He just added more. Spoon Food. those into a pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. See this cute, and this okay. is one serving, so. Uh, you didn't put the pastry under, I noticed. Uh, no, 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 pot pies always have the pastry on <laughs> oh, top. Oh, that's right, that's right. You know, so here's a square of puff pastry, just mm. like that. Can you pre-buy that, or? It's store Oh, yeah, yeah. it's a okay. store, but you can buy it. They, there's very good home uh, frozen, frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top, or two, mm -hmm. and put easy. that like that, and then egg wash. Just uh, wow, just a eggs. softly beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs. Really, really great. Mm. When do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. You don't want to do, because no. you want this to, to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. OK, so, yum. And so delicious, a really cute uh, single serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha, actually. Oh my gosh. I would never These would make are it. awesome. This is my happy place. Oh my right God. Here. No. It's very impressive. You can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what it's that a is? Granny Smith apple? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A I'm afraid to, an apple? This is a quince. But it's oh. kind of a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. But oh, it's yeah, not yeah. edible it's uncooked. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, half, yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm and about a quart of water. Watch Carson's and trying to put bourbon in a that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is, you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean, and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see Never the seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean oh, seeds, see? And you leave the thing in But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look the color they Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you no, put no, them in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I need. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince, just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid. Mm -hmm. And is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. That's a good bourbon too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know. Yeah. My people. Okay. So now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Those dishes. All that will thicken up. And this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal, and you can just. Oh, I love that. This it's just a crumble. The top. Yeah, oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Yeah. Had a quince in your life? You know, taste it. Oh, You're going to love it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? What do you think, guys? Do you love it? So good. Yeah. Someday yeah. my quince will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, no, it is so good. We're having our first good. quince. Have you had a quince before? I? I grew no, you oh, I grew up quinces. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year, too. Really beautiful. Really good. Put this all over the top. And 
sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go. This morning on Today Food, there is nothing like a comforting meal to get us through the cold winter days like these. David Venable from QVC's In the Kitchen with David is here to show the ultimate winter comfort food shortcuts. David, at six foot six, nice to see you, brother. Yeah, look at you. I wish he eyed eye on things. <laughs> I was going to say, we are a big dude with some good food options for us today. So we've got a couple things. You're going to start with the pot sticker soup. Yeah, right? pot stickers are my go-to. I keep them in my freezer all the time, and I usually saute them and serve them over rice. So I thought, why not make a winter soup? With pot stickers, but do it from prep to table in 30 minutes. So you got so yeah, it's a ton of ingredients. Not that many ingredients, Actually, but all easy to do. Only 10 ingredients here. Yep. So you're talking about some some beef stock that you buy in a carton, a little uh, cooking oil, soy sauce, some fresh vegetables that you're going to prep ahead of time if you don't have a lot of time to do it right at the start, and then some frozen pot stickers. What we're going to do first is we've already heated some oil in this stock pot, and I've got all that same vegetable already cooked up. Now I'll give you a little tip. Yeah. When you're doing some Asian cooking, make sure that all of your vegetables are cut small and the same size so they cook more evenly. Okay. So we're gonna get these into the pot. You'll hear them start to sizzle. And all this goes oh, in, good, this huh? only have to season or soften about five minutes. Chanel didn't wait, she's already enjoying yeah, she's it. Well, <laughs> Chanel's a good eater, I understand. I am. Yeah, Chanel and I know each other from way back. She's a good eater. But you know what, this is fantastic because what you're going to do is just let these saute for about five minutes because again, you're gonna spend more time cutting vegetables than you are making the soup. Yeah, exactly. That's what makes it so so great and perfect for a weeknight, right? Your, your book is called Comfort Food Shortcuts, right? I mean, a lot of these are good kid options. Your kids, who, what kid wouldn't love a little- Well, I understand you have two girls, right? You got two girls, yeah, that's why I'm playing a co- playing, paying close attention exactly. to what you do. Exactly, <laughs> because you know what? This becomes kid friendly. All the recipes in the book are 10 ingredients or less. They're all kid and family friendly. So they're really simple. I'm gonna add in some beef broth and to that then some soy sauce and then finally a little black pepper. But here's the magic. Go to your freezer, grab your frozen pot stickers. So that's the takeaway. A lot of people see the frozen food aisle and they're like, ah, I don't know about this. You sort of turn that into the delicacy here. Well, here's the thing. Um, Prepackaged food is a better quality now than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago, you couldn't find pesto in the supermarket worth eating, right? Yeah. If it was pre-jarred or pre-sauced, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So this is going to be something that is easy to find in the market, super, super great quality, and now it's really gourmet. Let this simmer for five to seven minutes and you've got soup finished up. Isn't that crazy? You don't, so good. Guys? Frost. you don't even have to No, because the, the frozen pot stickers actually will warm in the, in, the in the broth. Right, right, right. Fantastic. That's why we brought David Venable. And yeah. because they are not pre-crisped, they're going to be really tender so you can get your spoon through them. Really good. Ah. Yeah. Let's talk chicken pot pies, can we? Can we oh, do that? Of course we well? can. We'll start, garnish I'm, that. I'm going to eat. Do you oh, also, please, I'll, you I'll do that. You while you do so this. this is a biscuit top chicken pot pies, yeah. classic comfort food. But the big problem with traditional pot pies, you have to make crust and you have to make the filling and do all that kind of thing. We're going to really shorthand this. First thing we're to do is buy rotisserie chicken, five dollars in the supermarket. Easy enough. Shred that bad boy up and get it right into the pot. Okay. Then from there, we're going to add in frozen mixed vegetables, mm -hmm. some chicken stock, and cream of chicken soup. Chicken so, soup. Peter, why don't you give me a hand there? Just pop that um, bowl of frozen vegetables. Right in. Just mixed natural. vegetables. This is really good. Look, Look at that. <laughs> but Nicely the, done. The truth is, this is easy. It just is. go down in an aisle. You buy literally. It's one supermarket run, and you're done. Yeah. These are full of supermarket shortcuts. The book is full of supermarket shortcuts, really helping you get things done in record time. Pop in that soup. Okay. Then we're going to add in some chicken stock. Okay. And then, Peter, if you want to just give me a couple twists of the pepper mill. 
It's yep. so Sorry, good. Sorry, here's the And so simple. Now, here's a little tip I'm going to tell you. If you heat the filling first and then put it in the casserole dish, your biscuits won't burn in the oven. What we found when we tested the recipe is if we put in the filling cold and put raw biscuits on top, the biscuits would burn before the filling got warm. Okay? Ah. So you warm it first, then you put on uh, the biscuits. Now, we've already warmed the filling here, and we're going to use what I call wampum biscuits. You peel off the paper top and you wamp it on the counter. <laughs> exactly. You wamp it here, and then and what we're going to do here, Peter, is just layer these right on top. So you just Perfect. grab those out. You Your girls can help oh, with this. Oh, we've got friends. We've got Oh, we do. Who is it? Who's at the door? <gasps> Chef uh -huh. Garner! Oh, my goodness! Wow. We have celebrities in the kitchen. Celebrity chefs from Sesame Street. I love it. I love it. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Come on in. Are you guys hungry? That's well, a I yes. Know. I think that's a yes. All right. Say, of All right. course. Well, I tell you what. This is 30 minutes in the oven. Can't beat it. And then you got a kid-friendly, family-friendly... Wonderful comfort. And so the cost is, is is near nothing. Is it, Well, it's so easy. And these are all ingredients you have on hand or you buy in the market. Thank you for being here. Thank you so Garner, much. Thank you, Cookie Monster. Thank you thank for you. joining us. Have you some guys pot pie, guys. Right Okay, when it's cold outside, mm -hmm. there's not much better, nothing better than a hot and hearty bowl of chili. Mm. And this recipe is just what you might need for a busy weeknight. Dina Delisa Gonser is an award-winning home cook. She's the personality behind DishItGirl.com, which is <laughs> such a cool, clever name. Oh, thank you. How, How are you? Hello. This seems like the per perfect recipe, especially for today. It is like, it's like it freezing is, it cold out. It is crazy. Out. you got that chill on your bones. You want to get it out. So let's do some I love chili this. for okay. sure. But okay. let's do it a little bit different. Okay. Now we're used to those tomato base. We're going to go for um, a white chili oh, with yeah. a little bit of coconut milk in there. Oh, like coconut You're going to start milk. up with your onions mm -hmm. and your garlic. We're going to chop, chop it up it. a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then and you put it, you yeah, put it in the pan? Yeah, we're going to put that in the pan with a little bit of coconut oil. Coconut oil. Coconut yes. oil. Yes. Coconut I just oil. want to tell you I'm a big fan of coconut Ooh, oil. She likes all oh, forms. There you go. Well, this is, this is for you. What's and that? And I like garlic? to saute the onion and the garlic just to um, give yeah, it a little bit. Um, I give it like two minutes, two, three minutes. You just want to make sure that it's not that raw. Yeah. Onion flavor yeah. getting Look into Look how cute your... and teeny your spatula is. Oh, is it? My God, is there, what, 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 what is happening? <laughs> We've got, like, is this a dog it's like spatula? Bar, it's like Barbie. Barbie came to visit. Is this the American girl? Okay. okay. All, All right. right. So, we, daughter. All right. Yeah. so we have that. So you're going to yeah, you're gonna saute. You can also throw in some of your spices. We have some oregano. Do you want me to help you? Over here. Yeah, that would be great. Let me use my spatula. Yeah, and this just kind of, you know what? Wait, you put it in there? Oh, you can put sorry. it straight in. That is no problem. Where is it supposed to go? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, go for it. Or you can also saute that along alongside the oh, onion okay. and garlic for Sorry. a little bit just we to open know. up those spices. Okay. Should I dump this no in? No problem. Is so this all going here? It's all, you're just going to dump it dump, and dump, go. Dump. My favorite. We've got some chicken broth in there. We've got some kernels of take corn. Care of this. And I'm it's using green peas. chili. Yes, green chili. I like a little spice. How about you? Okay. Yeah, we like it. But is yeah. this kid friendly or not really? It is kid <laughs> friendly. It is what not super hot. What are you chickpeas? I love chickpeas. But chick you know what you could do, Don't Jenna, judge me. is you could just take the chicken that's in here that's kind of falling apart yeah. and put it into, um, you can just make a quesadilla oh, with ooh, it. Oh, great so idea. That's, yes, that's right, what we do. So come on down. What's the, you, so this so is look, your, we're going to shred our chicken. This is how you do it? Yes. You shred a chicken in a blender? Just gonna click it on, and it's gonna Does do it that work? hard work oh. for you. Yeah, look. No, is that just like a rotisserie chicken you buy at the grocery you know store? What? You could take yeah, rotisserie chicken, yeah. and yes, you could use that as well. Okay. And again, like I said, oh, just wow, look what happened there. Yeah, I've look. never seen that before. Me either. Well, look at that okay. new trick for the new year. So, so here we go. We're just yeah. Going what's to eat. in there? The corn so and all that. So this is um, this is what we um, mm -hmm. raised down. We have the okay. corn. We have the chickpeas. So do you end up putting chicken. this chicken in? Here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That gets really soft. You put it and take it out. You shred it up. And then you, you put, put it, back it all again. together in here with oh. a little bit of coconut milk. Coconut. Another Look couple of minutes. Look at that, that coconut is. milk. It's yeah. foamy. It is there. beautiful, I just taste right? It? I know how it is. What are you go doing? Oh, it's good. You she gotta love the food you're working with. Oh, gotta love the food you're okay. with. And you're gonna let that cook down till it thickens a little bit. Now, what have you done here? You put it in a baked potato? Yes, yes. we put it in Dinner. a baked potato. Because you just need it to be a little bit heartier. Why okay. not? This is the kind of recipe that's great even for the next two or three days. Okay. So and you top it with avocado. Yes, mm -hmm. we're gonna go and we're gonna give it a nice little squeeze of lime here. Mm -hmm. A little bit of mm. jalapeno, mm. depending upon how hot you like mm. it. Cheese. I mean, if whatever you want to dream up to top it with, you top it with. You go for it's it. It's spicy and delicious, mm. but not too spicy. 
That's right. why I love That's it. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know. want, you can mm. even do a little bit of mm. chipotle sauce if you want to kick up the heat. I mean, I, I, the spicier, the better for me. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> this is delicious and mm. hearty and yummy. Thank you for this. It's mm -hmm. really good. Awesome. And you can get this recipe at today.com slash food. All right, this morning in today's food, a hearty meal that's packed with nutrients. Health journalist and author Max Lugavere is here to show us a recipe from his new cookbook. It's called Genius Kitchen, over 100 easy and delicious recipes to make your brain sharp, body strong, and taste buds happy. That seems like yes. a great combination. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot to promise, but the cookbook <laughs> delivers. It's, it's the only cookbook, I think, that can simultaneously shrink your belly and grow the brain. Oh, wow. I like I'm it. super excited so about. So brain foods in particular, what in this recipe would make our brain smarter? Oh my God, every aspect of this recipe is calibrated to support brain health and mental health in accordance with the latest available evidence. And it's delicious as well. Awesome. Even better, right. so how right. yeah. yeah, so this is a, a mole chili. A lot of the recipes in my book are internationally influenced and inspired. Mm -hmm. And so we've got our ancho and guajillo chilies right here, which add a little bit of spice. Mm -hmm. People that eat spicy food every day have reduced risk of early mortality by about 14%. Oh, so it's, wow. if you like spicy food, that's a, that's a nice perk, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to combine the mushrooms with the chilies. Mm -hmm. But these are dried. These are dried mushrooms. Uh -huh. mushrooms Why do you are like great. using dried? We like using dried because they have uh, more of an umami Water's flavor. Ready. The water's ready, it's boiling. <laughs> that's perfect. So we want to put, do you want to do the honors? Sure. So you want to put about a, a cup okay. of boiling water in there. And typically when you're preparing this recipe at home, you want to let it sit for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Dried mushrooms as compared to fresh mushrooms, they have more of that uh, umami flavor, which mm -hmm. mushrooms are known for. And the darker the mushroom, the more umami flavor. So right. it doesn't matter which mushroom, so long okay. as you're using shrooms. <laughs> so you let that sit for 10 minutes and then you put it in a blender to puree the concoction. Now what you want to do is you want to chop up an onion. Uh, we don't want any bloodshed on the set, so I'm not going to do this <laughs> live. But um, but we have our chopped onions here, and then we've got delicious garlic, and we've got yeah. cilantro stems. Oh. We don't waste any of the cilantro. Uh -huh. So we're using the stems, which actually have a more potent cilantro flavor than the leaves. Oh, that's interesting. Oh. The leaves are great for a garnish. They sure. look really beautiful as mm -hmm. well. So we've got our chopped onion. We've got our cilantro stems. We've got the garlic. Garlic is, by the way, a wonderful prebiotic fiber, really good for gut health. Okay. Oh. And so is that why you're using a lot of that. garlic? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also keeps the vampires away. Yes. All right. I was thinking that. So. Here we have a crock pot. It's a very thick pot, really good for evenly distributing mm -hmm. the heat. And we've got our sliced brisket. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a big fan of grass fed, grass finished beef, but mm -hmm. any beef will do. It's a very nutrient dense food. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, what we want to do. It's fatty, that's okay. That's still good for our. Grass our finished health. beef fat is actually quite healthful. Yeah, it's a. Okay. It's a, it's a Decent source of omega-3 fatty acids, mm -hmm. good source of vitamin E, and pristine protein. Okay. So you want to put the beef in the pot, like so. Is that olive oil, or? I use avocado oil, oh, which is very heart healthy and uh, chemically stable for high heat cooking. Mm -hmm. So we okay. want to use avocado oil. What, no, why avocado oil? Well, it doesn't impart a flavor like extra virgin olive oil does. So it's from a flavor standpoint, it's neutral. Mm -hmm. But it's very heart healthy. It's rich in monounsaturated fat. And the point of this step is we want to get a nice char on the outside of the brisket. We want to we want it to develop a, cr uh, a crust mm -hmm. on the uh, surface of the brisket, which lends a really delicious mouthfeel. So yeah, you're doing a good job. So you want to cook this for a little bit, maybe mm -hmm. about 10 minutes to get that nice sear going. Okay. You also want to throw the onions in the pot as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get your hands dirty. Love that, Al. Ooh. Amazing. Yeah, so you want to cook this. How about the garlic? And yeah, throw the garlic, the stems, all that good stuff. Look at that. You can smell it. The garlic oh, is becoming delicious. fragrant. Mix it? Okay. Yeah, okay. mix it up. Again, the crust on the beef is, is key. So you want to brown that up. You want to brown that up. everything else. Yeah, yeah you want to brown that up because okay. it, it lends a really nice mouthfeel. You don't want, uh, uh, you don't want like a uniform consistency with mm -hmm. brisket. Okay. Right. And um, you can also use, you can use whole brisket. We decided to chop it up, but a whole brisket would be easier to, um, to shred. What are these, some of the spices you're putting Cayenne. in? So here we've got a little bit of cumin, mm -hmm. we've got oregano, and we've got ah. chili powder. Ooh. So you want to add these in. My Again, oregano doesn't look like that. Yeah, they come in different, in different forms, but typically, um, yeah, we, we yeah, see some flowers on there. Mm -hmm. But again, spicy food is really great for your health okay. if you can if you can stand okay. it. Not you'll that, this, not that this, this dish is too spicy. Right. You'll saute this, then what goes in? You saute that in. Yeah, it's already starting to get. I mean, just smell yeah, it. Yeah, it smells, smells delicious. So good. I hope we only have early. about a minute, no. so I want right. to make sure we get it. Right. So then great. we want to throw in the diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got a bit of a tomato puree. Throw that into the mix. And okay. is that chicken broth? We're compressing time here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then this is bone broth. Bone broth. So bone broth oh. is rich in collagen. Does it right. taste the same as regular broth? It uh, it tastes similarly. It's not soup.
But okay. what makes it the mole? So the mole, we add dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. oh. Again, the, oh wow. The, yeah. So we. So this is the finished. Um, it's almost finished. We want to okay. add the dark chocolate to it. That's okay. how you make a mole. Did, dark chocolate is really good for the go. heart. You stir it around. Mm -hmm. Did I miss that? Where did the chilies and the mushrooms go? We the pureed it. So we put we put the puree. You're meant to once you puree it, you put it into the uh, oh okay. okay into the dish. So yeah. So okay. Well, thank well, you so this was much. amazing. We really We're gonna eat this it. in so the break. Let me taste the bite. Right. I know. And be sure to check out his cookbook and mm. for this recipe, which is oh, fantastic. Wow. Oh man. Wow. Today.com. Oh my goodness. <laughs> excited this morning because we have a super special guest here for Today Food. Brian Baumgartner starred as Kevin on the hit NBC show, The Office. And Office fans will definitely remember this <laughs> iconic scene. At least once a year, I like to bring in some of my Kevin's famous chili. The trick is to undercook the onions. Everybody is going to get to know each other in the pot. I'm serious about this stuff. I'm up the night before, pressing garlic and dicing whole tomatoes. I toast my own ancho chilies. It's a recipe passed down from Malone's for generations. Oh, no, I just like feel for you with that. Well, guess yes. what? Brian became serious about chili off screen as That is well. so funny. So now he's compiled, listen to this, some of his favorite recipes in the Seriously Good Chili Cookbook. How many recipes did you say? 177. 177. I opened it up and I'm like, okay, this if you like chili, this is your man. This is it. Is it true sure. before that scene you weren't a chili guy? I no, I no, I'd never made chili at all. <laughs> I and I made it one time. It was like football season. I posted it online. People went nuts. nuts. Yeah. They went crazy and I thought, okay, and I started getting into it. It, it, oh, thank you, Al. Yeah. I'm putting you to work you already. Know, sure. Very nicely bit. done. The thing that's funny about that scene is it wasn't even like the whole episode. It was the 30 seconds at the beginning of the show. When you saw I, the show. I, I, well, it always makes me laugh when pe when I say to people, I meet them, like, what's your favorite episode of The Office? Yeah. And they say the, the chili one. I'm the like, chili well, episode. Very good. It was about 90 seconds. So how do we get started? We want to make Ke Kevin's signature so chili. This okay. This is, this is my recipe okay. that I have, uh, I don't know if it's as famous as yeah, Malone's. Come on this side. All right, you're going to go there. Yep. Okay. And and now it's about it's about chopping. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna chop very carefully, and then we're not gonna Good. chop that carefully <laughs> yeah. anymore. We're gonna chop. Nice and, chunk. And we've got some uh, some vegetable oil in here. We're gonna mm -hmm. add it all in okay. to Garlic, uh, to all the in. pot. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna put it all in there. And here is here is where uh, Kevin and I are, are similar. The the trick truly is. Uh, n to to undercook the onions. Okay. okay. You Undercooked don't want to caramelize them. The peppers oh. too. Yeah, yeah. They, they, and you want the onions to be translucent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got some uh, some garlic. We've got some onions, and we've got uh, some green peppers in there. So okay. then you cook it down. Okay. And then so fast forward. So yes, good. we're we're still here. Al, you helped it to not get fully caramelized here. Um, once once that's cooked down, mm -hmm. then we're gonna add in. I, you can you use, like turkey? You, I do. I like the ground turkey. You uh -huh. can obviously also use 
uh, ground beef. For sure. Okay. And uh, we're going to saute that in there with uh, the peppers and the onions and the garlic. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another trick. Okay. Okay. You add the tomato paste once the turkey is like half brown. So it's not okay. brown brown. Not brown brown. A little and pale. That's so right. Absorb okay. some of the it does. tomato flavor. Yes, and it it to me it sort of combines all the flavors mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Now this is not lightly brown, no. but we're gonna pretend <laughs> it is, and it's gonna be delicious. It's television. Yes. It is television, <laughs> Al. Yes. Um, mm. And so we're gonna combine that all together. Mm -hmm. Now once that's browned. Sorry, I sneezed. That's okay. Wow. That's okay. It's live television. Anything sneeze. can happen. It's I fine. Sneeze. America, Get to the relax. Don't try this it one. We're <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, all right. Once that's brown, right. then what we're going to do, we're going to have some diced tomatoes. Uh -huh. We're going to put those in. Just canned diced tomatoes? Di so canned good. diced tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, some tomato sauce. Right. Okay. Right. And, and then what are the spices? And then we've got some. We've got some oregano. And if okay. you want to, you're going to add it with flair, you can do that. Oh, We've whoa. got some chili powder. <laughs> and. And we've got some oh, ancho chilies it's and the jumpy, a little it's, salt. That's the uh, antithesis of the salt bay. How messy is your kitchen? With that's, that's my question. I don't is spill the a, chili, but <laughs> spices are totally allowed. And then, when do you add, and then when do you add the beans? And then, so the beans, mm -hmm. uh, beans with chili sauce, right. don't, don't drain oh, it. Oh, you like, okay. Yes, but you add that when we're about 20 minutes Thanks. away from serving. Okay. Because you, you don't want to get the beans, you don't want to get the beans mushy. Over. Wow. Oh, right. well, so the beans are soft to begin with. A fan. Mm. This, this can be cooked all day. Yeah. Oh you can God. reduce it all the way down and then just add the beans uh, mm. when you're ready to serve. This oh, is this great. Is, this is perfect. Is it? No, really good. I was just telling you before, my husband doesn't like cumin. He loves this. Have cumin in it. This is the perfect chili I can make at home. It Brian, is perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you From one Brian to another. Yeah. You've thank created you. magic, Brian. Oh, this is thank delicious. you so, so good. Oh, if you want you. this recipe, and we can all do this one. It's an easy recipe. You can go to today.com slash food. By the way, watch Brian at all nine seasons of The Office. Relive your favorite moments. The streaming on Peacock from our parent company, NBC Universal. Mm. Ooh, the answer's calling. You need them most. let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. Al Roker. With today's food, joined by one of our favorite chefs, Ooh. our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the kitchen with 100-plus battle-tested oh. recipes. Oh. 
And this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all-time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? Well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beat Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it, it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, so come on over. So um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic, so we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? Cute... <laughs> uh, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. I'm just going to Google it. I'll have it by the end of the oh, segment. Wow. Yeah. All right. So the go chili ahead. Went right out the, the window. Meeting? Sure did. Nothing remains nameless, Where'd you Bobby. Meet? It's How'd 2021. You How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like, you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat so like. So we're going to Very we're going to Carson uh, founder. Carson well founder. We're not going to say out it out loud. Hand, but he did. Very, but very impressive. No, he did. He did. No he did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no. Veg you really are dating have, up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right. So anyway, <laughs> this guy went off the rails. Mix, what what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace the meat? So thank you meat. so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we okay. have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushroom Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well, and we're gonna let this cook for a little while. And then basically, what happens is you have the base of the chili, and it mm -hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these like really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the king, oh, right? Nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm. We want that nice cooling effect. And I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm -hmm. and some chilies. I'm yeah. going to put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm. you got to yeah. make sure you have that crunch right. going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the chili take cheese. less time because it's meat-based, I mean vegetable-based, than, yeah. than a meat-based one would? It does, Al, because you know if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms then the eggplant mm -hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well, and uh, and then you know you, you just you, st you start to garnish it. A little bit of lime zest on top. So you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things, and it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm -hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because mm -hmm. right. you know I am I am a meat eater, and um, but I have to say like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job Ooh. of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in reverse. Mm -hmm. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried that oh, first wow. bite? I was just curious. <laughs> She's trying to help you here. Uh, trying no, to help what, a brother out. So what, what did she say? Who? Um... You know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're done. right. Well, is yeah. she there right now? You still give it Chef on in. No, <laughs> she's not here. But, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. thanks so much for asking. You're the best. Bobby, we love you so much. This is so to fun to tease you. you. Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Uh, well, you know, th there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh, um, mm. There's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's there's really classic home style dishes, mm. cool. and then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's a you know, if if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. 
Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, we've, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, and you've only uh, lost so twice. So obviously it's they're amazing. not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one. Our, so oh, hopefully we'll wow. yeah. more volume. It's a terrific uh, book. Bobby. It's a great show. It's a great book. Thank, thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys are the best. Can't wait <laughs> to see you. Bobby Flay is out next Tuesday. Find out more of the chili recipe with no meat in it. Go to today.com slash I think you've learned a valuable lesson, Bobby. There's a new meat Bobby Flay. We're like 13 years old. Today, nutritionist Joy Bauer has two hearty slow cooker recipes that you can set it and forget it. Hey guys, it's no secret that I am in love with my slow cooker. And if you're like me, you are really gonna enjoy these recipes. The first one is eggplant parmesan. So I'm starting with two large eggplants. I'm just gonna trim and then I'm gonna slice them into about half inch rounds. I have paper towels lining a baking sheet here. We're going to salt the tops to help draw out some of the bitter water. And this is also gonna help our eggplant slices to keep their form within the slow cooker. So these need to sit 30 to 60 minutes. And while we're waiting, we're gonna head over to the stove to make our garlicky walnut breadcrumbs. So first I'm adding one cup of whole grain panko breadcrumbs, one cup of crushed walnuts. And I saute this for about 10 minutes on a medium flame. And I'm gonna add in some garlic, some dried basil, and some black pepper. I'm gonna take this off the heat, and we're gonna mix in some parm. I'm gonna take you back to our eggplant now. I'm gonna press down with paper towels onto my eggplants, which have been sitting because I'm sopping up a lot of the excess water. I'm gonna season up our slices with some garlic, oregano, and a little bit of black pepper. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of tomato sauce to line the bottom. And now the fun part starts. You line the bottom of your slow cooker then for your garlicky walnut breadcrumbs, more sauce. I've got part skim mozzarella cheese, calcium protein, and of course, cheesy goodness. And you're gonna repeat the same exact thing with two more layers. So you have three luscious layers in total. And now for the easiest part. Put on the lid and cook it on high for about three hours and 30 minutes. Guys, this is so good. And now we're gonna mix things up. I'm gonna take you over to my island and we're going to make a salsa verde chicken chili. And I'm starting with butternut squash. And butternut is packed with potassium. It's got beta carotene, great for your immune system and so many other nutrients. Some onion, of course, a green bell pepper, finely diced. And this is a jalapeno. So this chili is customizable to whatever spice you want. And now I'm adding salsa verde. And this is reduced sodium chicken broth. Gonna mix this around and I'm adding in loads of spices. And I'm gonna mix this around again, all the flavors, get them nice and well combined. And you're gonna add in two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I'm submerging the chicken into the liquid 
put the cover on and let it cook on high for about four hours. 30 minutes before it's done cooking, carefully take out all of the chicken breasts, then add in two cans of rinsed and drained beans. Stir the beans, put the top on, let everything simmer, and while that's simmering, you're gonna shred your chicken. Then put the chicken back into the slow cooker, stir everything together so the chicken can sop up all of that scrumptious liquid. Oh my goodness, guys, this is so yummy. The flavors all complement each other. Mm, this will definitely warm your soul this weekend. That Yum. is good, all right. Slow cooker out. Uh, for these recipes and so much more, go to today.com slash food.